Hey everyone, we're back. Sorry for the ter early termination, but Joachim's internet was really shitty, so now we're doing it on my end. Now we can get back to the topics we're discussing. We're not featuring Jim here, in case you're not aware. <laughs> uh, so you were you were lurking these streams when we had like thirty some people, and I, you know, I that's what I really respect about you guys um, that I've interacted with, kind of in the circuit, is like people you know i mean we had like okay people are always like oh you got no followers you got no whatever you got nobody why should i even bother um you know and so i do think it is cool when people participate and you know we're just trying to build something here um and the fact that you're willing to hop in so now now 4chan is going to attack me and that's fine um but i do think that that shit's pretty cool uh but just kind of getting into it because i mean we've talked about a lot of issues you've done content on and things we've got you here we talked about the jordan peterson question a little bit last night i know you've done a lot of um, kind of stuff on him. So the the, the whole thing with uh, Jordan Peterson and the JQ didn't really start becoming a big issue until after your video came out. Is that oh, wait, right? Wait, Joe Kim. Joe, yeah. You have to ask Jim if his, uh, the, the question for the stream. Our trapped guy? No, no. Is his bed made? Oh, yeah. Is Jim, is your bed made? Uh, well, you see, my check bounced on the $10 personality test, so I never found the correct method to making my fucking bed as a grown man. So, <laughs> no, it sadly is not made. It is an unmade bed. Well, wow. At least, at least you admit it. A few days ago, we actually had a commie on. He just wouldn't even acknowledge he had a bed. It was really Jim, how are, how are you going to save the West if your bed isn't made, Jim? I, I don't know. I'm going to have to go to seminars, I think. Uh, cause I think it's like 40 bucks a pop to go to those and maybe buy a $2,000 signed rug. <laughs> you know, that might be the first step to saving the fucking West. Ah, oh, dear God. How soon? You did know I was trolling like immediately, right? Yeah, pretty much right off the bat. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The chat seemed to think I was serious and I fucked it up at the end cause I was, I was kind of nervous as fuck being called out at work, to be honest. I was not prepared. I, I'm just amazed you called from work. I figured your boss would fire your ass, but uh, you snuck out the door or something. Yeah, I just was. I got to take a call real quick. This is my uh, this is my mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Everybody's a mommy's boy deep on the inside. I was just because I, I was listening to that stream when it wasn't live, but you know I was kind of doing some stuff, had it on in the background, and I heard that go down and just like. You know, everybody's at, you know. Oh my god, all these people are at work. How the fuck are they all listening? And uh, failures yelling out what like uh nigger jew and stuff and it was i mean that was just that was great entertainment but that's that, that's i think one of the great things about this is it's just such an unscripted format anything can really happen yeah that's what makes it entertaining like I, i'm sick of the uh the formalized format where everybody's uh kind of that fake nice with each other it's a saccharine sweet shit where they pretend like uh Oh, well, we just have a disagreement of words, but we like each other on an individual level. Fuck off with that shit. I just want to hear people fucking either spurg out at each other or talk about shit that they usually don't talk about. I, you know, it, it, like I said earlier, it's like the halls of debate shit. It, it's just gotten so fucking tired and so formulaic. Um, you know, and people will dismiss it and be like, oh, it's just, it's drama. I don't give a shit. I used to watch Jerry Springer and fucking Richard Bay. Uh, I'll watch that shit all day. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I mean, it's just like, I fucking hate hardcore. And I know that he's probably listening. I mean, I hope to engage with him in the future. I hope he's on here. But I can't, I think he's a disingenuous person. I think his ideology is fucking retarded. And I think he's not as smart as he thinks he is. But, you know, as long as he's willing to come in and argue in good faith, then fuck it. I've got nothing but time. Yeah, yeah there have been a lot of people that have stepped up to the uh, to the plate. And, you know, with the, the whole... Blood sports shit. Uh, I think one of the ones I found most impressive would be uh, Nick Fuentes. Like, I, I was kind of, I was really surprised by that. Like, I didn't expect him to be uh, as quick as he was, but he, he did really well, especially against uh, Halsey when they started talking about the USS Liberty. Yeah, Nick is something special. I think as an IQ of at least over 130, I've never seen somebody that young and that articulate and educated about a certain subject. It's pretty crazy. He's 19, right? Yeah, he's super young. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Makes me wonder just how long he spent the, the researching and debating politics since he knew way too much about it. What was the uh, political gathering he was at uh, just like two or three days ago? CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Committee. Yeah, I had no interest really in kind of following what was going on there, but I saw him start tweeting out shit where he was just walking up to people and starting shit, and that was fucking amazing. Yeah, no, CPAC got, he, is he, really gay, but like that, this year has been way different. Like CPAC is the place where all the young Republican, Republican types go to sniff each other's assholes. And he just goes in there and he's like, yeah, I'm more to the right than anybody. Come fight me. That shit was hilarious. 
Yeah, that, that's great. And I think he didn't he get punched by like a drunk midget Indian. Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> you know, so he's 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 out there making a name for himself. I'm surprised the guy didn't get knifed. Honestly, I I, I would be careful with Mister Fuentes. There, he's a he's a dangerous individual. Um, he's look he's out for blood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get a taste of it. I think it's interesting the people who kind of step away from it too. You know, the the Enoch uh, not being willing to engage further so much, and of course, Sargon one. But you know, the people who are just like, oh well, I, I'm going to hang up my hat. I'm I'm bowing out of the ring after being so eager to step in and get knocked in the fucking face. I think what would be really good. I tried to get, uh, I tried to suggest this to Andy. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I want to see Fuentes and Elsa uh, sit down. And have a stream together because I know there's some oh Jesus there's some, there's some fucking issues there so I'd I'd love to see those two go at it yeah that's I'm bad I'm excited, for, blood. I'm excited for sticks and Fuentes on Saturday yeah that could oh, be that's, good that's going down yeah that's gonna they're doing I think it's gonna be like six on Saturday or Sunday I'm not sure exactly but it's yeah it's happening this weekend it's gonna be very good I'm excited. Yeah, although I don't really know what issues Sticks has with uh, the people he did, argues with anymore. After that first um, Spencer debate, he seemed to have kind of come around because he did a stream with Spencer and they basically agreed about everything. Well, they're going to be talking about religion mostly, I think, because Sticks is like he's a pagan and Fuentes is a Catholic. But uh, either way, I think they're going to be having an interesting talk. Yeah, what what I've been what we we've had two little things we're trying to get set up here. One is I want to get a communist to debate. Uh, what the, what the fuck are the Sargonites called now? Is it still liberal mystists? Uh, I, I don't know. It's like yeah. you went from rationalist to skeptic to liberalist. It's like every fucking six months, it's a new name and a rebranding. At this yeah. point, Sargon probably has about 30 fucking copyrights and trademarks. So I, I don't know what they're calling themselves today. <laughs> well, okay, we'll just call them Sargonites then. But uh, hang on just a second. Todd. Uh, let me just finish what I was going to say. I want to see a Sargonite debate an actual communist because I don't think we've had that yet. And I think that that would be an absolute shit show. Well, you think, yeah, that no, probably you did he did a communist stream with like I can't remember. I think V was on it, obviously, and it was like a Zex Zizi, some fucking weird commie kid, and two other bad mouse and some other guy. Yeah. Uh, what are you gonna say, Toad? I was just gonna see if you guys could hear me now. My uh, my mic situation's been fucked. Am I all right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're good. Me. You're a good boy. Cool. cool. You're well, thanks, good. man. Yeah. Kami's a very interesting people, like the one we had on here. It's like he has a complete denial of history and reality and his own his own personal interpretation, which exists within his head. It's really fascinating to just look at it. Do uh do you guys watch your chat? Yeah. I, I, well, I'm watching their chat right now. Um, well, I was gonna say when that when that Kami was on, uh he was popping so bad. I was screaming at you guys to have him put a fucking sock on his mic. It was raping my fucking ears. Yeah, I yeah, that seems to be a that. thing. I told I him multiple times one. to stop eating his mic, but yeah. yeah, it was a it was a good stream, but Jesus fucking Christ, man! Is that is that like a common theme? Because when I had on, uh, I think his name was Warsi from Lefty Pool. I did a debate about Black Lives Matters with him, and uh, his audio was fucking horrendous. I had to go in and re-edit it because no matter what I did, it was like dead silent. And then there were these horrible. And I have a fucking awful mic, but he made mine seem like it was professional studio quality, like Yours just is... the worst. Yours is, I mean, it's got a consistent sound. It's not, it's not awful, but it, at least it's consistent. I mean, you can deal with that, and it doesn't fucking, it's it a, it's pop a, it's, in your ear. It's worth the twenty dollars I paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No. And then, because um, the other debate we're trying to set up is between two different based black guys, which I don't think we've seen an internet blood sports stream where it's just all let diversity. Me, let me uh, actually see if he uh, has read my message yet. Hey, Shit, Jim, it's Thursday night. He's probably wasted. He's fine. J Jim, did yeah. you follow Baron on Twitter yet after that stream on the uh, on the Kumite? I don't follow anybody you. on Twitter. <laughs> Why said, don't I follow him? He Jim, said he I'm just wanted cry. to talk to you, man. Jim, I can't have your phone number? <laughs> I'm not giving you my phone. No, I, I the only people I, I followed on my last account were like three guys I know that I, I played games with for like the last decade. Aside from that, I don't I don't but yeah, I look at like Twitter as like a toilet. It's a great place to take a shit, but I don't want to stick my face in there and look around. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the ban hammer, man. I know it's coming any day because I just I just go on there to f fucking purge the autism I have in my head. Yeah, yeah, they've been banning a lot of shit. But I mean, fuck, the platform's got, I, I think the last report I read was like 30% bots. And I'm not talking like the, the bullshit media, oh, Russian bots are coming. I mean, actual bots. Uh, there was an interesting thing where it turned out, because uh, I was looking into this with a couple of other people, um, there is a site 
that takes your social media profiles and then si assigns a rating to you. And what I noticed was a lot of these bots that pop up, especially like the sex account ones and the other ones that are just like fucking overly prevalent on Twitter, will take in people's names uh, at random. And I couldn't figure out why they were doing it because it made no sense. Why would they be talking about this specific person? But then I looked at this like almost personality rating service. I'll have to dig it up to find out what the name of the fucking thing is. But I'm almost certain it's that group that's doing it. That's is like that the one that like gives you a value? You. That says yeah. like, oh, you're yeah. That shit's pretty interesting. Yeah, people are using Twitter to game the system. To to, it's almost like, um, oh, you know those services that'll take your personal information and then they they tell you, oh, well, we'll remove it if you pay us this amount of money. It's kind of like that. Like they build up a profile for you and then charge you to get rid of the profile they themselves fucking built. Yeah, like bribeware. Like a, a virus hijacks a computer and then you have to pay money to get rid of it. Yeah, everybody's everybody's out there hustling, trying to make a fucking dollar. Um, are you are you guys back on that on on the same uh, stream you were on? We're on Ann Capistan's channel. Okay, okay. There'd be a different stream though, but okay. Did you, yeah, did you I... see? There's there's this this site. It's a uh, Hamilton sixty three or sixty eight or something like that. It's like the site where most of the they they're tracking a lot of like the Russian accounts on Twitter and that sort of thing. Um, they're the place where most of the journalists cite as like, oh, we have Russian bots in interfering in this. The founder actually came out and said a lot of it is overblown. Yeah, of course it is. Because a lot of the bots, like I said, are related to uh, ways of hustling money out of people or it's related to just spreading fuck. I, I mean, when you I think it's like, don't they have like 180 million users and it's like 30 or I can't remember how many. T fuck, I used to know this by heart because I used to shit on Jack before he banned my fucking original account about it but <laughs> if, if i could find it it's an absurd amount of fucking bot accounts that are on twitter and that predates any of the shit with russia or any of that it's always been a fucking problem on his platform and he never addresses it yeah well yeah. i think it's a problem in a lot of these but also just the moderation is so shitty like uh did you see that project veritas video where they were inter interviewing that uh indian indian i think he moderated either for facebook or youtube where they were talking, maybe it was Twitter, maybe it was Twitter, and they were talking about, oh yeah, we can find all these Trump Russian bots because you know you just you you put certain things out there like guns and American flags and MAGA, and you give it a weight to a certain value, and if they if their weight on that account is a certain point, then we just are bot and we can ban them if we wanted to. Yeah, I saw the Veritas stuff. I also saw the ones where they were talking about uh, Twitter employees saying they could go through your DMs and read all of that shit. Uh, which I would suggest you don't talk about personal details of your fucking life in a DM on Twitter because there's no there's no sanctity to it. It's not like uh, you're giving a confession to a fucking priest. They're reading through it. Yeah. Same with like Gmail. Like I don't trust any of these major corporations with how they handle their shit just based on past behavior and policies they have in place. Did you so see if you're a Twitter board? employee and you're watching the stream, please link, please leak Andy Worski's dick pics. Please, that'll yeah, be funny. <laughs> well, he was going to post them, so maybe they're in a DM somewhere <laughs> waiting to be put out there. Uh, well, I mean, but that's the thing, right? Today, YouTube comes out and says, oh, it was all just a big accident. You know, they're saying, what, it was uh, as we work to hire rapidly and ramp up our policy enforcement through 2018, newer members may have mistakenly applied, misapplied some of our policies, resulting in mistaken removals. Yeah, like, but right? Susan, Susan, the CEO of YouTube, gave an interview a month and a half ago. And I, this is the, the, like, the subtitle, right, of the fucking interview was YouTube to employ 10,000 YouTube police. So she was talking about wanting to go to war with content and people she found to be problematic on the platform and employing upwards of 10,000 people to do that. So, I mean, yeah, we've got trusted flaggers like the SPLC and ADL and all of that, but there is a large group now working for Google. And if you even, if you look at the investment of paying 10,000 people full time to do something dumb like this, it's a lot of fucking money they put down on the table to do it. Uh, so it's not surprising to me that there's like this uptick of people getting targeted and hammered. I mean, gun channels were getting nailed for the last year. I mean, there has been a buildup of it, but a lot of the channels uh, that were like, you know, really heavily featured, aside from like a few of the really top tier ones, were getting fucked with all the time about, you know, the gun reviews they'd put up, the shooting ranges they'd go to, just blowing up fucking watermelons and shit. They get video strikes or age restricted or have monetization pulled down. Uh, and now it's like moved kind of from that to talking about news or politics. So, I mean, you can see a trend of where it's going. So, so speaking of where it's going, I, I just because I mean you're you're somebody who I would consider to be you know pretty well in the know at least I would assume. But I mean, what are your thoughts on Worski's plan to uh, 
try to make a parallel platform that you know he controls for blood sports well if you mean but like i think the distinction of what kind of a platform it would be like if he's going to try to compete with youtube as a video sharing platform he will fail uh vidme tried that and they ran out of money they just couldn't handle the cost of running the service they couldn't get enough advertisers to come in and float the bills they needed to pay uh and they were the ones recently that had one of the better shots of doing it uh now if worski is going to set up his own platform where he streams his streams and maybe like Tonka and a few other people, a select group, like four or five shows, he could succeed at that. I mean, other people have come out and they've they've created their own stuff. Anthony Kumia has done it. Uh, Mike Enoch's done it. Uh, I yeah. think, uh, doesn't Crowder do it as well? Yeah. Where he's got his yeah. own site? Like, there, there are ways of doing it, and there are ways of making it financially work where you can at least cover your bills. You might not be a fucking millionaire, but you'll be able to cover your bills and be able to put a show out that people can come and watch. That's fine. I We may see a return to... Like the fucking GeoCities era. You remember that? When everybody had their own oh, shitty God. fucking MS Paint oh, website? But that may be where we're headed. Uh, when you look at like the, the trend of the internet, it used to be you had multiple sites that split up all the traffic of where people went. And I think now it's like controlled, the, the majority of the traffic is controlled by maybe like 50 key sites. So, mm -hmm. you know, to break away from that, how do you compete with like a behemoth with a just a, a fucking monolith like a Google or something? Well, I, gotta, I think you got to start doing a... it small. I mean, I don't know about the broadband on the back end because obviously, you, I mean, video hosting is like the most intensive thing to do. But I mean, one of the things that's been so interesting about blood sports, and maybe it's just because I haven't been paying attention to streaming culture until very recently, but the advent of super and like direct donations to people. Because like when Enoch and the right stuff guys, they had to do it, you know, they were getting donations, sure, but they, you know, they had to set up a paywall and they still have to do it where there's shows out there you know people will beg me oh hey can i get a copy of strike and mike whatever because i you know i subscribe to that so they want to get that material be that had previously been free and nobody really likes to see a paywall go up but you know if you can have streams that are just funded by super chats or whatever the equivalent would be on a separate platform um you know i think that that is an option because it's always been about the advertisers on the internet but now it might not have to be directly about the advertisers anymore can I, uh, uh, can, can, can I throw something in? Because I just, I ran in because I was laying in bed and I had a video that was, that was processing. And I just came in to say that you guys' stream was fucking dying. And I wanted you to know, so you weren't just on air with, you know, nobody hearing anything. Um, I, I'm working on a video about this right now, kind of trying to put my thoughts together. But <clears throat> Worski's trying to get like the blood sports group together, but they're also talking about like letting, Sargon in and other people who are getting banned, you know, people who've kind of been critical of blood sports, but now that everybody's facing this sort of purge, they all want to get together. See, I, I would what, disagree with that because that reminds me of what TJ Kirk tried to do. You remember with his website, he tried to create a, a, a alternative by letting everybody in. I, I think if you right. don't have a purpose to what you're doing and if you, you're too broad in it, the cost will kill you and it splits the audience. Right. What 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 I what I'm thinking is like take taking these niche groups like you've got the skeptic TMs and you know whatever the the subgroups are from that and then you've got blood sports but I think it would be good if everybody started like doing what Worski did where they had they have this backup site where they start, you know, simulcasting to YouTube and then maybe not uploading the videos to YouTube but cutting a promo for the 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 live stream that they did and then linking it back to the channel. I, I don't know. I don't want everybody to come in and start posting on one site, but if you know several groups of people made their own sites, I think it would be a lot better. I mean, you, you're not going to make a dent in you know YouTube's pocketbook. YouTube really doesn't make any money, but if people started creating their own sites just for the groups that they were they were um, they were interested in, you know, people with similar ideas, I, I think that could actually work to, to kind of circumvent these like yearly purges we see of, of, of content creators. That, yeah, well, I, Andy's got to be. I, I don't know what you guys think yeah, about do that. You guys know. You guys know. Uh, going to kill him. You guys know Legion of Skanks at all? You guys watch that show? Never heard of it. No. It's just a comedy podcast. It's on this thing, Gas Digital Network. It's just they have like a bunch of different like political podcasts and comedians and just random shit, but they're all like friends in real life, and they've made it work. They're like they put out like comedy albums and, and different like uh, TV uh, like miniseries on their show. I think that could work for like something like the Kumite and Worski and stuff like that, like have a blood sports network. Yeah, that's a bit different though, because that's just audio. That's very cheap and easy to host. That's why guys like the TRS can do that. I actually thought about yeah, this. Yeah, no, TRS does video, but they use, uh, they use Vimeo. Yeah, I need other hosting platforms. 
you know, I actually thought about this issue about the alternatives to YouTube and whether they're viable or not. And of course, first thing off, if you're trying to make a competitor to YouTube right now, you're going to fail 100%. If they tried it before, it's not a new idea and you're destined for failure. But I do think there is a chance if you want to go for a more niche product, like you want only a specific type of video from ultra dedicated fans, such as Blood Sports. And uh, there's actually an example of some people doing something similar to this, which was, and I think still is, fairly financially successful, though it is a bit cringy. Have you guys heard of that guy with the glasses? No, nope. I've never heard of it. What is it? Never. No, what What is that? Hey guys, I'm 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 gonna fuck off, but I'm gonna keep uh, I'm gonna keep listening. All right, appreciate Don't you, buddy. Have a good night. No yep. See you guys. Take it easy. Yeah, but basically, it's a bunch of really cringy, I guess, review uh, people. They're a bunch of reviewers which do like movie reviews, video Toad, game reviews, and all or, that uh, stuff. And Cap, do you know who you're talking to? Uh, uh, which one of you? No, no, let him explain. I'm really curious. So, what is that guy with the glasses? Yeah, so basically it was started by a guy who started doing reviews on YouTube, but then decided he could get more money by starting his own website. And he has his own like little association of other reviewers which hop on and they host their own videos. And they've somehow managed to be financially successful despite being fairly obscure by like YouTube standards. And I think because they knew their own niche and managed to exploit it to the fullest. Yeah, I, I mean, I think one of the biggest issues with that is just the advertiser thing, right? Because a lot of those that have been discussed, these guys are just absolutely... You know, I, I don't want to say totally inoffensive. I'm sure they tell maybe a dirty joke every once in a while. But like what they're going to come at Andy and even begged and especially Anglin, which is the, the hate speech thing. Right. And that's what they'll do. That's what they'll keep doing is they'll say, oh, you can't advertise on this platform. It promotes hate speech. So you've got to find something because all these other people, you know, they can promote they can make money through ads. They, they don't have to be funded directly. So there's like a higher level of investment required for people to be involved with the platform that is going to basically not be able to get advertisers. Yeah, I don't think they're going to pull advertisers. I mean, I, I think the thing Andy has to watch out for uh, kind of in relation to all these people coming onto it is it's a lot of cost to run a site, especially one that streams or hosts any kind of video content. Um, and if you get, again, too many cooks in the kitchen, you're going to you're going to fuck yourself. I mean, you need to be able to have, I think he's right, like a niche product with a specific uh, audience in mind, though the irony of it does appeal to me on some level with, you know, like Zargon and kind of the liberalists saying that blood sports is shit and they don't want to engage in it. And now they have to go to a website literally called Internet Fucking Blood Sports to exist. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, I do find that fucking funny. I, I like that a little bit. But um, yeah, I think he should just develop his product. He should do it his own way. Um, you know, like the Morning Kumite is really good. Andy's show is, is good. It gets good guests on. Maybe get like one more to fill it up. So you got like a morning, afternoon, evening thing. And then just let that grow for a while before you start trying to expand and do too much shit. Otherwise, you're going to just implode in two or three months. It'll be just like TJ Kirk's site. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what and that's how TRS started, did it, right? They had basically like two anchor podcasts. And then they were, they were able to people do it. But I mean, as you said, with audio, it's a little bit cheaper. And then you just kind of let people contribute to their own. But, you know, if, if the hosting becomes too much. Oh, Joe, can we kind of cut, cut off? Yeah, cut out there. Okay, meanwhile, mm -hmm. Billy, uh, Billy, you really jossed me. I completely forgot you did that video series. I had right? on. Yeah. <laughs> you, what? No, do you think that there's a chance that the, the lawsuits or legislation might be a fix here? I know that, um, uh, who is it? Uh, who's who's suing Twitter right now? Is it Taylor? I have no idea. I, yeah, I, I know well, that. here's the thing with Twitter lawsuits. I don't think it's going to go very far. Look at Yiannopoulos. He tried to sue Twitter based on the fact that they deleted information and there's some UK law that you can't do that. And that lawsuit went nowhere. And Milo has the money to do something about it. So I don't know how effective a lawsuit against a company or an entity like Twitter is going to be. Granted, they don't have... Uh, who, is the, who is the Saudi that ended up getting tortured and uh, fucked up um, that was like oh. the biggest shareholder? Alta, Alta Lieb or whatever. Um. Shit, Alta Libra. That works. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. He's he's the <laughs> dude who got the Twitter fight with Trump with Trump uh, earlier in the thing because he oh yeah he owns like a third of Twitter. Yeah, he owns an absurd amount of Twitter, and then he ends up hanging upside down, getting smacked with bats. So I don't know what he's <laughs> going to do, but uh, well, he they got, still they have a fuck ton of money. Yeah. They, but they did they let him go? Of, yeah, about a month oh, ago they, they let him out of. Yeah, unfortunately. Was that after yeah. they cut his balls off to send a message? Oh, I'm certain. I'm certain that dude's missing a few toes now. Well, you know how the Arabs like to do it, though. They beat the shit out of the bottom of your feet. But the bottom of your feet while you're hanging. Oh, there with we go. Al, uh, your, your chat's saying Al Talawid. Uh, I'm Talawid. just going to call him Tallywhacker. But yeah, Tallywhacker <laughs> got hung upside down, and I don't know if he tweets very much anymore. 
Yeah, I, I would imagine that he's probably backed off a little bit. Um, but I mean, I mean, it just seems like it's becoming this bigger issue. You know, it's it's one thing to say, oh, it's a niche thing. Oh, blood sports is getting fucked. But when you're seeing like Alex Jones, um, you know, facing the hammer, because I mean, not even him, but Paul Joseph Watson's got what, like three million subs on YouTube. Yeah, there are a lot of accounts getting hit. I, I don't think this is like uh, SJWs hitting somebody. I don't think this is uh, the alt-right going after the liberalist or the liberalist going after the alt-right. Like, I, I genuinely think this is a top-down policy that's in place right now, and I think they are getting rid of content they don't want on the site. And I think they have metrics and guidelines for what they just want to get rid of. And I think it started with the gun shit, and it's moving into politics now because that's the hot trend topic. Um, and I'm sure it will go further from there. But, uh, you know, your days are limited. It's really weird. You know, YouTube used to be free form and then money came into it with advertisers and then direct donations and all this other kind of shit. And it got more restrictive as time went on. But anytime you see money come into an arena where people are talking to one another, um, eventually behind it comes a push to sanitize it. Because, again, you can't sell a Buick if people are screaming nigger underneath it. You know what I mean? So they want to I try to fucking <laughs> stifle shit. Oh, hi, uh, hi guys. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I just find that interesting. Destiny. Oh, yeah, shit. yeah. I was, I was letting, uh, looking for a end to the conversation. Jeff, I find that interesting because you... my mic is shit. Yeah, it's it's fucked up. Can you see? It's like echoing bad. There, you have headphones on. Uh, I do. Let me let me check something. It's fine. It sounds mind. sounds okay to me. Yeah, yeah unless yeah. you guys are fucking. Right. I don't know. Okay. A little bit. I might be getting fucked with. I don't. Know. I was gonna say that. Uh, you know, guys, Twitch is changing their TOS recently to basically follow some of the same shit to be more advertiser friendly. And I just find that like this is the stupidest business decision I've ever heard of because nearly all of their big number getters uh, on Twitch are like the non PC, like edgy, edgy fucks who get banned every other week. And they're basically just shitting on their biggest number makers for a reason I can't really comprehend. Yeah, everybody on Twitch right now feels like it's got like um, a fucking guillotine over their head, uh, from what I've understand. Like people are shutting down, because from what I understand, they not only are putting this in retroactively, as in if you put content up before that might violate new policies, they'll pull it. Uh, but like if you're if you're doing something offsite, they consider to be against their terms of service, they might use that as a justification to come after you. So I, I know a lot of people are getting rid of like uh, Twitter accounts and YouTube accounts and other shit in regards to their Twitch channels because they're scared they're going to get fucking booted. It is, feels like everybody's uh, got a like gun against their head. Because I know the TOS no, went into effect today, right? He's <laughs> still there, uh, but I, I'm sure that he's probably shitting bricks like everybody else is. I'm sure everybody feels like they've got a fucking gun to their head right now. Well, maybe I think what's going to happen is... is <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Uh, the people who already have big followings are probably going to have some leeway, just like they did before. Like Because the, the big names have already gotten banned for like their chat, like uh, doing the nigger ducktail song on their stream, other shit like that. Uh, but the I think as up and comers who violate the TOS are going to get banned, hammered pretty instantly, uh, and I think that's what they're aiming for more so than killing the big names. Yeah, it's all the new guys that are going to get fucked. I mean, you're going to have a lot harder time developing an audience or getting a following on fucking anything, you know, Twitch, uh, YouTube, whatever, because uh, they're going to be gunning for you now, it, it, which sucks because you know smaller channels that come out with really good content are going to be. Are going to be screwed. I mean, fuck. Look at Murdoch. Murdoch. They can't put a video up on fucking YouTube without getting shut down immediately. Oh god. You know what I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, honestly, one of my favorite channels on YouTube is the what is it? The Medicarist Murdochian Archive because they got your shit and they yeah. got Murdoch Murdoch up, and that's that's what I need to see with my autism sometimes. It's, uh, it's yeah, it, it's crazy watching people get uh, targeted. I I think there are just going to be certain names that are just going to be. You can almost like call it like Anglin syndrome, where you're just going to be driven off every platform. Yeah, I mean it's unpersoning. You know, it's like uh, when I when I was researching for the the commie debate. You know, I'm looking through all these Soviet pictures of the with the guy, and then there's the picture where the guy's not in it anymore. And I feel like that's kind of their vision for the internet is that they'll just unperson you and be like, oh, who's this Andrew Anglin fellow? We never heard of him. So, um, do you guys think this change is more reflective of just Silicon Valley's culture changing, like Google's employees getting more and more down the uh, weird neo-Marxist rabbit hole? Or do you think it's just uh, now is the cleanup time they decided they're big enough that they can handle the hit from cleanup time and it's now uh, the internet-wide cleanup? Well, Peter Thiel just moved out. No, you're fine. Sorry, I don't 
I mean, right. but Peter Thiel just moved out of the valley. That was kind of a big story for people in that in the tech world is that, you know, Peter Thiel is like one of the big Facebook investors, like the last conservative in Silicon Valley finally said, fuck it, I can't handle this and move to L.A. And when moving to L.A. is an improvement, that's that says a lot of bad things. Well, I think it's not really a change. This is something inevitable and easily predictable. Every single company, once it lets SJWs into its ranks, will eventually converge more and more until it can't financially function anymore and goes bankrupt. There's even books written about the subject. So this is something completely expected. Yeah, I think the thing that's going to make it real difficult uh, for people, especially like, you know, uh, Andy or other people that even try to do like the niche market thing with their own website, um, is it's not just the platforms that, you know, a lot of these Silicon Valley type people control. Uh, it's the method of making money. Like, it's one thing for Google to say to you, we're not going to put ads on your website, right? That's happened to a lot of people. I think the Ralph retort ran into that issue where they wouldn't let them put ads on there for the longest time. Uh, but when you're looking at stuff like uh, Maker Support or Patreon or PayPal, where they can just cut you off at the kneecaps and say no, I don't know what Streamlabs policy is, but I wouldn't be surprised if in a year from now uh, you start seeing pressure applied to them because they become the alternative to Super Chat. And, yeah. you know, oh, you've got to shut down this kind of content. It's problematic. Uh, it's allowing you to platform people we don't want you to platform. I, I don't know. It's just it's a really shitty place to be right now online. And I don't necessarily see a viable solution to fighting back against it other than direct competition. But I don't think that direct competition can be something that goes toe to toe with shit. Again, it's you've yeah. got to go back to the fucking GeoCities day. Uh, the Angel Fire fucking page day where you're doing your own shit. I can't wait. I love that shit. I want to go back. <laughs> yeah, it's <was> fantastic. <laughs> well, I, I do think it's interesting because um, you, you bring up uh, maker support and Patreon. You know, there have been a few attempts to try to create like a right wing parallel. Uh, Patreon was one. I, there's another that's names escaping me right now. And I think they both got mired down. In, I mean, because you don't really see what's going on on the inside. You just know that they stop working because um, people are using them to try to support Chris Cantwell. And the uh, the the driver of that Dodge Challenger who had an unfortunate traffic accident in Charlottesville, and um, I think that most of that money either got you know I, I mean maybe somebody stole it, but I think what probably happened was there was no ability for them to get back and support because like, wait what's your platform again? Oh yeah, we can't work with you, you know. And whether it was well, that, hard that for with, or what. Uh, that happened with GoFundMe too, wasn't there? Like a legal defense for the uh, the cake baker that got pulled down off fucking GoFundMe because they wouldn't let him do it. Oh, their terms of yeah. service are terrible. Right. It's any platform that you can use to get money to fund yourself to do something, whether it's a fucking project, a website, or even something related to the, the legal world, you're just going to get hammered on. I mean, if they control the purse and they control the websites, you're really in a fucked up position. Uh, and I don't know what happened with Patreon. I just know that a lot of people said that suddenly it wasn't working or they weren't getting paid, but I didn't follow it too closely to find out like what the issue was. Were they getting fucked with on the back end? Were they just not able to have the amount of staff they needed to make it work. I, I don't know what happened with that story. Yeah, and I know that Chuck Johnson was involved, and I, I just don't know what to make of that guy because sometimes he seems like he's really on the ball, and sometimes it seems like he's got some weird-ass connections. So, you know, I don't know if he's shady or if it was just stuff that, you know, he kept on the inside because it was messed up and he got into arguments with people. Oh, oh your, your chat is saying uh, just donate in cryptocurrency. But how, how safe and reliable <laughs> is the monopoly money when it fluctuates from fucking 20000 to 8000 to 10000 yeah. in the span of... R rip my uh, cost IO investments. Yeah, well, that, I mean, fun. but that's why it shot up to 20 is because people realize that, you know, it's... I mean, because, like, okay, has anybody here read the, the Cryptonomicon? From, like, it's like 94, uh, Neil Stephenson. No. Because the guy predicted... No, well, this guy, he, he was kind of like, I mean, he's a science, really good science fiction writer, very autistic when he explains stuff. But he predicted the whole idea of cryptocurrency backed with gold and bitchain back in 94, you know, way before all, all this stuff. And it was basically the whole point of the novel was this guy trying to launch a Bitcoin equivalent and how every government in the world and every bank was trying to shut him down. Um, so, I mean, it is not a solid idea. It's just that the practicality is going to have a lot of issues in the implementation. Oh, yeah. I just want to make a public service announcement. Now we've passed 100 views for the first time ever. So this means we're now a shit popular stream. We're a Reddit stream. So now oh, we can go home. Yeah. Sorry. Goodbye. Welcome to R the Donald. Everyone. I mean, to be fair, we have a lot of R the Donald personalities on the show. So go Is that what the squeaking was? I could have sworn I heard that in the background somewhere, but I wasn't sure where it was fucking coming from. Hey, Chatelet, chat. Chatelet, my fellow kakaronis. <laughs> God. Welcome to um, the show. Oh, boy. Okay. Speaking Any of black people in the audience tonight? 
We tried to get one on the show, but you know how that goes. They uh, they got agency issues. But speaking of really cringy autistic stuff, um, another question we ask everyone who comes on the chan- chat is, uh, who is your waifu, Jim? I don't have a fucking waifu. I have a real life girlfriend. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I don't jack off to anime pictures when I have pussy at home. <laughs> okay, because what I'm trying to do right now is uh, we've got this guy on the stream, Jeff, the guy with the anime doll. He's undefeated. He's basically Destiny on meth and like you know PCP. <laughs> so people are asking him to uh, go at you for a little bit. You get you got any issue with that? Right. that about that's what? fine. What are, are we debating? Waifus? What are we talking about? <laughs> well, he's a, he's a he's a well, explain to him your life in the world real quick, and I just want to see if he has any issues with it. I'm just a weeaboo who likes di- Diogenes. Diogenes is my spirit animal. I think we should all go on welfare and, you know, emulate the blacks in terms of politics in this country. All white people well, that's, should be on that's welfare. A fantastic right li- that's a fantastic life plan. I'm sure it'll pay off well for you when you're 70. It will be great, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we were just, for anyways, con- I, just for context, I, me and him were streaming yesterday about how to like how to establish an ethno state basically and he was saying that we need to like wreck the federal government by like everyone just going on welfare and starving the beast wait just that's your grand plan children <laughs> per per to accelerate the decline the with welfare yeah just it just have white ghettos filled with white people having well, tons you, of kids you better get a child you better get a notepad then and start taking notes because you're going to have to follow what the Amish do and the Jews do they're the ones that exploit welfare the most. Well, I told him just to well, join the army. If you really want to drain Uncle Sam's pocketbooks, you'll cost a lot more as a soldier than anything else. But then I got to go fight for Israel. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. I don't know if that's worth. Anyways, I wanted to talk about. Uh, we were discussing earlier the uh, why like no one can compete with YouTube and uh, Lewis Rossman, if you know him. Kind of like this guy who does like a PC repair and, and has some like interesting stuff in like the PC business and other things. Uh, he was talking about how like the sheer amount of money Google throws at YouTube, like the sheer amount of storage space, is like basically or is never going to get competed with. Yeah. So, you're right. yeah. Uh, so the thing is, Google doesn't actually make any money. It's a giant loss leader, and it's backed up by multimillionaires just pumping in tons of cash. So if you start up a new company, there's no way you can compete with that. You don't have that. Yeah, kind of like basically there. any random YouTube channel uses terabytes of data in backing up all their videos, and they just give you all this data for free. And like no company is ever going to do that. Hold the fuck up! Google yeah. stocks are doing very well. They make a profit. Yeah, Google does. You're, t- well, you're talking about the Alphabet Corporation, right? I mean, the this the company that Google's a subsidiary I mean, of. Right? Yeah, it's a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I think the only way to viably compete with YouTube is to do what Microsoft does in the gaming market. Like Xbox is not the most profitable thing for them, but they can offset the cost of that with other products. You'd need a corporation to come in that has uh, a lot of revenue, a lot of money coming in from other sources, other businesses under it to be able to foot the bill to go against so YouTube. So is, is are we going to have to live off of Gaben? Is Gaben our only hope? I don't know if Steam could do it. I don't know if Gaben has the money. I mean, there were rumors that EA wanted to buy him. Or, or who was it that wanted to buy? It was either EA or Steam. There was a company that was talking that about was just buying. A dumb rumor. It was uh, Microsoft wanted to buy Valve, but nobody on Valve wanted to be bought out. It was just yeah, they're, a rumor. Yeah, they're like, the ones that are going to money hat shit. Yeah. What about Peter too? I, I don't know. Do you think he wants to get engaged in this kind of shit? Like, I, there's a point I think where an individual might not want to do it. I, like I said, you need a really big company with a lot of fucking money. And a reason to go in to compete. Um, I, I don't know what company that would be, and I don't know what their motivation to do so would and be. A, and I, what, I, Jeff Bezos, Amazon? Like That's the only other person. Uh, yeah, but do you want Bezos to do it? Look at Twitch. Oh, no. He, no. Amazon owns Twitch. Yeah, yeah. Do, you want, do you want that guy running a fucking competing no, platform? They're they're all, anybody who's on top is in bed with all those people on top already. It's, well, except there's not going to be some I mean, grassroots. I don't know. I, Teal, Teal's, Teal's an interesting character if you look at his history because he was hanging out with, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? Moldbug. He was hanging out with Curtis Yarvin. Is that Mendacious Moldbug's real name? He was, like, they were hanging, they, they watched the election day together. Like, he was at his house. Now, I know that it's part of, like, the gay alt-right, or not really alt-right, but, like, neo-reactionary thing where they're all, you know, gay and hang out with each other and they have those relations. And that's how Milo got famous. But 
Um, I mean, you've got this guy who's like $20 billion, huge Facebook investor, initial investor. I could see him understanding the importance of a, of a com competitor to YouTube, even if it's just for a political reason. Well, yeah, I, mean, but I, I think, think it's the, just going to have to get a lot worse. Well, no, it's it, it, it the, the other the other issue you're going to run into is if you create a competitor, um, you know, I'm a big believer in the apolitical or be a company being apolitical and amoral. Like you can't have a bent to it. You're not going to attract enough of an audience to really compete. You can't have a left wing or a right wing lean to it because you're going to just drive away people. You need to be a company that's just fucking a company offering a service if you're political or you have some moral fucking issue well, they, with something. All the companies start out like that and then they get big enough and then they flex their muscles to politically bully people. Well, then maybe we need like a company made in a country that's just <laughs> that's just awful to begin with that just doesn't maybe we need Nigerians <laughs> to do this. <laughs> like, right? Remember those fucking I'm a prince, I need your money shit? Like those guys Somali don't care about anything. Do. Holy yeah, shit, Somali wait, are you saying that Nigerians are going to do jobs that Americans won't do? That's right. We need to hire the Nigerians to compete with YouTube. That's the most brilliant plan we can uh, come up with. Or North Koreans, because fuck, they'll work for a loaf of bread, right? Yeah. I, I could see I North Korea supporting us, but I don't think that we really want that. You know, the new Andy Worski show brought to you by the People's Democratic Republic of Korea. What Everybody's you? fine here. No need to worry. Yo, Kim, don't you know North Korea is the greatest country in the world and all the Western media lies about it's it? All it's all just propaganda. Yeah. yeah, it's propaganda. Lefty pull is right, dude. <laughs> oh, did you ever see that? Uh, did you ever see the documentary about he was like some rich Spanish kid who put together a group of people to go to North Korea for like a, a vacation because he was convinced it was the most just amazing country that ever exists. And so he had all these fucking Europeans come with him, you know, people from like Switzerland and Sweden and Norway and Germany. And they were all going to go there and see how great the uh, great the socialist dream is. And they get there and it's a fucking nightmare. And like they almost can't even leave because somebody broke into somebody else's room and the North Korean police wanted to arrest them all. So they had to smuggle themselves out. It's the funniest fucking shit because it goes from like this bullshit propaganda of how great it's going to be into a real nightmare situation where they're it's trying to flee. Until you get put in a death camp and then you come home to the U.S. hospital. <laughs> Jeff, there's no such thing as death camps there. Oh, no, so so for real though. So we had this guy, friend of the show, Joe the Communist, on the other night, and you know we're talking about that because he's an unrepentant Stalinist, and that means you know full on North Korea did nothing wrong mode. And he was like, oh yeah, I've got a lot of friends who've gone to North Korea. They say it's really great there, and I really hope to go there sometime. And I'm just thinking, what the fuck is it like to live in that world? Like, how do you function on, like, if you're that disconnected from reality that, like, there's you've got normal levels and then there's Stalinist levels. Yeah. You know, it's not like, oh, I went down to Mexico for a summer vacation. Oh, hey, I went to North Korea for a couple of weeks. Oh, it was uh, th that, that documentary is called Friends of Kim. Uh, it's from 2006 by a Dutch documentary comp uh, uh, group that did it. I, I'm okay. trying to, oh, uh, the guy's name was Alejandro uh, de Benes, uh, who's like a, a political activist in Spain. But he convinced them all. He's this rich kid. It's always a fucking rich kid that wants to be a commie, right? Oh, uh, right. brings them all all with him. I don't. Why is uh, that? The, I really don't. To the glorious like country. The, and it just I, I can explain. The wine glass socialists and commies. Yeah, explain that, Antep. Because if you're a kid and you're wealthy parents, that means they pay everything for you, and you don't pay taxes, so you don't suffer any of the negative consequences, and you're used to somebody else paying for your lifestyle. So of course, in the communism, somebody else will pay for my shit. Yeah, you just so never. Why is Russell Brand the communist? It's it not. Doesn't it's even not, make a shit ton no, of he's not. A, he's not. I mean, I don't know. Have you ever actually read his book? Because I, I, I well, don't no. agree with his philosophy. Actually, it is kind of compelling in the way that he writes it. I will say. I can I mean, kind of explain Russell Brand. He was fucked up on drugs for like his entire life, and so by the time he got to the point where you try to start figuring things out, he was already a rich kid. He was already. He already had money. He was off drugs and he was making money. See, I think Russell gets all of the issues of it, except for the fact that uh, there's a certain ethnic group that's okay. Because like he keeps making this uh, thing in his book, metaphor, analogy, simile, whatever, and he says, you know, you could put the, the like it's the richest thirty some people in the world in one bus, and they would be like half the world's total wealth. And okay, that's Ooh, cool. Good attitude, my man. Yeah, but all I'm thinking is okay, but. I, how like that bush what language do they speak be speaking because i'm pretty sure it's yiddish you know and that's that he keeps hitting on the wealth inequality thing but he doesn't really get the why of you know why there's issues with that 
And of course, he would never touch on ethnic identitarianism because he's a product of the postmodern British oh, worldview. Course. But oh, fucking UK. So. I, the UK makes me so depressed, like ever seeing it in the news or anything about it, really. Makes you feel sorry for Sargon. Oh, which reminds me, this guy in the chat who keeps spamming, uh, Billy, he wants to know your opinion on Sargon and Gamergate. Oh my god. Why? <laughs> He's never given this hey, opinion before. My my opinion, uh, are we talking about the you should have been a leader, Jim? That thing? Yeah. <laughs> and why? I, again, I, you know, it's fucking four years on now. I don't know why we're still talking about this, but uh, if you talk to anybody that was initially in Gamergate, I, I think it's a pretty clear consensus. Like 99 fucking percent of the people will tell you they didn't want a leader. It was kind of like a, a uh, an agreed upon precept of this fucking thing, because uh, it made sense. If, if you remember, have somebody that's yeah, a figurehead, the they're going to get torn down. On the eight chan board, every, they had the na default name set when it was at its height. As everybody is like the Gamergate leader or something like that. Jim, do and you it, think... I, don't interrupt. I'm sorry. I, he, no, I thought he, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you stop talking for a second. I'll oh, but. Jim, do you think Sargon wants you to pause his neck hole? Do I, do, I, do I think he wants me to pause his neck hole? That's right. I, I, I just think he's probably upset at me because I told him my honest opinion about liberalism, which is it's fucking gay and cringy. I, I don't know why that's so weird to tell somebody, you know, I've seen this happen enough at this point where why wouldn't I give an honest opinion like that? I mean, you look back at Occupy Wall Street, you look back at fucking chinology, it just devolves into a shit show. And it becomes oh, God, something that nobody chinology. wants to associate it. Nobody wants to associate it with it uh, five or six years later. I mean, if you see somebody in a, honestly, if you saw somebody walking down the fucking street right now in a guy fox mask, you wouldn't be like, wow, that guy's a fucking faggot. <laughs> no, he's obviously like a supreme gentleman and somebody I, I should follow around and be their friend. Yeah, you know, the fedora and the trench coat and the katana. Oh, yeah, Kekistan is another good example of it. Uh -huh. I mean, it went from something funny to fuck with a celebrity in an art project. Uh, to fucking people running around kids' playgrounds waving Kekistan flags going, re-get out normies. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, get some perspective. What the fuck are you doing? That one is directly because of Sargon, because he appropriated the whole Kekistan thing and took it way too far. I, I know, I know, but he claims he doesn't browse 4chan or 8chan, and he, does, he, uh, he doesn't know anything about that. It just was some thunderbolt of inspiration from the gods that he came up with. Kek you know, it's just whatever. Didn't he, it's like, e claim that he actually shit. made it up? And then, it, like, yes, yes. yeah, he claimed he invented it separately, didn't he? Jesus. Um, while we're asking you about random ass internet drama, you probably know better than most. I want to ask, and feel free to just completely, you know, avoid the question, but what's up with this crazy hair thing? I don't even know who the fuck that is. Like, I, I was on the uh, the morning Kumite, and she got brought up. Apparently, uh, she was the chick that ran around VidCon, which was like this fucking dumb gamer or <laughs> dumb uh, YouTube meetup. Uh, and she was like filming people or doing something outside their hotel rooms. Uh, and then Failure and a few other people were talking about it on stream and had brought up uh, Vern something. It's like a skeptic YouTuber uh, apparently had something with her. And then uh, it went from there into, uh, you know, allegedly uh, Failure tweeted out a, uh, a retweet of somebody putting a picture of uh, crazy hair and Sargon together as possibly having fucked each other at VidCon. Yeah. That that's about all I know. I know what you guys probably heard yourself if you watch the Kumite. I, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance. I just saw the stuff on Twitter today, so that's why I'm so curious about it. Because that's that's some shit right there. Because isn't Sargon married? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> From what I understand, yes, he is. <laughs> well, that that is interesting. That is very interesting. I don't know. I can't. I I couldn't tell you the validity of whether this rumor is true or not. Uh, but I'm sure if it were, his wife's dinosaur is very upset. <laughs> Are you talking about the comment where he cheated on his wife with some tranny? Is she a tranny? No, that's a different, oh, different, different allegation okay, different of finality. Because okay. that one isn't, that, I think that's based on like leaked Facebook uh, messages. Because I've seen those posted in the threads before. No, that was actually from a video he did with Kraut uh, where he shows his desktop and it shows there's a conversation with his wife on Facebook and she's yelling at him saying, Why did you insult or why did you compliment some tranny? Uh, I can't trust you or something like that. Wow, that's that's not a leaked Wait, Facebook what? conversation. Yeah, there's a, it's a stream he did with Kraut like a year or two ago, and he he would show his whole desktop, and there are like a thousand tabs open, and he goes to Facebook, and right as he does while he's talking to Kraut, a Facebook message pops up, and it's from his wife, and his wife says something along the lines of, um, 
why did you why why are you flirting with tra uh you know some tranny uh you know after the booth thing i thought i you know things were rough i guess i can't fucking trust you so oh i God. i don't know i don't know what any of that shit is i, I don't you know I, I saw somebody post uh, screen caps of this and then they link to the stream and sure enough the stream is real and the the conversation pops up your guess is as good as mine holy fuck i'm just surprised i haven't heard of this jesus i mean at a certain point it's like you don't want to dig into their personal drama because i think a lot of these people i mean you see them being weird on the internet but they probably have an even more fucked up personal life that you don't see because they are just such depressing you know fucked up individuals like jeff for example yeah, yeah your, no. your, 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 uh, your chat is saying that Sargon responded with, it's an intentional compliment, dear, which I, I don't know what the fuck that even is supposed to be. Huh. Well, obviously, it's intentional, isn't it, if you gave it? So I don't, I, I don't know. I can't tell you what's going on with that shit. So back to the original question, then. Are traps gay? Yes. <laughs> How's that? If, you know, if you're, if you're engaged, if you're engaged in sexual activity with something that has a penis, you are gay. I don't care if that penis is hidden, if you put a bow tie on that penis. If you call it an elephant, fucking it, it doesn't matter how you address the penis that you're fucking around with. If it's got a dick, you are gay. There's Only if guy. you're being penetrated or sucking the cock. <laughs> There's yeah. this guy. No, uh, it's still think, gay. <laughs> this YouTuber, some guy with a voice, I think it is. He reads like just random posts from 4chan. And there's a story from B of this guy that fucked a fucking uh, tranny and just had this post about wanting to just kill himself afterwards. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, and we'll yeah, some of the the tranny and... stories and trune stories out there are pretty fucking entertaining. Like the dilation ones that you'll see pop up on Reddit are fucking like horror stories. If you read that shit, it's just fucking I have, awful. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm I'm like weirdly curious. You mind uh, kind of giving us an oh, example? Shit, really? Oh, yeah, uh, well, dilate. Uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll give you some. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> Would you pause? Uh, so when you go into the hole, please. Yeah, when when you go to the doctor to have your dick cut off and turn into a uh, Frankenstein pussy, uh, basically your body thinks of that giant uh, hole that you put in yourself as a fucking gaping wound, and so it tries to seal itself up. So the only way to keep your pretend pussy from sealing itself up like any other open wound on your body is shoving a dildo in it every single day. The chat but is because they use your because they use your balls to you uh, for like the inside skin of your pussy, your fake pussy, uh, it grows hair. So you get <laughs> hairballs in your pussy, uh, and if you don't wow. dilate, it gets infected. So you've got infected hairballs in your closing wound, uh, and I'm sure it smells just fantastic. I'm sure that's just a great trait for anybody that's been tricked into licking it or putting it in. Yeah, and remember, this is all. Have you guys watched the video of the surgery? Oh, no. yes, I've seen. Yes, I've, no, seen, I've seen it before. This and after that oh, video no. was so enlightening, honestly. No. Yeah. Well, hey, they were saying there was too much Reddit up in here, so I hope that all of our guests from R the Donald are now learning a little bit. Oh, well, yeah, your chat is saying they want even more details. They want yeah. even more details. <laughs> like, I would be fascinated it was so, like, The worst part of that video was where like, they, they took up like, the shaft and like they inverted the shaft after cutting off the skin. I was like, oh, my God. Like, well, that have one you seen the converse of the female it. to male where they, they take the vagina and they flip it inside out and they basically stuff it with, with whatever they put into a hot dog? And it, it looks like it looks one. like a little uh, it looks like a toddler's arm that's missing the hand. It like, <laughs> looks really unnatural. It's like just hanging there, swinging everywhere. They got to put a fake. Um, oh, you know the uh, like the old erectile dysfunction thing where it's like a pump. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, because they can't get a boner, there's no they can't like fake the fucking blood flow to your fake dick. So they got to pump it up to make this dead baby arm stick out like a real penis. It's just <laughs> uh, it's remarkable. <laughs> Uh, I like the fact that our views actually went down a little bit while we were talking about that. They were That's great. Well, hey, they should know, know the, the they, should, they should know the reality of what's waiting out there. It's uh, unpleasant that, to look yeah. at. That yeah, video I, I, should be required viewing for anybody who advocates fucking like trans politics or any of that shit. Like, you need to watch that before you have it. Open your fucking mouth. Come on. Oh, absolutely. I think it's you see all these people that oh, gay should be accepted, trans should be accepted. I'm like, you should watch. Uh, fucking standard fuck party featuring Ken Boy. Uh, Jim, your video on positivity, which is one of the most horrifying 15 minutes of my entire life. And uh, then, yeah, whatever you said. Because, I mean, if you put that together and you put that in their face, I don't, I just don't, I don't think that people can handle the reality of that shit. Jim, I have to say, I actually lost a friend because I shared the positivity video to him and he's just never talked to me since. 
He's like, you're into some sick shit. I'm like, it's just well, funny. To maybe me. you wanted to pause your neg hole. Maybe he was <laughs> his plan was foiled because you've discovered what his goal was. Oh, God. How much research did you do for that? Like, in turn, like, just how much of your time did you spend on those fucking forums reading that shit before you made that? Uh, a yeah. lot of them are for older screen caps from sites that don't exist anymore, but a lot of them as well were from social media accounts or websites that still exist. So just looking around, it, it's real shit. Like if you go and you look on Twitter right now under certain hashtags like uh, pause my ass and shit like that, you're going to find people that want you to stick a bloody toothbrush up their asshole and infect them Amen. with your viral load. It's the craziest shit. Well, the, the TRS guys, they had, a, they had a pretty good show the other day where they got somebody sent them a copy of Paws Magazine, the magazine for HIV positive uh, people. And they were there was an article in there about how if your viral load is, you know, not detectable, it's like undetectable equals untransmittable. They've now studied to the point where they're like, yeah, you're fine to have unprotected sex with non HIV positive people. And of course, you don't need to tell them. It's not like you're going to infect them after all. It's just, oh, it's just a big fucking, yeah, it's a lovely little party. AIDS is just super fun, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's go infect everybody with it and get infected with it because Did it's so Did that law odd. actually pass in California where it's like, yeah. it's like yep. now yeah. encouraged? Yeah. Jesus mm -hmm. fucking Christ. But, you know, if you, if you oppose that, you're a bigot. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, okay, in the, in, in the, just to keep hitting on that, the fucking guy who wanted to make like super aids, right? He's like, I'm going to keep getting my viral load up and then bring it down by taking the medication and then let it back up until I have the super aids and then we'll just infect a bunch of people and go out in a blades of blaze of paused glory. And I'm like, I'm sure he's not the only person who thinks that way. And that's fucking terrifying. Uh, yeah, he was like a super villain. He wanted to create a super strain <laughs> to kill off the straight people. Like, I'm going to create super aids by just getting uh, yeah, as many super loads villains. on my ass as I can. <laughs> super super villains that are nowhere near as cool as a bowl of chain autists. I, I don't know what. Yeah, that that guy's probably dead as a doornail at this point. <laughs> I can't imagine he survived very long after being on his knees at glory holes for a year or two. No, actually, I heard, no, 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 actually, the real shit. I heard he just got a job working at Infowars. He's a model. Oh, well, I'm, sure. right? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Alex Jones will love that. They can talk about who made the frogs gay as uh, he gets his asshole paused. Yeah, funny. Milo's very popular, but um, no, they're, they're I don't know about that. Like, you know, you you say Milo's Milo really dropped popular, off after that whole uh, th that whole child well, molestation thing. Have you looked at his uh, his stream metrics? Like, I was on the morning Kumite and he was doing his morning stream, and he had less viewers than Tonka did. I didn't even know he did a morning stream, to be honest. Yeah, he's but got I, he's got his own little uh, broadcast show that he does. It's like a radio video hybrid, uh, but you know, it, like averages like a thousand to two thousand. I know he has a huge amount of people on Facebook, but I don't know what the fuck's going on with his audience being drawn in to watch him talk live. Yeah, and also I just don't yeah. see the appeal. I'm not sure if I can trust his stats because he keeps saying he has like a million dollar deals, these giant book deals, old businesses going. Yeah, I thought that all fell that. through like after that whole where he basically outed himself as like being a kitty diddler. I, see, well, I thought he was still. Everybody... Isn't he still working but... with Glittering Steel? Like, I mean, he's still he's got the backing of. Um, is it the Mercers? Who was it? No, I, I think the I don't know if the Mercers cut him out, but last I heard, he was being hired by Alex Jones to sell magic dick pills. So that I mean that was my last understanding was that he had moved over to Infowars. That's why. I what, that whatever joke. happened with uh, Jones and Watson? Did they ever address the fact that they went on about how soy makes you uh, an effeminate pussy, but then their pills had soy in it? I don't know, but yeah. let me read a quick little excerpt from a story about a lawsuit being filed against Mr. Jones. Oh, um, in 2014, the CEO of the company, Alex Jones, allowed his friend Shane Steiner into my office to display my computer with images of gay pornography, Jacobson said, adding that he made a formal complaint to the HR department. He continued, I believe this action was a continuation of the intimidation and sexual harassment that he was grooming me for homosexual sex. Wait, I'm sorry. I, I blanked out for a second there. Did they, Who was grooming him for homosexual sex? This Jewish guy is alleging that Jones is an anti-Semite who was grooming him for homosexual sex sexual sex by showing him gay so, porn on his computer. Joe, Alex Jones hates uh, Jewish people so much he wanted to anally fuck one to teach him a lesson. Well, at least turn him out and to be his little uh, like twink hooker so he can pick up more Milo's Are you sure this Paul Joseph like Watson's. The, the gay fan fiction of this particular man? This is from the Daily Storm. Right? They're, they're quoting an article from... Oh, wait a minute. Are, are you sure they're not fucking with you? <laughs> no, well, they're, <laughs> quoting, they're quoting... I'm sorry. They're quoting an article from the Daily Mail. That's verbatim from uh, the lawsuit. Oh, the Daily Mail. That, that great. Yeah, but I mean, it is a Jewish guy that's suing him, you know. So, 
Oh, no, uh, I, I'm sure it's bullshit. I think it's a hilarious <laughs> accusation that this dude is saying, yeah, Alex Jones was, like, showing me a couple dudes fucking, and he was totally trying to just pimp me out. How is he going to prove that in court? Like, how is he going to... I don't even know how you'd prove that in court. He showed me gay porn on the company computer. <laughs> I mean, he'll say, oh, I filed an HR complaint contemporaneous, but also, this is Alex Jones. He's literally, you know, whatever. I mean, I think that a lot of the, the lawsuits against him will just try to say that there's a, a pattern of behavior between him letting David Duke on. And apparently there's an African-American woman saying that he called her nigger bitch and stuff. And yeah, so. Oh, woe well, well is her, I guess. Well, it'll be funny to watch happen then, I guess, if this goes to court. Hopefully somebody films it. be an entertaining fucking uh, civil suit. If you wouldn't mind our society going down the drain if we had uh, cameras in every courtroom to watch the, the fireworks, you know? We all know you wouldn't, Jeff. Yeah, you can actually walk into almost any courtroom you want and just watch the trials, you know? Yeah, but I want, like, a courtroom streaming service so I can watch all, like, the DJ and shit going on. Sounds so like you don't have to leave your yeah, mom's basement. Good. Yeah. Courtroom live streams with super chats. Yeah. That's and like I can donate to the sports. defense or the, prosecu the prosecution. <laughs> prosecution. <laughs> I think the Freudian slip there. Have you all seen the video of Alex Jones talk, like, ranting about the Jews? Isn't that what he does oh. on his show every day? I, I haven't seen that one, no. It's on uh, this guy Johnny Gatt's channel. It's like the truth about Alex Jones or something. It's just like this 10-minute clip of him like just talking about like the Republic is in danger. And like he, he's like for three minutes, he's just talking like he usually does. Then he's like he talks – he starts talking about like Israel and Jews and all this shit. It's fucking crazy, honestly. Well, he has uh, – what's his name? Roger Stone on a lot. And Stone's batshit crazy, but, like, he's probably the most woke dude in, like, American politics on the JQ. On, like, a down low level. Because he's, I mean, he was a, he was a fucking, because uh, he founded, Ro or what is it, Stone Black Manafort. And they were, like, the largest influence peddler in D.C. through the Reagan era. So he saw all that shit firsthand. He fucking facilitated it. Do you, you know? do you think that if this lawsuit goes through, we'll finally get an answer to the one mystery people have been dying to know? Whether or not Alex Jones is really Bill Hicks? Like, if they get them in court, will he be able to be asked that on the stand and we'll finally have a fucking answer? Uh, would, do you I actually believe that? that so much? I think it's funny as shit, because they do really... Uh, if you look at Jones when yeah. he was younger, they do really look a lot alike. Yeah, as it's far really as conspiracy fucking weird. theories, it's no more far-fetched than the ones Alex Jones talks about on his show, so... That's true. And Hicks could do a lot of weird voice uh, impressions as well. Maybe this is like Hicks going Andy Kaufman. Like this has been a bit he's been working on for like fucking twenty years, just to see how far he could push it. How amazing would it be if that's real? Just the, the, it would the be the one... greatest thing ever done. It would be the greatest thing that anybody okay, has. Do ever they done. have Bill Hicks DNA on file? I, I'm, I'm sure, sure there's a somewhere. joint somewhere around that has you know like a little fucking roach has got his DNA on it still. Dude, Bill Hicks smoked this with me in 1983. What's what's the craziest conspiracy theory you believe in? Are you asking me or anybody? But yeah, I fuck. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess I'd have to think about it for a minute. I believe I in all sorts of crazy way. shit. I really? Think if we went all the way, we just get shut down. <laughs> well, I mean, we don't have to do like a, you know fucking chemtrails or nine eleven. I did think that the Vegas shooting was a little weird. That's a lot of fucking. Weird. I mean, they still haven't even released a motive, and now allegedly there's a second shooter that they're talking like usually, about. Usually, I don't think, I think a lot of the shooting conspiracies are pretty strange, but the fucking Vegas shooting was, was weird as fuck. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually say that Sargon did a good job on his Vegas video. He would talk about the second shooter in that video. Has Laura Loomer released hers yet? Uh, oh god, she's been talking about that shit for like months. I don't know what the fuck Laura's doing with her. I, Vegas I mean, she's literally video. just using it as an excuse to get fucked up in Vegas constantly. Uh, yeah. I, I, if, let me think. Uh, okay, nine eleven. I think Saudi Arabia had their hands all over that shit, uh, and I think that's why a lot of the documents get blocked from coming out, and I think that's why a lot of the civil cases and criminal cases don't ever go forward with it. Well, that was um, the 23 pages of the 9-11 report. That was pretty much confirmed, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's good. Yeah, but I, I think there's a lot more to it that we're just never yeah. going to fucking hear about, uh, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Um, the Vegas thing does seem really weird to me. I, I don't I, I don't know what's going on with that, but there seems like there's more to it. Uh, again, it's not about being talked it's about. Just, it's all conjecture. But uh... Jim, Jim, have you been following the David Hogg thing from the Florida one? You think he's a crisis? We're not doing, Hague, we're not doing I... Hogg on the stream. That will get, get us actually shut down. 
Like no joke. It's, it's on the bad bad blacklist, the uh, V for Vendetta style blacklist that the Google employees look at. They have like this giant room, just like in that movie. And if you ever say anything, they'll uh, get your video and channel destroyed. Oh, I mean, you so you mean it, if I start talking about it right now, you guys are fucked, huh? It, yeah, they, they'll they'll fucking backtrace us through the internet. Uh, <laughs> Find where you live. Yeah, Shut yeah. Blaze of Glory. Let's do it. Fuck it. Yeah, there's a few like, key words they're banning right now, such as crisis actors. Oh no. Well, you I thought it was interesting. They went after Jones super hard for Sandy Hook, but they didn't care about all the nine eleven stuff. You know, like that's what they that's what they really hate him for was all the Sandy Hook shit. Yeah, so that, that seemed to get under their skin quite a bit. Someone in the chat point out, you start talking about 9-11 and the views plummet. Well, could be uh, just getting late, because uh, it is going to bed down now. Yeah, I actually do have to head out as well soon. Oh boy, you bring up Saudi Arabia and look at all the pussies run. Okay, gentlemen, <laughs> I know who's paying your bills. Yeah. All right, I see what's up here. All right. Wait, Ancap, are you bowing out? Uh, not yet. Oh, don't do that to me on the Saudi thing. I'll fucking roast you for that. Oh, yeah, um, but because of all my uh, Twitter subscribers. Yeah, right? all those guys' <laughs> Twitter subs are like Saudis. and these Apparently his, his account got hacked by a Saudi, as he claims, but he might just be a Saudi plant. We don't know. Yeah. Oh, I got a question for you. Just just while we got you here, and I, I, this is something that I was interested in. When you did your catfish, the King of the Catfish video, like at what point in the research did you realize the conclusion that you finally came to at the end of the video? Before the video was even being worked on, I, I tweeted uh, when this all began because I looked into it that it was a catfish. Literally the day that it came out that he was getting fucked with, I knew that he was getting fucked with. I just let it go on because I found it funny. And then I did the video <laughs> to recap it at the end. That shit was like fucking Inception. Like I was just watching it, just like, it can't get any. Oh my God, it's getting weirder. You know, it was. Uh, yeah, because the yeah. account that was tweeting him, the, the initial woman that was tweeting him, I looked through it, right? And she had conversations with somebody else who was also like an escort. Who was like, oh, come pick me up at the airport, right? So it, it was making it seem like these two people knew each other. So I looked into who that other woman was. And it turned out some chick was screaming her head off for like two years saying, this bitch um, is not real. It's a catfish. They took all my pictures from my website and are pretending to use them as if that's who they are. Uh, so when I saw that and she actually verified that this woman or man or this couple was stealing her information to put this fake persona together, I figured, well, if that one's fake, and that one is saying that they're meeting in real life with the one that Phil is talking to, then the one Phil is talking to has to be fake as well, right? So it, it was pretty fucking obvious from the get uh, go that it was not a real thing. So the the chick that he posted on his thing with the long red hair, who I think he's still with, that I mean, that's just a wholly different person from uh, all of that, right? That, that's kind of where I lose. That's the his new, yeah. That's his new a girlfriend, I guess. I don't, I don't know much about her. I don't really keep up with the SB. I just found the catfish thing interesting because it was such a clusterfuck of shit that was going on for you know a good month and a half. Um, and it, it just a lot. Of, I mean, if you use common sense, a lot of it didn't make sense from the beginning. Who the fuck signs a non-disclosure act with a whore? Who ships a whore out from Europe to them when they could just go on fucking the back pages or Craigslist or other fucking services and get one from the neighborhood? Yes, like, why is some guy prostitutes? Yeah, right. why is some guy going to pay three thousand dollars to ship a whore to him when he could pay thirty bucks and get one in the back alley? That just Phil is a cheap motherfucker if you know anything about him. It doesn't make sense that he would pay that absurd amount of money for a European pussy and then sign I mean, contracts with like them a in politician. a payment plan. He's like a politician. He's getting the high class escort, uh, just like the the big high rollers. He's not doing. A, he's not going down to the uh, you know prostitution street. He's, well, a, he's it, a dignified guy. You know, there's a there. The other thing that tipped me off to that this was fake. Do you know there's a horror uh, web uh, horror rating website that exists? I may or may not know that. Yes. Uh, the Erotic Review, I think it is T E R, uh, where any horror that's ever appeared on the internet gets rated. They talk about the prices and the performance. So you can put somebody's name in, their phone number, their email address, and if they've ever been a whore, it will pop up a review for them. So when I entered her information into their database, nothing showed up. Huh. So, it, yeah, it's really obvious from the beginning that this uh, this person wasn't who they were. I didn't know it was some weird Dutch couple running some catfishing empire. That part I didn't know. But I, I was fairly certain from the beginning that it was a fake person uh, trying to either extort money through threats or, you know, uh, get paid through embarrassing him. 
think that it's so fascinating how the internet has gone. I mean, like 10 years ago, yes, there were people that were making money off the internet, but it was, you know, like people selling things or, you know, using it to update kind of what was already existing to now you have people that are filthy fucking rich off of like making reaction videos. You know, I wonder how big financially the beta bucks industry really is. Like how, how much of the GDP is beta bucks? Yeah, I don't know. They're not making products, right? They're not really providing services. It's like shuffling money from one person to the next person and then shuffling it back. It's really weird. Uh, it's like this weird cyclical... No, it's a monitor. service. It's definitely a service, but I just I wonder how big it is. Wait, yeah, uh, talking... I, I don't know. I mean... Yeah. Is it beta bucks or neat bucks? They're different things. Hey, you can spend your neat bucks like an alpha. You could also spend them like <laughs> a beta. <laughs> but if you're talking about like monetary support on the internet, I mean... Okay, Sargon's got what? Uh, a Patreon that pays him eight thousand, a maker support that pays him twelve hundred, and then he probably makes about five grand in super chats. Uh, Worski made probably between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in the last two months doing super chats. And again, I mean, they're going to take a cut for YouTube and then taxes, so the number's going to be different. Baked Alaska made five thousand bucks from super chats. Talk has probably made about ten grand from super chats. If you add up all the numbers from all the streams, I mean, people throw money at this shit, uh, just absurd amounts of money. So I mean, when you look at somebody like Peterson. It's no wonder he makes so much money. Uh, and even outside of Patreon, where he's sell selling a $2,000 rug or a $10 personality test or $40 fucking um, uh, speeches at his university. I mean, people just, I, I don't know. They, we went from buying things that we used on our own to paying other people to entertain us. It's, it's a really weird kind of, maybe it has something to do with the decline in people going to see movies so they have more disposable income to pay. I don't I fucking mean, know. Well, really, well, he I, wants I to go see Black Panther right now. Who doesn't? But I, I mean, like, I, I think that there's a good point there, and especially the way the demographics are changing that, you know, people under 30 just don't watch cable news or really cable at all. They hardly watch movies. They don't listen to radio. They watch YouTube. It's got the highest name recognition of any brand out there as far as a media company goes. And I mean, if you've got, if you've got a million viewers, like a million subscribers on your YouTube channel, you've got more reach than a lot of shows on major news networks, no matter what country you're in. And you've also got a global audience. Oh, yeah. Now, see, I would disagree with the guy in your chats. Berto Berto said you always paid people to entertain you. That's not true. Uh, when you know the internet was younger, people put up YouTube videos just to put up YouTube videos. People went on Stage Six or fucking uh, Justin TV or wherever the fuck they went just to put the content out there. Nobody was paying them to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, the monetization came later on. It came like what around 2010, uh, 2011, where that yeah, really started the to become a thing. Things really became a meme. The whole idea that everything has to be on your phone. I think smartphones probably played into it a lot too, you know, because it's one thing to sit in front of your computer and fuck around, but it's a whole other to have access to all of that on this little screen in your pocket that really never leaves your side. Yeah. We got a comment saying that throwing money in super chats is just like throwing money at strippers. So that's probably why they do it. Honestly, I think I get more out of throwing money into super chats than I ever have from a stripper, though. Unless you're actively, <laughs> unless you have a really good troll zinger, I don't think it's worth it to give money for somebody to read a line. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of confused at that. Well, mentality. you can participate in the conversation, right? Like this is one of the things that I really like about the the platform is you know if you listen to the radio, you can you can be all engaged with it, but there's no way for you to engage back with it. But with whatever this is, the way that YouTube has it set up, is you can to a certain degree participate in the conversation. And it doesn't always have to even be, you know, like a super chat. Because I mean often, you know, and we do it here a lot, you know, someone will just post something in the Spurg chat and someone will read it on air and that might change the flow of the conversation entirely. And so, okay, yeah, I don't get my rocks off that way, but it certainly is a lot more intellectually stimulating than a pair of tits in your face. No comment. Uh, again, I don't know. I mean, if you had a choice between a stripper's tits or Sargon's tits, where are you going to put that dollar? Oof. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, Can I there. pay Sargon to play with a stripper's tits? Why would you ever do that? Why would you want to watch that? <laughs> what the fuck are you on about? <laughs> Wouldn't it be entertaining to watch a beta bu pay a beta bucks and not be a beta? Well, maybe that's maybe that's what blood sports is now. Is we're basically just all cam whores with our clothes on. Yeah, that's that's probably true. Yeah, hey, everybody's become a Twitch slut. Like, okay, for real though, when I was when I was trying to play around and set up our OBS backend last night, like half of the guides for how to you know stream this stuff right was you know designed for girls who were trying to stream on you know fucking whatever it is live Jasmine. Well, yeah, it's a big thing. It's a big industry, even on Twitch. You know, I got all those cam horrors on there.
Yeah, because I mean, isn't that kind of how every new industry develops? You know, film started out, people were making dirty movies before Hollywood was a thing. You know, the first guy who made a camera, he was like, oh, hey, lift up your shirt real quick. Well, well Twitch originally had camcorders banned forever, and then they, they all jumped onto the scene. Now they make so much money, they basically are enshrined as like the queens of Twitch. Well, everybody else like can't even talk about them when they get banned. It's pretty funny. Yeah, you know, I don't get it. Why they don't make a separate channel, uh, a separate website like Twitch Cam Whores, just for them to go on, so you can keep it actually gaming focused. Because like in the Beta Bucks mentality, you feel more classy when they're not a cam whore. They're just a Twitch streamer who plays video games in air quotes, and they have like a like a, a small twenty pixel corner of the screen with like Overwatch or something. But I mean, they're they're video gamers. They're not cam whores. Yeah, you're not going to the shady ass strip club. You're just going to a bar with some very nice waitresses. I had like a strip uh, strip club arcade. Yeah, it's the Hooters of uh, strip whores. I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. This is so weird. It's a great conversation. Good stuff. Okay, I've got <laughs> I've got I've got something for the chat. I'm going to throw in here. Talk about how Britney is the female version of Sargon. Sorry, Talk about who? who? How Britney Venti is the female version of Sargon. Venti's a troll. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's way better than Sargon. I mean, that's There's, like Venti's you know, gimmick is is fucking with uh, the audience and uh, you know screwing with people uh, whose stream she goes on to. You know, I haven't yeah. watched too much of her content, so can you give me like a basic intro? Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, well, okay, she she almost got banned from Twitch recently because she was doing ethnic cooking. <laughs> by claiming she was by claiming she was she was part black and her ethnic cooking was mud cookies from Africa. <laughs> well she is part she did the 23 and me and she found that she was a quadroon. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. How, that's that's true. She has embraced her quadroon heritage and just the hateful Twitch staff just don't can't accept it. Well Crockmaster brings up a good point. She said, he said uh, she seals memes and flogs them to death just like him. I, I don't know. I don't really watch Venti. I just I, I know the few interactions that I've had with her uh, were I think it was a Destiny stream where like I Miles Chong was on there and uh, a bunch of other fucking people. It was a really weird fucking stream. All What's the weirdest stream you've ever been on, Jim? Uh, the Ross pedophile one. Yeah, I'd imagine that was pretty fucking odd. I've never heard so many people defend a guy that says he wants to fuck kids. It was really weird. I just think they're cute. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, the follow up to that. That's uh, the A defense. No, the follow up to that is actually really entertaining. The whole who always defended him uh, found out that he wrote erotic fan fiction about screwing kids, and that's when oh. she walked away from it. Oh. Wow. Yeah, the, I don't know. It's your it's video weird. About, your video about Nick Bates was the most disturbing thing I think I've ever watched. To be honest with you. Yeah, I watched the video. Of him jacking off with shit, so you you lucked out. I couldn't put that on YouTube. If it was a if it was a you know five six years ago, I would have, but can't do that now. Why? Why would you watch that? Because that was his legal defense. He said, "I can't possibly be a pedophile judge because I like to masturbate with shit." So he sent the judge a video of him jacking off with shit. Wait, 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 wait. Like that's a good legal defense. In his fist around his dick. Yeah, he shit into a toilet, fished it out, smeared it on his cock, and then basically told his, his legal defense was, see, look, I'm a corpophiliac. I don't want to fuck children. I just want to play with poop. Good good defense. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, very smart person. Yeah, it didn't, didn't like work. The defense, but on, didn't like, work in the well Oh, my God. Oh, well, yeah, so we talk about 9-11 and uh, transgenders. We lose a bunch of people. Now we keep talking about this, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, let's go listen to them talk about tits and jacking off with shit. I, I oh, yeah, think somebody, that is one of the, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, somebody brought up the dentist video. Yeah, that that piece of shit. Um, so he had a bunch of civil suits brought against him. Uh, it was this dentist in Florida who was operating on kids without anesthesia. Whoa! Uh, doing, yeah, he was doing. Yeah, Jewish guy. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. But uh, he would he would do like he'd get an eight year old in there and he'd be like, "Well, oh, we've got to pull like eight of their teeth." So he wouldn't anesthetize them. He'd just yank them out. And he did this all the time. And kids would just scream and freak out, you know, because it's horrific. Um. So this comes out, it was like, you know, a huge issue of like Medicare fraud and shit like that. Um, he loses his license to practice, his business goes under, but the parents want blood. So they want criminal charges and they want to sue him in civil court. Uh, but he pleads insanity and he gets away with it. So he has lost his house and all his money and he can't practice anymore and he lost his dental clinic, but he's not going to go to jail because they've deemed him to be uh, mentally unfit to stand trial. So he basically pulled an OJ. 
Yeah, uh, but it, you know the nurses and or uh, nurses, uh, dental assistants, I guess, uh, and the people that worked with him uh, said that he he knew what he was doing. That this was intentional. He wanted money. He wanted to be able to charge medical insurance for something that he didn't do. So he said, "Oh, I, I gassed them, or I used uh, Novocaine." <laughs> But then he wouldn't. He wouldn't do the. Yeah, so the but he Jewish, wouldn't do that. So do you think he got off on it? I, I, I don't know. Uh, there's some sick fucking people out there. But somebody that's going to intentionally. I mean, there are videos of him strapping down three year olds and yanking their teeth out without any. Any. He payment. must have got off on it at that point. Uh, I don't know what his fucking issue is, but that he he's somebody that should uh, be lined up against the wall. So as I mean, you're basically like the world's foremost expert on internet degeneracy. Like, do you do you think that humanity has always kind of been this level of fucked up, or is it accelerating because the oh no, I'll, I'll tell people... you what the problem is. Uh, shame disappeared. You know, before when somebody was an outlier and into some really weird shit, shame kept them in check. Society kept them in check because most normal people they'd encounter on the street would look at them if they said, "Hey, I like to wear diapers, pretend I'm a fox, and have people shit down my throat." Uh, most people would look at them and say, you're fucking weird. Shut the fuck up. But when the internet came around, all these people that were into this weird shit could avoid shame altogether and just network with each other, which made it more acceptable. And then they started their little rights movements where we're not weird. We're just different. Don't keep oh, yes. shame and all that the, kind of shit. The diaper furry uh, connection. The diaper furry network. Oh, the, the, okay. Actually, I have, I have something. So this happened to me fucking tonight, right? So I'm at work and uh, one of the people that I work with you know, we're kind of just having some conversation over filling some time. And, and the person says to me just at, out of the blue, they're like, yeah, so I'm a furry. And this and this and that. And they have this whole story to tell me that involves them being a furry. But just, you know, with no shame, no regret whatsoever, just drops that they're a furry. And I'm like, hey, don't fur shame, Bo. Yeah. I mean, is that like a protected class now? Can I like not discriminate against them? Might as well you, can, you, you can discriminate against anybody you like. You know, the interesting thing I found out about most of these communities is they have levels of what they even deem to be unacceptable. And it's gotten to the point where they can't even call out each other for really weird, fucked up shit. So when I did the Deviance videos, uh, the remarkable thing was, like, if I did an episode on Vore or Furries or whatever, I'd get a bunch of, like, uh, Vore fetishists or Furries commenting and saying, yeah, that guy was fucking insane. That kind of shit. So, I mean, they, yeah, they created this kind of atmosphere where you can't uh, laugh at them or shame them or Not say that's fucking Vore weird. Not all right? Vore moderators. <laughs> or you Don't can't, you can't call them out. But it got to the point where even they can't call it out anymore. Yeah. It's like this the, uncontrollable. Don't beat. let the Vore extremists well, well, represent the, all the Vore users. Hang on, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you out there real quick, Billy, because uh, you still, uh, as far as I understand, I haven't watched the last few Kumites, but you go on with V, who's an admitted furry and Vore enthusiast, and you don't call him out on that kind of stuff. I was on his stream, and I said uh, when V was talking about running a revolution in Romania, and I said uh, he was like, "What happens if I die?" And I said, "Well." The revolution will write V for Vor on their shoulder. <laughs> that was uh, that was one of the best parts of that stream. He didn't even react to that, did he? Uh, no, but. he just gave a knowing smile. And I've also yeah. called him a slippery snake uh, based on his viewing habits before. <laughs> I just don't know. Oh God. I just don't know why. Like in the after stream, he thought it was except. You know, he goes on to the Kumite and he just drops that he's a furry. Like no big deal. Like a very a very four. Uh, what's what's your speculation on what his animal is? Okay. I don't know what V's okay. animal is? A rat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not we just need to stop the stream here. He wants to be Tom Nook. No, 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 really. I'm being honest. Think about it. Raccoons will eat anything. So if you're a war <laughs> fetish uh, furry, it makes sense that you would be a raccoon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's not a wear diaper. <laughs> no, that's only that's only John Wear Candy, which is probably the funniest furry shit that I've ever encountered on the internet. Who is Wait, a what is this? The uh, okay. diaper is truly an enlightened being. I've never so seen anybody. John better. Weir Candy is a woman pretending to be a man, pretending to be a werewolf, pretending to be John Candy. <laughs> like, how many levels of insane are you on, bro? Right? Like, that's some meta level shit that they're pulling off. Did you hear about the transgender who uh, spent, so I think it's a male and a female, and then they spent $60,000 to become a dragon? Is that the one that killed themselves? I, I don't know. It was on the Stormer this morning. I think I mean, that I had a chance that it would happen. But. There, there was a dude that did all this body modification to become like a lizard dude, and then I think he blew his head off after he realized, oops. <laughs> Whoops, went too far on that one. <laughs> yeah, like, here we go. Why, okay. why is that in the political norm? It's, it's so ridiculous that like you just can't, like, oh, if I invert my penis and mutilate with this weird-ass surgery, I'm suddenly the other gender. 
Like, hey, it's yeah, like this here show. we go. Eva Tiamat Medusa, a transgender woman from Texas, believes she's the most modified transgender person in the world. Has spent more than forty-two thousand pounds or sixty thousand dollars transforming into a reptile. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Eva's journey began to becoming a dra dragon began when, while living as a man, Eva was diagnosed with HIV. She became determined to not die a human. Leaving her job as a vice president at a bank behind, Eva began to morph into the reptilian form she always longed to have. As you do. <laughs> what the fuck? Look, if she became a reptilian, she would have been able to enter the halls of power and become like, you know, put on the shadow council the, that runs all the countries. So that was just her plan, you know? you know. To be fair, I think it makes sense. I mean, if you can get surgery to uh, become a man or become a woman, then obviously you can use surgery to become a reptile. I mean, yeah, at that point, you can just become anything if you have a surgery and then the policy, the politi politics of the society say it's all right. Hey, does someone want to send uh, Tonka the link to pop in here? He's in the chat, too. Oh, sure. Oh, give me a sec. Fucking my producer, he's got all the connections. I don't know nobody. I'm just I'm just a guy. No, you know people, too. We share the we share the work. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I just. Like, that's the thing is I can't even watch some of your videos, Jim, because I start going down them and I don't want to believe, I guess, like fundamentally that people can be that fucked up. So, I mean, how does your girlfriend put up with it? Does she like ever just walk in and see you doing research for your videos and just like nope the fuck out? Have we lost okay. Jim? Jim? No. Oh. It's oh, okay. sorry, sorry. Yeah, I had myself <laughs> muted. Sorry, Matt. I was trying to answer. I was like, um, you're asking uh, how she puts up with it. Yeah, does she just ever walk in and just see what you're watching and be like, "This is way too fucking much for me"? Um, well, she has some strong opinions. Uh, she gets banned off social media quite a bit, sharing her opinions on certain things. Um, you know, to give you an idea of, she's a little more extreme in her political ideology than I am. Jesus. Like I've woken, I've woken up to the greatest story never told playing on TV <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of give you an idea of which direction we're going here. Ah. Um, she calls Cambodians jungle niggers. <laughs> uh, you know, so well, that's pretty common among Asians. I mean, I've never met. Oh, no, they Asian hate other Asians. Asians. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they fucking hate other Asians. And they all hate Cambodians. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. yeah was that so, Tonka? She has strong opinions about uh, individuals on the internet. <laughs> well, you found Viva Bronze reincarnation. Good job. Jesus. Uh, well, our dog's name is actually. <laughs> <laughs> is it Blondie? You have a German Shepherd named Blondie. No, you? it's it's Eva. It's a female dog. Yeah, <laughs> she was the one that named it. <laughs> what a sweet name for a pooch. Oh God! Oh yeah. God! We're getting too we're getting too mainstream now. Wild engine has appeared. Yeah, we're uh, moving from R to Donald to Facebook. We're we're hitting Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even allowed on Facebook. So, it, it, too, it ex too extreme for Zuckerberg. Too extreme for Zuck, but clearly, clearly it's that's right a low, up in here. Clearly. That's a low bar. Can't though. handle the duck. Oh, what were you banned for? I can't even remember. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I was just banned because, you know, it's Facebook and you click enough fucking buttons on Facebook, you can ban anything. It's fucking Facebook. Yeah, I don't know who used Facebook <laughs> in 2018. Yeah. What well, was probably. Dude in Mumbai, like, oh, this guy says he is an Indian, but I do not think he is an Indian. He must go now. I am not thinking you are a real Indian, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like part of the reason the internet's going to shit is all these companies are just terrified of losing all their H-1B workers. So they're trying to, you know, get as many people banned before they lose their employees as possible. Uh, it, yeah. I wish that I knew a bit more about that fucking Google lawsuit. That feels like there's probably a lot of whatever is going on going on in that. Which uh, oh. which one? The Demore one? Yeah. I, I don't, don't know. know. He, he sued it. because of uh, what he said was discrimination. Uh, based I mean, on I hope it works out. It's just like, you know, in this country, like whoever has more money with lawyers just basically wins every time. Demore is like the most soft-spoken person I've ever seen. I can't, I can't ever listen to any of his interviews. It's really annoying because I can't ever Wait. listen to it. That should put in perspective, though, how fucked everybody is. You're right. He yeah. is soft-spoken, and he doesn't say extreme things. So imagine how fucked people that have a sense of humor or have extreme yeah. views are in relation yeah, to Yeah, the more is like a hyper nerd. He just got pushed over the edge. They just He's punished the more. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at, too. It's yeah, hey, someone fun. someone send Mundane Matt the link. Oh, God. Thanks, Toad. Uh, no, but I, I mean, look at how fucked England is, right? The guy's like faking that he has to hide out in Nigeria 
while people are like hunting him and making documentaries about hunting him in Ohio just because he said racist things on the internet. Oh, did you see that documentary where the guy's like, somebody told me he's in the bar, so I stayed out there for 10 hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one, I watched it. Oh, okay, so, so uh, what was this one? Okay, so, so, what was this one? I don't remember off the top of my head. It's you on Vice, it, if you look it up. It's yeah. a Vice. Uh, fucking Vice. Oh, I, I God. God. Because England blew the fuck out of that journalist, too. Like, England's kind of, you know, made a couple of these dudes go crazy, and I think that, uh, so, so there's a process server who's trying to serve for the lawsuit with the Tanya Gersh thing and him uh, basically calling down a troll storm on her. So he's telling everyone, oh, I'm in Lagos, Nigeria, because I don't live in Ohio, so I can't be a party to this lawsuit. And uh, anyway, so he's probably not. I mean, it's fuck, he's not in Nigeria. There's no way. But there's this process server who's like trying to hunt him down. And he he wrote this story like it was just like fucking fan fiction about he's in the grocery store one night and he sees this short little bald dude. And he's like, that's Andrew Anglin, but I don't have the papers. I can't serve him. But I know that he's here because I saw him. And then, the, the you know, of course, the security camera comes out and it's a dude with a hat on. So how did he know he was bald? But, uh, you know, this guy's like going nuts trying to chase Nazi ghosts around Columbus, Ohio. It's fucking hilarious. Got to do something right. in fucking Ohio. Well, it amazes me that nobody has been fucking with this guy and just calling in tips. Like, oh my god, I just saw Andrew. He's in. He's by the river taking a swim. You should run down there. We we have. He we just have. ran into the ladies' <laughs> restroom. <laughs> I'd be There's calling no. him every day with a hot tip on where they can find him. The guy doesn't even pick up his phone anymore. Like, I think he's kind of got. Because I mean, you got to realize that England's got a lot of people that have nothing bad to fuck with this guy and a couple of the journalists who follow that. Like. Poor El Reeve. You guys know El Reeve, the chick with the huge glasses, blonde hair, and weird tits for Vice. Is that the one that got all wet uh, at the the fucking march? The one at, that was falling. Yeah, around? yeah, Charlotte. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's probably. I, I swear to God, I think she banged Cantwell. But um, yeah, that girl's like the only halfway decent one. But like Enoch, uh, you know, he released a bunch of phone conversations that he had with her that are just absolutely fucking hysterical. Because she'll be like, oh, yeah. I mean, she was on The Daily Show once. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, I just think you guys are very interesting, very interesting. And you got the guys on there trying to, you know, explain how the Holocaust didn't happen. And she's just like, oh, is that what you really think about that? Okay. Okay. See, I think Sam Hyde has the best approach dealing with. Uh, I fucking love Sam Hyde, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> well, because they're going to lie to you. Never trust them. Like, anything they say, if oh, we're going to give you, a, you know, we just want a real interview. No, they don't. They don't. So he just fucks with them outright, which is great. Beautiful Joe Bernstein. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that shit was great. Uh, I hope I hope Sam Hyde's weird projects work out. He seems to be like this weird hobo trying to build a video game at at moment. Uh, I wish him all well. I wish he would participate in blood sports. I would love to see Sam Hyde versus Halsey. That'd oh shit! Amazing. Somebody in your your chat brought up uh, Kurt Eichenwald, uh, the <laughs> tentacle <laughs> fetishist. Did you see what happened with him in diversity? Oh, I read the Dojin. I read the Dojin. Yeah, well, he got wait, what? Docs for it was great. Dojin. Oh, well, okay. So what basically. Was all yeah, some comic or some comic artist, some uh, communist tranny furry that works for like Marvel, uh, made some comment about like dead soldiers and laughing about it. So mm -hmm. Eichenwald said that's fucked up. So all of these like SJWs went after him, and Diversity in Comics explained to him like what's going on. So Diversity in Comics uh, releases this video talking about it, and Eichenwald got mad at him, saying, "Hey, you you said something that wasn't true." He wrote him this like three page fucking email saying. You're gonna you're gonna offer an apology. You're gonna take down that video, or I'm gonna make an example out of you. And don't you dare tell anybody I sent you this email. Oh, like he God. lost his fucking mind. So the guy posted it, making fun of him. And Eichenwald's like, I'm gonna sue. I'm gonna sue the shit out of you. So I don't know what's going on with that. But you know, this is a guy that uh, accidentally paid for child pornography. This is a guy that uh, got caught looking at tentacle porn and tried to say he was just showing I, it. it was, no, it wasn't even That's tentacle porn. It was a different hentai. It was a mother, uh, it was like mother son incest hentai on his tab. I looked it up because then. Well, didn't sure he say he was thing. trying to just show it to his wife and like. Yeah, oh, he was trying. Oh, he and his kid were trying, trying to show porn to the it wife. It was big titted mom son hentai. <laughs> Yeah, but he said the, tentacle porn. He didn't. He, that's the well, no, that's no, where that he, comes from. The fault of the tentacle porn because that's like the stereotypical like view, like the the normie view of. Yes, we get it. Hentai. You're really into hentai. It's okay. Look, I'm a hentai yeah, connoisseur. I, I, this is my area of expertise. I would have never been able to tell. <laughs> I know. And I read the, I read the comic that he that was on his tab, and it was mother son incest. Oh, oh, good. You did your research. What was the thing about accidentally buying child porn? So he I've heard wrote, about tentacles, but not that. Uh, okay, so he was going to do a story. Uh, this, this is what this is what he claims. I'll tell you as best as I remember. He was going to write a story 
about child prostitution and child pornography. And he had a budget uh, uh, allotted to him to pursue this. Well, he writes his story up and, you know, like they're like, wow, this is kind of fucked up. It centers around like a teen boy. Uh, but then it comes out that he spent a bunch of money that he didn't report uh, to his bosses or to the fucking outlet that he was working for on uh, CP related things that he accidentally he forgot about it. That's why it wasn't in the story. But was it was it research? Is that what he what he said? He it was? Paid a kid. He he, I think he paid, didn't he pay an underage kid to jack off for him. Uh, so there's what some the weird fuck? shit. I can't. I can't. What? Uh, what these are the allegedly. Fuck? Let me say. Let me say this. It's allegedly. I don't <laughs> want <laughs> my wife to yell at <laughs> Paley's me. Paley's legal team here. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I also want to just throw out another thing because this is the thing is the, the poor bastard Joe Gold or Jew Goldstein who sent him that uh, that seizure gif. You know, the flash one that says, I hope you have a seizure. And then, you know, he's like, oh, God, I had a seizure. And now I'm going to sue you for bodily harm. And I'm pretty what? sure that you they, at least this, got this. This is guy Kurt's doxed. wife. He's on the floor shitting himself right now. I'm very upset. <laughs> what? Sure Kurt's wife. Yeah, he's, his wife came on Twitter and said, my husband's having a seizure right now because of you evil Nazis. <laughs> Which I love the reaction, right? It's not, hey, I'm going to call 911 and save my poor husband. It's I'm going to get on Twitter and argue with this guy. I, yeah, I it's bullshit. I don't believe it for a second. I think it's Kurt. It's not and that just far fetched. That I mean, there was that millennial during the recent school shooting and took a Snapchat of like a dying body with like emojis in it. Well, no, I think fucking, Kurt's uh, a, a fucking attention whore, and I think he completely made yeah. it up. I'm not denying no, that he might have, uh, you know, issues with uh, flashing gifts and stuff, but I don't think he had an attack. I think he just played it up. Yeah, he still ruined that poor kid's life, though. But of course he did. He doesn't give a shit. He's scummy. Which poor kid? What? 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 Goldstein, the guy who had tweeted, okay, so because whatever, he tweeted him that picture, so Eichenwald files this lawsuit against the guy. Well, Jew Goldstein is obviously not his real name, so Twitter gives up the guy's docs, and the guy gets fired and, like, kicked out of school. Oh. Yeah. Well, isn't he pursuing criminal charges, too? Like, this this guy's yeah. out for a lot of shit. Yeah. I thought they actually already went through, and he got put, uh, he got fined or whatever. That could be true too. I, I don't remember. You need to be behind seven fucking proxies. I don't. You really need to be fucking smart if you're gonna fuck with people. God, that's so fucking lame. He's he's suing someone over a fucking flashy gif. Oh yes. yes. Is that better or worse than Maddox? Uh, th no, Maddox <laughs> is worse. Maddox is far yeah, worse. Uh, I can't wait for that lawsuit to get off the ground. He's going to lose a court case, and the court is going to judge him a cuck. That's never happened before. He's <laughs> legally <laughs> recognized. Yeah, he's going to be legally recognized cuck. The paragraph uh, of the, the fence awful. spells out cuck, the first letter of every word in the paragraph. That was great. Yeah, did you guys Wait, watch the? Yeah, you guys watch the videos of the lawyer who actually went through like page by page of the entire court documents for the Maddox thing. Maybe. Yeah, I've read a lot of it because people keep passing it around on Twitter because everybody's stunned that Maddox is, is fucking retarded. I'm just stunned that he's still around on the internet. I'm. St there were so many people who were talking about how cool he was like 20 minutes ago, and then all of a sudden this shit happened. 20, oh no, like, I thought he was 10 years ago. I, I thought he was a fag for a while. <laughs> Let me be honest with you. Uh, he did a cuck video in 2016 where he's like, "Is it really that much of an insult? Come on, guys, just let the bull fuck your girlfriend." Really. Yes. Uh, I'm beginning to think the internet was a mistake. I did. I didn't know him. I, I didn't know about that guy until here recently. He, he's been on the on YouTube for a long ass time. He actually got on TV back in the day when YouTube was really young. He was on a uh, Penn and Teller's bullshit show. Oh and God, like, they made fun of him so hard. Holy yeah. shit, that was funny. And then, and then Penn and Teller, uh, like he, he was asking an apology from Penn and Teller, and Penn and Teller's like, "I don't even think about you, kid," on its podcast or something. Well, yeah, because didn't he? What was it? The the dude who he's suing, he had a podcast with that guy, right? He and Dick Masterson apparently had like some very successful podcast a couple years ago. It mm -hmm. was a very big deal. And something just went south. And they... I, I gotta say, Chad, Ak was right. Chatelet, my fellow Kakistanis. <sighs> Welcome, Reddit. Enjoy the show. Oh, Jim, do you know who Aqua is? Uh, Aqua is best girl. At least I've been fucking bombarded with that uh, in every <laughs> IBS thread that's been going on for the last fucking week. I shit you not, somebody today through our thing sent me a folder of Aqua, and I'm like, oh, well, there's like, oh, this Aqua fag sent you their image pictures. I'm like, okay, cool. They're sending me some more stuff using the show. No, the thing's like fucking five gigs of Aqua pictures. 
I don't know what to do with them. Uh, that's such an average A poster has that level of uh, you know chronicles of every anime character. Like who who goes through an anime and saves every fucking scene that that character is in and downloads them as a people who post on A all the time. They have they have it numbered. They have like seven hundred en- entries and they have them like categorized and shit. It's pretty autistic. Yeah, but this is not A. It's a poll. Well, when, well, the the person from the aqua poster from A is a poll poster as well. Yes. Jesus. That's all I have to say. Fucking internet. Just yeah, jazz. you're just jealous of my enlightened Yuri viewpoint. <laughs> did you uh, did you watch the uh, shit show there, Tonka, with the the Halsey stream? Uh, negative. I was was that a little bit ago? Yeah, that was this yeah. na- uh, tonight, right? Yeah, I, I only caught the ass end of it. I, what I happened? I, I missed it completely, so I don't even know what happened with Halsey. I know Duke didn't show up though, right? Yeah, so so the opening, and I, I only saw part of the opening and then part of the end, but you had Eric Stryker from uh, TRS, right? He was supposed to originally have been Enoch's debate partner. He tried to get onto the call, and then Halsey was like, well, I'm not going to debate you because Enoch won't debate with you because apparently Enoch wants an apology from Halsey or something. And he just like starts jewing out on Stryker, and uh, you know, JF in his very nice way is like, well, we'll have to kick you off the thing, but if you want to say a last thing. And so Stryker reads like this manifesto about you know, free speech on the internet. And he's like, well, I was expecting you to kind of agree to this debate, Halsey, so I was going to say nice things about you in it, but now I'm just going to shit on you because he starts saying the reason why everyone's getting shut down in blood sports is because of the Jews. Of course, you know, that's his position, but it was it was very well written, and of course, Halsey lost his fucking mind. It was pretty funny. Yeah, it was just a JQ stream. So why did uh, Duke not make it? Did, was there a reason for it? The dude's like 80. <laughs> did he fall down or something? <laughs> he it also up? switched locations too. So like he's probably sitting over there in a hangout on Andy's channel by himself. Where are you? figure out how the inner tubes work? <laughs> no, but uh, for, no for real, I think he probably didn't want to go on because uh people were talking about what Halsey had done to Enoch in the previous stream and he didn't want it to just become just a stream of personal attacks on David Duke. Maybe the official reason was a family emergency. Yeah, but Halsey does well when Halsey's on the offense. When you bring up a subject that gets under his skin, which like the Liberty thing or defending Israel, he freaks the fuck out. All you need to do is use that and you'll press him into the point of spurging out. Fuentes did that perfectly on the fucking stream with him. Yeah, he really did. That was one of the best ones. I think that's like- where uh, Enoch fucked up. Is he, he let Halsey control the flow of the conversation when he kept saying, let me finish, can I speak? He should have told him to shut the fuck up and just kept talking over him. Exactly. That would have... Throwing exactly. him off his game. Yeah, I thought Enoch's uh, post debate commentary was very interesting because he, he understood exactly where he had fucked up. But, you know, being in that spot, it's always difficult to, you know, when you're there and the guy's pretending to engage in like good faith and then keeps doing all that bullshit, you know, because he would like respond to a personal attack with a real argument and then respond to a real argument with a personal attack. Hey, every, everything's fair in the arena. You got to be ready to go toe to toe with that shit. But I, yeah, I think he's he's good on the offense, but he he falters on defense, and that's what you got to press. I think there are a lot of people who really want to uh, be able to do it, kind of like JF. Does. He's the JF is the only one who I've seen who pulls the slow and steady wins the fucking race thing as far as blood sports go. He's he's the only one who pulls the Floyd Mayweather shit. Everybody else just goes in there like Tyson or Vanderlei Silva and just starts fucking trying to lop off heads. He's the only one who's been able to pull off the let's go slow and steady kind of shit and actually pull it off. Yeah, Blint has, exactly. uh, he's fucking, like you guys were saying, he's fucking good. But I still think he's got a lot more of that just try to knock their fucking head off about him than he does. I should just- ask uh, JF for some advice on where to find autistic girls. Eesh. Well, you've the got a whole internet to choose chat. from. The <laughs> answer is the drunk <laughs> peasants chat. There's the answer. <laughs> Hey, random question. Uh, have you guys tried to reach out at all, or has anybody tried to reach out to the dudes from Chapo Trap House? Because I would love to see those guys go into blood oh, sports yeah. against some people. That'd be funny as fuck. I, don't even I think they're guys. pretty much sequestered in their $70,000 a month house uh, from fucking Patreon not doing shit. You know, I don't think they're going to go on a blood sports stream ever. Well, they talk about it a lot. They've done they've done like four different reviews of blood, blood sports streams. Well, that's like I don't know. High, I think I'm real can't shut the fuck up about it, but he's not going to yeah, show up. That's what everyone's doing. They just want to talk about it and get their two cents in on it, but they're not going to come in. It's like they're like, I'm on Twitter doing blood sports on Twitter, where if somebody beats you, you can just flag them. Okay. Flag and blocked. Uh, They didn't really win. Can't you see that the Twitter suspended? Obviously, I win. God, I hate these people. 
So, uh, Tonka, is the schedule set for Saturday? Are any more matches coming up, or are the three what we're dealing with? There, there's one that's up in the air. Failure in Enoch. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, ap- apparently, that that's that could be the fourth. What's the uh, beef between those two? I'm not sure, but apparently, they like Enoch called him a smelly brown piece of shit, and so he's <laughs> like, he's a dumb fuck who never shuts the fuck up. So. <laughs> I thought failure started that. There's a, there's a nice little clip on Kronos of him saying, "Yeah, I don't really know the guy, but I'll fucking take him on." No, they had, all right. Here's the thing: that's not necessarily true because he'd already talked to failure, or he had already talked to Enoch before that. He had uh, talked to him over on Andy's stream. And he was telling him to shut up because he wouldn't shut up. I think that I guess that's what bothered failure is that he wouldn't shut up, and that that's what got it started. Huh? Yeah, because I know he said he disagreed with him, but like failure said nice things about people who really disagree with him. So I didn't think yeah. it was like a political thing. I. Th- I'm not sure. Well, I'm not it sure doesn't what it need is. to be political. Fuck. I just want to hear people yell at each other. Shit. Set it up, talking. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no, I said. I said it's on. If, if if it's Enoch and he really wants to do it, it's on as fuck. Yeah, because like I said, I think Enoch does well when he's just on offense. I've never heard failure really go at it. So you uh, you got to give me some uh, like indication. Like how how does he do when he's into banter? Uh, he tries. He tries to go slow and steady unless he really doesn't like the person. I heard him go at Zeph one time when he didn't fucking like him. Zeph couldn't get a word in. It, it fucking failure was the fucking juggernaut. He just once he started going, he couldn't stay. He just kept going and going and going. I don't know if he'll be able to do that against Enoch. I mean, Enoch could be a fun thing to watch. Yeah, I think it would be. That's what I go by uh, whenever I want to book something. It's like, well, will it be fun to watch? Okay. And you know, two fucking Twitter eggs show up, and it's like, this person blocked me. Will you put us on the Kumite? Like, nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm really looking forward to uh, the one on Monday if fucking hardcore doesn't back out. Because I, like, you know, when he's on here, I don't want to be like super, like, you come into my, you come to my stream, I don't want to like bully side you for putting yourself out there. I got to give you a little prop for stepping into that. But if I can just fucking go, yeah, I think it'll be really fun. I don't know. So, I still don't understand his political position. He doesn't have one. Like an ally. Yeah, he doesn't either. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, Tonka, because you want you want to get you both have gone against him then, right? Jakeem and Tonka, you both have fucking dealt with hardcore, yeah? yeah oh he's, god. He's that guy. That was amazing. That was the worst fucking day of work ever. First day on a new job, no fucking sleep because I've been arguing with that asshole all night, but it was fun. It was fun. He really wants he really wants to be acknowledged. Uh he's that kind of guy. Like he wants to matter. He wants what he says to matter. He wants people to see what he does and be like, oh, that's awesome. Let me let well, me how, share how what you did you there. Your political position is true neutrality. Is it true neutrality or is it that fake fucking neutrality where you're actually trying to push your shit but it's, pretending you know, yeah, it's not even true body. neutrality? That's like giving it too much credit. Yeah, it's it's passive aggressive neutrality. <laughs> it's <what the> fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, but at a certain point, like it's so funny to engage with him because you know he will he will absolutely stick to his guns, except oh, when, he's serious know. about his passive aggressiveness. Yeah, he's serious <laughs> as fuck. He's serious about his non stance. It's honestly befuddling. And I'll tell you what, he's going to listen to this. He's going to be fucking blowing up my Twitter tonight or tomorrow morning. Oh, I can't believe you were talking about it. You know, whatever. You guys were talking me, but that's fun. That's, that's good. good. That's good. It builds up the fucking hate. I mean, that's the nice thing, too, is, you know, fake blood sports leads to real blood sports leads to real blood eventually. You fucking buried me in the leads dirt sheets. <laughs> oh, fuck. And now, uh, Tonka, on Saturday, you set up uh, Worski and, uh, what is it, Sofane? Sofane? Wasn't Sofane the one that was like, oh, I'm going to troll Worski and I have this super elaborate plan? So is he going to unveil it on Saturday? Maybe, 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 maybe. I, I don't know if he's uh, so things. Uh, his comments, he's gone back and forth between being pissed at Andy and maybe seem like he's gonna play off of Andy. I, I don't know if Andy's gonna if he's gonna be able to, you know, kind of goad him in to getting getting aggressive and shit with him or not. But it feels like he's gonna walk into the ring, try to pull a Santino on him. Yeah, I can believe that. <laughs> this is gonna be fun to watch. <laughs> this is a, this is a, a big variety. Of ways things could is go. Is Andy going to let the bullets fly now that he's lost everything? Andy's not a happy camper. So is he I punished I, Andy. Is he a, a little bit? He's, right, he's going to show. Up, he's going to show up with a fucking eye patch. Well, I just feel bad for Sinead because you know she's rocking Irish sunglasses right now. Ugh. <laughs> what? I can't make I, a joke I, about that. Come on. No, I, I was going to say. <laughs> I, I bet that fucking. I bet that. Uh, I, I feel a little bit worse for Andy. Because I'm sure that today's giving him all kinds of shit. You know, I, I wish you wouldn't have done that. I wish you wouldn't have done did that. 
Yeah, she likes the band. I've some heard on the ground in the IKEA parking lot. <laughs> Sinead is a lot more fun than, than most expected. <laughs> right? Get that. Yeah. <laughs> I love Sinead. That was hilarious. That was one of my favorite episodes of any of this shit is just when she comes on and it's like, wait, this is actually going to happen. And the whole chat's like, dude, this is such a bad idea. What the fuck is <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I, was like, I don't know if you should let you lady for it. I oh. fucking loved how uncomfortable it got once it started going. It was so, it was just the perfect kind of like, oh, you could feel it in the air. Like, this is horrible. This is a bad idea. <laughs> Yeah. Fucking and then we a message. It was like, is this real? Is this real? Is this a pet talk? It's fucking real. I, I think it's real, Billy. I think it's real. <laughs> it's always a dumb mistake when you bring personal life onto any, any oh, internet thing. Never bring your fucking girlfriend on. What are you doing? I, I can count. I can count the times on my fucking hand when that. The, when the fucking my team speak friends would get on and talk about their personal life, and then they would just like get fucking reamed for like a year and then like never come back see that's why you're smart because by not having a personal life nobody can attack you on i know her. the the eyes and ease is fucking woke dude Lived in i mean i wish we could all be the 30 year old virgin you know what about him telling that fucking like story where he was eating the eating the girl's ass with the giant fucking long hair while she's in the chat <laughs> he yanked it what the fuck <laughs> no wait that was v yanked the ass hair oh okay oh, fuck. oh God. jesus or when uh oh after, you're right yeah, yeah, V yanked it. No, no, so, so, cause when Andy, like, they were like, oh, we're gonna go to Ikea, and then they don't go, but Sinead's in the fucking chat. Somebody gave her a wrench, and she's like, I'm blocked outside, Andy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. See, okay. That, all right. That's what I kind of like to do on uh, the crew. Cool like, yeah, I like to, like having people go at each other and shit, but like when funny shit like that happens, yeah, I, I prefer, that's the kind of shit you wanna kick your morning off with. You know, Andy's the one who's trying to, you know, have North and South go at each other again every fucking night at some, you know, 7 a.m., <laughs> 7 p.m. <laughs> yeah, no, I like the morning zoo shit. I, I like having a fucking laugh. I, that's It was so, yeah, that, that was pretty fucking good, to be honest. That's, Taka, that's the kind of shit I want to do. Taka, what's your, been your favorite uh, stream so far? Maybe that one. Yeah. Fucking maybe that one. Or maybe the 12 hour with fucking Destiny. Like, uh, Jim came yeah. through like three times on that fucking show. Uh, that's when Brittany Vinny showed up and made it possible we, we could do the fucking cooking show. Just too many good things came out of Destiny sitting there getting blown the fuck out. 1v10, Destiny never hey, lost. what are you talking about? Destiny's never lost a blood sport. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's why he's spurging out in his fucking Reddit list. Like, Just flag them all, guys! Just fucking flag them all. I like Did how I when he, he uses, he calls it a conversation on his YouTube channel. I, ca I call it a fucking conversation when he walked in. He's the one who wanted to turn it into blood sports. I didn't want anything to do with him. You can go back to that stream. He thought do he you want to talk to Destiny? Way. He oh, thought no. he could sophistry his way through everybody. Just, and just knowing, just knowing that there's someone out there like Destiny makes me sad. Same. Yeah. He, I don't know. He didn't. He's used to people who give a shit. There's a lot of people who are like, "Oh, I'm gonna take down Destiny." I didn't want to talk to him. I don't <laughs> give a shit about Destiny. It's fucking. Who gives a? You're three feet tall. Fuck out of here. <laughs> you can't even reach a keyboard without a booster seat. Get out of here. What are you doing? Just morning, tiny. I just when he, he doxed you and you were just ranting about it that morning was the funniest shit I ever fucking heard. And you were just you were just fucking going after him. What was, what, what, what was the aim of the docs? Exactly. Show I'm a wrestler. I said that. I'm built like Nate Diaz. I said that. I said all that shit. He's like, well, you said you were six foot one in one of your wrestling. Do you think wrestling's real? <laughs> do, you think, do you think Hulk Hogan is fucking six foot seven? Definitely. You think that's real? You think Andre the Giant was seven foot nine? And the big show, seven foot nine, and all this. Do you believe that? Do you remember when he was trying? Wait, wait, wait yes, I do. What are you trying to tell me, Tonka? I can't tell you anything. Everything's real, honey. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Go back to bed. <laughs> Go back to bed. <laughs> I'm feeling really sleepy now. <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, but seriously, like, think about think about his whole because he got like three thousand people on his fucking subreddit. Imagine what those people look like in real life. Like the person who's fucking high point of their day is going on the Destiny subreddit and talking with them. Oh, well, no, we saw one. Fucking Pascal. Oh! Fucking Caterpillar eyebrows. He's the oldest one there. He's like the Chris Chan in the fucking, you know, the Pokemon tournament. You know, you got fucking all the kids are running around the Destiny thing, and then here comes Pascal with his gotta catch them all hat. 
<laughs> like catch them all. How do you do, fellow dust heads? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> He's that guy was a very very sad case. Pa- Pascal made me kind of sad. Like it was bad enough when I thought he looked like that profile picture he had. When Tobe McKinley made that fucking video of him, what he looks like now, he looks like the most homeless man that ever homeless. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's so sad looking, and he's cockeyed. I didn't know he was cockeyed. Like, we've got like a million things going on over here. You know what we should all- do. We should set up a Destiny fan like meetup, like Destcon, and we just give out his fucking home address to all these people because it's out there. And you just have all of his fans show up at his front door. Organize the shit out of that. The best was when in Naked Apes video about them all posting their dick pics in solidarity with them. Wait, what? <laughs> that, I've, that, I've, that was I've real. Never, Naked I've, never, I've that, never laughed so hard. Dude, that motherfucker. All right. When he said that, I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Dude. I don't know if I believe that. Naked Ape went out of his way to send me evidence that piece of shit. I didn't ask for that. I just said I didn't buy it because I didn't want to think people were that fucking lame. Well, now, Tonka, I don't know if you could really say Naked Ape went out of his way to get you dick pics. That might be something he just had to buy. He's like, I, I filed this under three, you know, three days ago. It's no worries. <laughs> no, he, has them, he has them organized by length. Uh, oh, he was doing his knockout study, you say? Yeah, he was taking statistics. <laughs> so, so this is where the, the toddler's arm without the hand comes from thing? Oh, God. Yeah, that it, it's a hell of a mental image, but it really is what it looks like. Uh, God damn, that's just... Fuck the internet sometimes. I, I can't take... No, I, I, I seriously don't know how you don't like, have a mental breakdown sometimes with all the shit you expose yourself to. You're weak, Joe, Kim. You're, you're from Art of Donald. You just, you're just not in the, in the fucking black hole of weird <laughs> fucking shit. I, I look at any of this shit that you guys know. I'm like, how do any of you do this? I am not internet people. And I gaze upon <laughs> you internet people like, how the fuck? We were raised by it, molded by it. By the time I had seen <laughs> the light of the world, I was a weep. You uh, still haven't seen outside your mom's basement. Let's be real here. You're fucking 30, a virgin, and you still have not been outside the basement. Yeah. I just got, like, my portal <laughs> into fucking internet people was always gym videos. And then when all this shit starts happening, with, you know, my channel goes from having 30 people watching it to now there's like 200, and Jim's making videos about everything. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God, it's getting too close. I'm going to be in one of those videos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be one of those people. I'm going to be internet people. I was mortified for like, Fucking an hour one day. I mean, like, here's I'm, the thing. I'm Gen, be Z, people. Gen Z is like 60% internet people, and that's eventually going to be the ruling adults of the country at some point. I Think mean, memes will become that, that cultural is a society. Fucking thought. That is a horrifying fucking thought. This is You're why really I scared me. <laughs> so fucking awful. Like, people are like, oh, you can't just say democracy. So, no, people shouldn't vote because look at the internet. That's who fucking votes. Yeah. I'm not afraid of getting shot. I'm afraid of Jim's videos, <laughs> people on the internet, and the shit that they think. That's what scares me. Yeah, Here's but that's a, a shit that that's a shit that fascinates me. I, I can't wait until fascinates up shit. I can't right. wait till Spider-Man Elsa videos are like considered a classical childhood experience. <laughs> oh, I can't fucking wait. <laughs> well, it it fascinates me world. too. It's like it's like the like a Cloverfield kind of thing. Like yeah, there, lots of lots of mystery, and I'm fascinated by it. But I prefer for it to be about nine million miles over there. I would gaze upon it from a distance. And now that well, I'm I, doing YouTube, I was like, oh god, one of the people around me is probably running around in a fucking diaper, and I don't know about it. And I'm yeah, gonna be in a t- talk of the video. stuff I put up on YouTube is so sanitized from the shit that I would like to talk about, like the oh. real groups that are out there and the individuals imagine. that are out there. What, what would you really like to talk about? Jim? Oh, there, there are fucking stories, man, that I would love to go into, but I could never put it into video form because it would be taken down immediately. Yeah, I want to make the video. Give us, give 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 us one. Give us the one that you wish you could make. A half of one. Okay, I'd like to talk about the story of Wolfie. You ever heard of Wolfie before? Uh, it sounds vaguely familiar. No, but I haven't heard of it, but that's way Wolfie, too nice of a little name there. Okay, well, Wolfie was an overweight autistic dude that had a YouTube channel. And one day, this guy got in contact with him and it said, Hey, Wolfie, there's a super hacker out to get you. We should talk on Skype. So Wolfie goes on Skype with him. And the guy says, I can protect you, Wolfie. You know, this is after they talked for a few weeks. I can protect you. Um, I have a, a special program that will come up with passwords that are better than the ones you use. You should give them to me. So Wolfie does. 
<laughs> the guy then takes over every account Wolfie has. He then messages him as both the hacker and as the friend, right? Saying, oh my God, the hacker hacked me and got your passwords. And he's saying that he'll give them back to you if you go on to a video stream and get naked. So Wolfie oh goes up to a porn. Uh, oh, this we're not even getting close to this. Being Wait, good. I thought we were Wolf done talking about Kurt, Kurt Eichenwald. Uh, no, this is this is going <laughs> to. So Wolfie goes on to this this private stream, right? And he gets naked, and then the guy that had set this all up says, "Hey, Wolfie, um, I'll give you back your passwords, but this isn't good enough. Uh, I want you to grab that coat hanger behind you." No. So Wolfie gets the coat hanger, and he's like, "I want you to fuck your ass with the coat hanger." Oh God. So there's a video, and I'm sure it's still out there somewhere. I don't know the name that it would be under, but of this fat autistic dude crying and fucking himself with a coat hanger. <laughs> now, after he got the video, he uploaded it onto like 30 or 40 gay porn sites and said, hey, I'm a fat dude that likes chubby chasers, and I want you to fuck my ass with coat hangers. Um, now, he never, gave, he, never, he never gave Wolfie back his passwords. What he did instead was he messaged every family member that he had and said, sent them a video link to him fucking himself with a coat hanger and said, are you proud of me now? <laughs> yeah, that's like out of that fucking Black Mirror episode. Jesus. And that's just like that's that's like a one off thing. Like the the dude that set all that up just did it to do it. Like and there's stories like that, man. There's evidence of certain, like that happening, and I I'd love to do videos on it, but I would never be able. Fucking to. mean though. How do, how do you do it? Oh well, my gosh. The worst one that I think I don't know. Uh, it, it would for me it comes down to two videos that you put out that I was, that they were probably the worst ones. It just in my opinion, crazy Canadian hummus mom. Let's eat fungus cakes lady and pedo poop those two videos uh, those are the two that were like there may have actually been some genuine bad 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 shit happening oh the canadian insanity one yeah definitely because the videos they got pulled down because of fucking white knight little faggots um oh we're gonna we're gonna save them so they pulled down the videos i can't i can't find them right when i'm doing the video but uh she made her son who was like 11 at the time, film her in the bathtub like daily, and then she'd upload it to fucking YouTube. It's what just really fuck? fucking weird shit. Like she had a video where she went to her dying mother's hospital bed and screamed at her for 20 minutes as a woman's like gasping for breath and dying. Uh, it's fuck? just it, like a twisted fucking woman. Um, you could tell that she wanted to fuck her I, kid. I suppose if you want to make an argument for uh, Christianity in society, and uh, I suppose the internet is a good, pretty good argument, huh? Uh, yeah, her name was Mama K, but um, yeah, she was really she, she was uh, 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 yeah, Mama K, yeah. Okay, then I I'm I'm being even more insulting than I thought I was to Christy Winters. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm calling her Mama K for a month now. Oh yeah, no, no, it was Mama <laughs> K uh, and Prince. Uh, what was his name? Prince Kalen. There we go, Mama K and yeah. Prince Kalen. That's what she called him, my little prince. Oh, you okay. she, you she had would videos. Him, yeah, she would force him to eat like um, grass and shit. Yeah. She'd like make him eat grass and then film her Jesus in the bathroom. Christ. And then you she'd would put up you yeah. put up videos of him from the time when he had first started making videos when he was a really little kid to like the last video he had put up before you had put that video out where he's a fucking <laughs> yeah, the one, killer. The, the black and white one where he's sniffing the camera saying, Does mommy want to touch you? Like it was really weird shit. This is yeah. just like no, one of my Tony Japanese McKinley. hentais. Tony McKinley in the chat, Prince of Queen now. There was, uh, yeah, that was a, that was some oh, dark shit. Uh, his dad took him away, I think, eventually. Okay. From that I, 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 I was going to ask on. if you knew what, uh, whatever happened to anything. I, I don't know story. where he is now. I don't know what he does now, but I'm fairly certain uh, dad took him away. She I got really angry, angry at me. She was like, "This guy's a neo. -Nazi. This is from a long time ago. This is, a this is when I ran a forum." She was like, "This guy's a neo Nazi, and they're hunting me down." Uh, she was not a fan. Were you backtraced? I was never backtraced. No. <laughs> You, you, you skirted by on it. I, mean, I just remember watching that. That was the video that probably turned me on to start watching your videos. But the funny thing is, I didn't know that Internet Aristocrat was Mr. Medicare, was uh, the guy who had made you know the creepy smiley face old Avatar videos. I, I didn't know that those three were the same people. And I, I've yes, been shown. There, there, there you go. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've had hundreds of fucking accounts. There's, there's shit out there people haven't seen still. So, well, I would be well. The way that I figured it out is I was uh, watching a Medicare video, and I'm like, yeah, he reminds me a little bit of that old guy, uh, the Internet Aristocrat. I wonder whatever happened to him. And people just start laughing at me uncontrollably. So, 
Like, oh, okay. Your chat's insulting me. Jim modded a subreddit? Get the fuck out of here. I ran a website. Jesus Christ. No, I didn't mod a <laughs> And it existed for, I'd say, the span of three weeks. And it was merely an attempt to fill the gap left after Haberman destroyed Medicare. And it just was nice, a disaster. Oh, God. It was horrible. Why did... I don't know if you can if you even know what, but why did Medicare have to be destroyed? Oh, so Haberman saw the light. Um, he he okay. came to the realization that he was a special snowflake and apparently was gay. And he thought that because he was gay, I would give a shit. I didn't fucking care what he does. Uh, but he was like, I need to purge the internet of all the fucking shit I've ever done that was bad. Because uh, he had a couple suicides under his belt, and he wanted to kind of get that get rid of that. Um, Wait, what do you mean by he had a couple suicides under his belt? drove people to kill themselves yeah. so yeah. he he um you know uh, decided to purge the internet of things uh i guess as a way to alleviate his guilt i don't fucking know he addressed this on his tumblr and people were like hey this guy killed himself and you went after him and he's like oh i'm very sorry i did that um he's only he's one of the only people too that successfully did it there are no archives he took it down from the Wayback machine from archive.is from all the sites that catalog shit, well, Sarah oh, Butts. That shit is kind of scary huh he found the way. There's a trick to doing it, and he figured it out, be, and he got rid of it. Like, can you imagine politics in, like, 2040, where people will have, like, their fucking deviant arts brought up in the middle of the campaign? Well, I mean, whenever V runs for office as a liberalist, I mean, how is he going to explain the VOR issue to the voters of Romania? When he becomes Romanian prime minister, are people going to bring up his, his favorite VOR pictures? <laughs> well, to me, maybe this is just me. VOR is just, like, weird you eat people shit. Like you, you, you want to be eaten, right? What you yeah, want to masturbate in someone's belly? Yeah, uh, Vor is the fantasy of you being be inside someone's in somebody's stomach. mouth, digested. I'll be uh, that. Don't get me wrong; it's fucking cringy. <laughs> but there's there's worse out there. Like it seems like a cringy internet fetish thingy that's weird as fuck. But at the same time, it's like, well, essentially harmless. Weird, but harmless. Is it harmless? I don't is know. It like, is, it is, like, the the Tonka. is it not the gateway to some guy like chopping up like uh, a girl and eating her? Is it her? the gateway to cannibalism? Is that what <laughs> yes, it is? That's what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Then all right. Thank you. Somebody explained it to me. All right. Gateway drug to cannibalism. Gotcha. All right. No. All right. That makes sense. I hear you. That's gonna be a meme now. Be the fucking cannibal. Be the cannibal. I love it when people say he sounds like Dr. Nick, because once I heard that, I can't unhear it now. I want somebody oh. to edit that Pepsi web him and have it like have little anime girls being like drained into his mouth. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Okay, so which what's worse of the three? Fucking uh, furry, vor, or chopping your dick and turning it inside out? I'm gonna what have to what go was three. the last one? Wait, well, you don't, don't, gonna, three. gonna have to go three. Oh, okay, got you. I was like, wait, that's a thing too. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you missed our fun little conversation. We were talking, talking about, about the, the surgery, process. the video. If you haven't watched that, Tom, that's an enlightening experience. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> It'll really uh, stretch your horizons. <laughs> it's like narrated by like a French guy too. It's pretty classy. Everybody Got always talks about. Everybody always talks about normies. I I am a normie. With, I'm like a uh, I'm a not normie sympathizer, essentially. Like uh, you know, I, I I I I am probably more on you guys' side with everything. I just have no idea what the fuck you're talking about most of the time. So until... you'd be routed up into the camps with us. And that's good to know. Uh, when the yeah. hammer comes down, yeah. Dude, they, they they're saying that I'm like leading an alt right movement on fucking YouTube. I'm an engine. They don't you're even... Hitler. <laughs> <You're> Hitler. <laughs> Uh, Hitler engine. Tonka is literally Hitler. Confirmed. Is I, I get roped into a lot of internet shit, and I don't know what all the internet people are doing. That's another reason why I'm always quick to say, I'm not the, friends with any fucking body. The internet people don't know what the internet people are doing. Don't worry Fair about play. it. Yeah, like, I mean, I thought Jeff was, like, joking the whole time when we started this up. Like, oh, I'm a... You know, oh, you think I, this was a lark? I, no, I, I thought you were being completely facetious until last night, and you were going on about how you're fucking full-on wizard status, and you don't even have a driver's license at age 30, I mean, and you don't work. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? And you're what? just going to be jealous. Oh, are you I, living I, Destiny's... I unlock wizard powers. He's yeah. living Destiny's dream life, but without the money. Wait, how do, how do you get around that? Do you take Ubers? What the I, what do no, you do? I live in a rural a rural basement. A rural basement. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's my anime doll. 
Like a fucking farmhouse in the middle of nowhere? What are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, basically. So you had just have Amazon ship you anime and fucking soda? Is that it? Basically. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. I couldn't yeah. exist like that. Like, <laughs> all right, so you, you would no, be he's trying... internet people. He's 30 and he's never even I'm not been 30. laid. Tonkin, he's trying to save the white race by killing the government by just being a welfare whore. Wait, yeah. are you are are you Jeff? Are you a robot? Am you I? Robot? Robot? No, Do I never you... post an R nine K because it's fucking shit. What about Wizard Chan? Wizard Chan, no. What the fuck is a Wizard Chan? <laughs> so, and I'll just try to explain it if I'm wrong, and I'll correct me because you guys know better. But uh, isn't it if a man gets to thirty and he hasn't been laid, he gets magic that, powers? That is the meme, yeah. Yes. And I will yeah. achieve magical powers, and some of the suck you by using a blood ritual. And you guys will all be fucking oh, yeah, really. By the way, you don't you actually do you do make blood sacrifices to we to a bowl of chan occasionally, yeah. But what? I mean, <laughs> that's just my religion. I thought bullet. he was joking, and now it's like too far, and I can't step away from this. You've gone too far. <laughs> I thought Wait, he was right. trolling you last night, genuinely. <laughs> what what is the blood sacrifice, and what is a wizard right. chan? No, well, wizard chan is just a website for like the. So there's people who post on 4chan, there's people who lurk on 4chan, and then there's people who are too shy to post on 4chan, so they go to Wizard Chan. And they're all there, basically, and, like, struggling not to kill themselves out of social anxiety. Oh, you're, 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 you're softballing this. Okay, Tonka, you need to understand that there's, uh, the, what he's saying is true, but uh, there's some fucking real harsh bitterness against normal society on the part of robots and uh, wizards robots on the internet. Reddit people, right? No, R9K. They just call them robots. People browse R9K on 4 oh, Okay. Uh, but yeah, they. Uh... <laughs> Elliot Roger <laughs> was a robot. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah, Toad well, is cause... asking, uh, who's your Tulpa? I don't have a fucking Tulpa. That shit's so cringy. The fuck? Said the guy doing blood rituals. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> uses to have sex. What are you doing? Ebola Chan isn't a Tulpa. She's a, she's a legitimate religion. At least have according ever, to 8chan. That's like the uh, really uh, tech, but, you know, weirder. Have you ever been to a beach? Yeah. <laughs> Tonka's learning all sorts of shit he never wanted to. <laughs> I, just, I don't know how it, like a dude can go to a beach. You see all them ass and titties going around. It's like, you know what? I don't want to have sex. I don't want to have sex with anything. It's a state of mind. I, I believe that. Yeah. It's a state of mind. But, like... Do you think, like, there's a group of people who think they're going to get powers? No, I, they... I, I'm fucking being facetious. I don't think okay, they're going to get wizard powers. <laughs> I don't know how far it's the fucking internet. I don't know. I've been into wizard. I, I will wizard say, I, I'm sure that there are people that actually do believe that. <laughs> so I've talked to weather wizards at this yeah, point. Yeah, I don't know true. where it's going to go. Yeah. <laughs> he has dealt with a real life weather, or weather wizard. So, I mean, you got to give him some slack on that one. I'm not ready for the internet. I didn't need this. I, didn't, I was never supposed to, to blow be, you're up. You're in the deep end right now. Don't worry about it. Oh, it got deep Most as people... fuck real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, since, since, since we're over here, I let everybody in on the secret. Yeah, Andy gets a lot of the flack for blowing the channel up. I, I do that on the show. But I do genuinely blame Billy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how am I getting blamed? Well, it's one. the Worski bump is one thing. but But when you started saying things that weren't totally negative about going to go and look at the show that's when people are like oh well i'm gonna go over here uh, i'll B billy may be here people show up every day like is jim here is jim here is jim over here is it... he doesn't that's work here he's... jim's that's not here today. watching worski jim... yeah i just i, I that's like not watching, totally wrong I, I like watching the show man i want to be entertained no. oh no don't say that anymore <laughs> well no keep saying that now because i want to get to a hundred thousand and they're gonna kick me <laughs> off yeah, you got a fucking goal yeah i got you yeah. but no i I, 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 to be honest, I hate going on streams. I just like listening to them. To be honest, I that was that was how I was. I didn't want to be on streams at all. I like listening to them. I, I, I like sitting in the audience and listening to streams. But, yeah, having shit on in the background. You're doing something. Yeah. Like yeah. I go play a video game. You, know, I, I'm, I'm bullshitting. I'm listening to a stream. I go cook some food. I'm still listening to the stream. Just having a nice bit of entertainment. And I got roped into doing streams by failure. And then, and then you had the dungo did the thing you did where you blew up the thing. Yeah, but you adjusted to it pretty well. I mean, you know, you seem to be handling it fine. Publicly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would like sit in the shower and cry for a while, you know. 
That'll be all right. I mean, you spend more time on like streams than most people do at a full time job, and I don't even know how much time you have to spend off cam, like you know, doing your back end and making sure everything's working and do all the fucking drama. It ended up making it making things easier. Uh, d- doing the streams and you know, sack it up and just being okay with it made life a lot easier. Uh, like now I can, like I can pay my mom to you know do all this shit with my grand. Like I don't have to take my grandmother to go get manicures and shit. I can't do that shit. That's not for me. It's it fucking like I, I can. Everything's taken care of in like the car lot. My mom goes and she's just doing the car lot shit now. So it's just me. Like oh oh shit, Taka. I, I wanted to ask you how much shit has failure gotten for the uh, Sargon crazy hair thing? Truth or a lie? <laughs> <laughs> he's still getting yelled at uh is like really? two hours ago for what like people are still bitching about it people ask a lot about like what is it that people want to know about that because i like, did sargon get cucked that's what everyone wants to know did sargon get cucked sargon get cucked how you you had there are so many definitions for cucked what do you mean by cucked please well, that's that's some that's random dude's floppy seconds you seem to be in the know though man i mean when when oh, phil you brought that happened. up when failure brought that up, you're like, oh, okay, this play, this this kind of follows through with uh, other things that have been talked about, which I'm guessing is the tranny booth shit. Yeah, it's, it, but, uh, all when, right. when he dropped that, uh, I noticed people got real angry. Certain people got real fucking angry. Oh, oh the, uh, the idea that Sargon might have been fucking with crazy. Well, that's, that's because there were other people who may or may not have been caught in some precarious situations with crazy. And it's... And, to their credit, this is to everyone's credit there. Everyone was trying to get her to piss off. Like, I know you guys have heard the stories about, like, Liz Reptile doing the shit she did at VidCon. People are putting cigarettes out in her drink. People are locking her outside of a party. Like, she's standing out in the fucking yard like a fucking scarecrow. People are peeping out the window like, that's horrifying. Hmm. Uh, like, that. that's how Liz was when they all went back to party and they're all just peeping out the window. She's just standing under a street light outside. It's fucking creepy. And crazy was right behind her with that like she kept asking for everybody's room key so she could get into their rooms and shit and she kept asking everyone's real name she just rubbed everybody fucking weird and she wouldn't piss off when wait wait now let's be real off. specific how when you're saying she rubbed people really weird <laughs> you re- all right I'll, g- I'll give you a good example uh, where she was rubbing someone weird now i know me and matt aren't the you know best of buddies or anything like that but you can go back and look at a video and i think it's a video she posted up where Monday Matt's trying to talk about what happened in the Anita Sarkeesian thing. And Crazy Hair runs up behind him, and she is all up on some Matt. Like, she's rubbing all over his shoulder and his way. And, like, Matt keeps shifting away and, like, looking at her and, like, shifting. That's how she was with everybody. She's always, like, rubbing on you and grabbing people and laughing. And everybody's just wanting her to, you know, fuck off. Who are you? And that was her thing. She got everybody to give her a bunch of money because she was going to get shirts made. And a lot of people just gave her money. Okay, here's some money. Piss off. But by the end of it, she got it from a couple hundred people. She's getting a lot of money here. How how non confrontational are people with this VidCon shit? Like that's why what I kept say, saying. Why did nobody say go away? That's to what her, I, just that outright. My no, I'm not. I, this is first thing I brought up. I swear to you, because failure and everybody was trying to get me to go to VidCon through all this shit. I'm like, come on to VidCon. This is before I was even doing any fucking thing. It's a bunch of. Like you had Bunty and Andy and people who were going to have people who were coming there to see him and shit. Yeah. But then you had this huge group of people who were like, let me fucking start GoFundMes to get tickets, you know, for myself to go to VidCon and pretend that people want to see me there. Because the truth is nobody wanted to see them there. Nobody cared. Nobody, nobody cared if Liz Reptile was at VidCon. I mean, failure, he got it that nobody really wanted to, Vid- but everybody kept talking him into going, and people ended up paying for him to go, so he went. They kept trying to pay me to go. And no, like, I've got the money to go if I want to go. I do not want to go. <laughs> I, I am super yeah, good. I'd be like a bunch of little kids and, like, random e-celebs that are very and, weird people. And, and that's people. what I told them, is, like, I don't want to talk to kids and fucking, this is not my spot. And... That was like, the problem. With all everyone. the little kids are just watching streams, kind of like this one. I wonder what the lowest age in our in our stream right now is. You don't want to do know, wonder. probably. I probably we probably don't want to know. But, but uh, like the like crazy who watching... was in that group that I'm talking about though. Crazy who was wait, in that. Wait, group. wait, Taka. Do you, didn't Worski do a stream where he took viewer calls and somebody who called in was had like this really uh, soft voice? He's like, "How old are you?" And they're like, "Twelve." <laughs> I'm twelve, and what is this? I remember that. <laughs> right? I'm 12 and I want the ethno state and Adam. 
I Generation Zyklon <laughs> indeed, I guess. I've listened to that clip like three or four thousand. It's a great clip. <laughs> There we go. Someone's saying I'm 14, and the next person says I'm 18. Jesus Christ. If you're That's... fucking under 21, you probably should... Uh... I don't know. What the fuck do they do that anymore? I don't even know what kids do anymore. Go they, fucking they, play with your Nintendo watch Switch. YouTube videos for like 20 hours. That's what they do. Hold on. I got long-winded. Let me... Fi- let me I'll, I will complete yeah, yeah. the burial. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll just skip to the end well, part. If you end up, okay. ended up having questions, I'll skip to the end part. The reason that Crazy Hair is doing what she's doing now the reason that she's like, hey, I need to get on the thing. And Andy's afraid to talk to me. Nobody wants to talk to me. They're all afraid of what I'm saying. It's because of the way that things have blown up now. She didn't want to talk about anything for like a fucking year. And the reason she didn't want to talk about anything for a year is because everybody knew how everything played out. Before she went to fucking VidCon, she had a fiance. Plus, she was also dating this fucking guy who a lot of us know. Good dude. This dude was helping her go to the thing. You know, He was helping her get to VidCon. And he was going to be who she was staying with when she got there. And she was wait, he wait, actually talking, cared. It sound like a Mexican standoff. So basically, everybody knows what happened, but they're afraid the first person that says it publicly is going to cause a shit storm. Oh, no, 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 comes no, out. It's, no, that's not, no, it's not that. Crazy hair is go is playing off that, that there was a big thing that happened with them. At worst, maybe there was something with uh, the six up in the elite room. You know, where they're all like not wanting anything to do with every, anybody. Yeah, maybe that happened. Wait, wait, don't do know. Mean, wait, hey, hey, when them. you're saying that, I just, I just want for clarification. When you say something might have happened with six guys up in the room, you mean like? All right, that, no, that was uh, armored shoe, Lacey, Chris, Blair, and her boyfriend. Nobody knows really what went on up there. But when Crazy went went up there, that isn't what was happening. And the reason Crazy's portraying it the way that she is is because she pretended that she was invited to go up there. Pretended that she had like drinks and shit. She got like a she had, what was it? Like salt shakers and bobbleheads. All right, and she goes up there and pretends, oh, uh, I, I brought you some gifts and stuff, guys. And uh, I think it was Blair's boyfriend opens the door. I was like, okay. Uh, and she just walks in and she she brought in like two bobbleheads and four shots. Didn't even have six shots, had four shots. And uh, she sat around for a while and they're like, so who are you? And never answered. And then they were like, how did you get up here? And she just kept saying, oh, my boobs. Boobs will get you anywhere. Boobs will get you anywhere. And eventually they're finally like, okay, uh, none of us know you. So, so why don't you just go away? And as soon as they started doing that is when she was like, well, I, I was just bringing you gifts. How come you guys are acting like this? What's going on? Why are you guys acting like this? And that's why she had had that recording when they're trying to get her out the fucking door because they had chased her around with a perfume bottle. Now, now Tonka, the chat's calling you out. They're saying you're hiding things. Tell on me what I'm hiding. On that stream, after Sargon's name got mentioned, Andy's like, no, 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 Let, talk to me in the side chat. And then you're like, oh, oh my God, was it was that. was talk, told in the side it, chat? It, 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 it was that, dude. This. All right, I'll tell you, but here's the thing. The guy that we were mentioning over in the side chat was the guy who had got played over, the guy who had been made a fool of by Crazy here before anything had even started. He was the one who was thinking he was her boyfriend when she had a fiance and was planning to go to fucking VidCon and hop the fucking carousel. That's, yeah, that's who they want to know inside. who the boyfriend was. Oh, I can't. I can't say it. It's oh, nobody so who anybody knows. Things. Listen to this. Well, shit. no, no. no. Here's, <laughs> all right, hold on. Here's what. Hold Come on. on. If you're gonna be a little it. gossip girl, you got to go all the way there. He, he, got, he got fucking made a fool of. Like he was used and like he was he was made a fool of in the whole thing, and he he just was treated like shit over. He didn't do anything as soon as he got to VidCon. Or actually, it was before he even got to VidCon because all of a sudden, Failure had to hook Crazy Hair up with another room because she's begging Failure for, hey, do you know somebody who I can get a room with? Or maybe it was uh, Vern was looking for someone to get into a room. I can't remember if it was Crazy or Vern that had brought up they needed a room. And Failure's like, well, this one has a room and they just lost the person they're going to be in a room with. And that's how Vernaculous and Crazy Hair ended up in a room together. That's why Failure feels bad about that situation. The guy who thought that he was her boyfriend he was just a schmuck he, he he got he got played by this fucking bitch and he's never spoke about it you know publicly he don't he didn't it's a very very low point for him okay all right well what was the uh the deal with i mean they mentioned uh vernaculus and uh her sharing a bed what was that okay that's again this can this ends up going public because she's a fucking idiot um 
Again, I can't remember who it was who asked. And it I'll listen off, to like this. I, shit. <laughs> I can't remember. I forgot. I can't. Well, no, I just uh, no. I just told you a second ago. Like oh, the thing that I was saying a second ago. I can't remember who asked first. If it was Vernaculus who asked a uh, failure, or if it was Crazy here who asked failure. But the first night at VidCon, everything finally goes in, and everybody's about to you know go to bed, do all that shit, and Crazy here and Vernaculus go to their room. What happens the next morning? is Vernaculus is asking around because he needs to be in another fucking room. And the reason is he fucking wakes up, looks over at the camera and she had pointed a camera at the bed and had recorded the entire evening. He made her erase that shit and he moved his shit out of that room immediately. Right as this is happening. And this is why Andy hates crazy hair so fucking much. When Vernaculus dips, she goes over, I think, uh, I don't know if Andy and Chris had a different room or not, or if they were in the same room, there was just a war ski pad or whatever. She goes over there and she's like, uh, guys, can I, can I uh, use your internet to upload something to my YouTube channel? Because she'd been running around taping everything. She was the one who had all the footage of Anita and Sargon from the thing. She was the one who set up like nine fucking cameras and had to get in everybody's shot. Like, have you guys seen those cringy fucking VidCon videos? A little bit. Oh, yeah. 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 Bit, Have you yeah. noticed how much you see crazy hair yet? Yeah. I honestly don't know her, so not really. She, she fucking runs into the side of the camera and everybody shot. She just happens to always be there because every time there was a cat, it was her. Like that she was, was her thing. An operation. Exactly. She wanted to be a thing. She's passing out Kekistan cards. Oh god. Failure still has his. Fuck's sake. I would what is the name of the stream? I can show you a stream where it's right after this shit. As soon as Failure saw that Blair White had made a comment on a YouTube video about this shit, he said, okay, it's fair game. She finally talked about it. It's time to talk about crazy hair. He wanted to talk about crazy hair and the crazy shit she had pulled so fucking bad. Failure jumped on it as soon as he saw a YouTube comment. Crazy oh, hair, okay. fucking nuts. So just, just to kind of add on to that, is, what's the deal with her and Sargon? The deal with her and Sargon. Okay. Much like a couple of other people there, uh, mainly uh, the best one was Dieter Lukum, who just, he blew her off a million times. She wanted to, she's like, can I have your key to go to your room to get some ice? He's fuck off. Uh, then she's talking shit to this guy who's stuttering, uh, trying to seat people in their seats and get people to, you know, where they're going. She starts treating him like shit. Dieter tapped her on the shoulder. And she's like, stop caressing me. And like, she tried to portray it like he was like grabbing on her and shit after VidCon and she got called out Man, for what it. Man, a roasty. Oh, oh she, she's a fun lady. <laughs> but the thing with Sargon, uh, Sargon gets invited to some shit happening at NBC or... ABC is some some news thing. It's been a fucking year, and I don't really care about this shit. But I remember it was some news thing is happening. He's been invited to it at some party at some fucking news headquarters, or not maybe not even headquarters building. What the fuck ever. Wait, He's wait, invited. As, wait, wait, talk as an aside. Didn't didn't Sargon go after Richard Spencer for talking to the mainstream media, and he's going to a fucking yeah. party at NBC? Yeah, yeah he well, did. Well, you, you, you're gonna you're gonna have That's to. You're gonna have to talk obviously, to that was. That was just him's like, oh, he's just trying to, you know, appease his audience. Oh, we're not, we hate the mainstream media. And then, you know. Oh, yeah. He's trying oh, yeah. to be the new mainstream media. But he, he 100%, he, he, he was going to this party thing. Crazy hair caught wind of it. And when Sargon starts to act like he's leaving for it, Crazy starts following him. Everybody was, I think they were at uh, Cheesecake Factory. I think that's where they were all at. Everybody's bullshitting there. And Sargon's going to go up to the party. Crazy goes with him. She's like, let me be a plus one. Let me be a plus one. Let me be a plus one. Sargon knows he doesn't have a plus one, but she won't fucking piss off. So he goes, he gets to the NBC thing and he's like, oh, my bad. I don't have a plus one. And he just goes in. So she has to call somebody to come and get her from the NBC building. And that's what that's uh, somebody ends up or she ends up getting a taxi. She comes back through. This is when she goes back to like Andy shit. Uh, because she knew where Andy and Chris's room was at this point, and only Chris is there. She goes back in. Oh, I forgot something on the computer. She goes into the computer, and this is when. Here's something else a lot of people don't know. She was walking around getting people's phones, and she would go into your phone. She would go into your Twitter, and she would start following herself on everybody's Twitter. This is not a lie. A she lie. did that. Now, this isn't just from people on this. You can ask Francesca Ramsey about this. Why? Why would you do that? Because she's crazy. <laughs> she wants to be important. She wants to matter. She fucking. Yeah. All right. She did this to uh, Francesca Ramsey when Andy and Francesca Ramsey are having this talk. She is scouring the fucking. I don't know what kind of uh, convention center it is, but it's big. It's not not the size of a stadium or arena, but it's fucking big. 
they go into this thing and they're walking around the thing trying to talk to uh, you know or she's walking around the thing uh looking for andy or anybody else she finally sees andy and francesca are in this room having a talk she knocks the door open and is like oh this is so great to see and like comes in and hugs them and shit and andy's like, okay well i'm i'm talking let us talk you know because oh, like, like that should have been what the fuck are you shut up hardcore oh god mute you fucking out. schmuck god damn it fucking everything up. <laughs> god, well we had a nice thing good. going fuck we did all right Where and then a that? liberalist showed up oh man pretty much uh crazy walks in uh she does it she starts hugging everybody and he's like well i'm talking to Franny here and you know everybody knows him and uh francesca they've had a feud going forever and a day you see two people having that fucking talk they're finally meeting you know what you do you let them have that fucking talk you piss off right like anybody in here that social cues anybody anybody except for the guy who doesn't have social cues <laughs> Like, everybody else gets that, right? Like, yeah. okay, these two are talking. You piss off. Well, after Andy says, well, we're talking, you know, we kind of need this. And she said, well, can I, can I just watch? Because this is just a big moment. I really want to watch. Yeah. All right. So they turn around and they kind of ignore her while they're trying to talk. <laughs> when they turn back around, Francesca Ramsey catches her with her phone in her hand. And she had went on her Twitter and followed her. Franny apparently jumped on, you know, jumped on her about it and fucking unfollowed her. And was, get the fuck, get the fuck out of here. But that's what she'd been doing to everybody through the whole thing. She's just going on to everybody. She's just so, grabs so the name is a cute herself. little username. She's legitimately she's fucking, fucking crazy. nuts. Yeah, she is right. fucking crazy. And she has caught on to this thing to where, oh, nobody likes Andy right now. OK, well, let me pretend that I have a grievance with Andy. When the people who threw me out of the room were shoe on head, armored skeptic, Blair White, Lacey Green, Chris Raygun. Like Andy's not up there. They got her out of the fucking room. And why did they get her out of the fucking room? Because they don't know her. I would have done the same goddamn thing. People act like it's an elitist thing. If I don't know some chunky fucking Afro, ugly fucking gonzo looking bitch and she's in my room, she's getting out. She's, that's not elitist. That's get the fuck out of here, you fucking whack job. And she's caught on that people don't like Andy now. So it's like, let, let's pick a thing with Andy. There's a, there is a stream that covers all this shit. She made a video after VidCon that she's fucking taken down now because she knows how fucking cringe it is. But we went over it on a stream so I could go back to that. And it has all the lyrics to the fucking video that she made. She made a poem about VidCon and how it went. The cringiest shit you've ever fucking read. And it's totally against the narrative she, go, she goes with now. It feels like it's a poem from somebody who was socially rejected. Because wait, 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 Taga. She wrote poetry about a fucking YouTube meetup? Yes. God, yes. The oh last God. fucking line. Wait, I put it on my you? fucking Twitter. How old is this woman? I got to go look this up right now. All right. Old, grab it. Old enough yeah, to know grab better. It put the tweet over old here. No, for well, me. no shit, but we live in a degenerate society. So how old is this woman? No, oh, fuck the it. last it's line. Crazy. No, for real. The last line of the poem. This is all I really remember, but it's all bad. And Baron said he's going to go grab it. it. It's on my fucking uh, Twitter now on the crazy yeah, hair post I made today. It's there. The last line of this shit. I have to say hello, darkness to my old friend. Oh, Jesus. Again. Like, you, it's the worst cringy kill yourself fucking terrible shit you've ever fucking read okay Tonka, let me ask you down something. because she has a new narrative now let me ask you something just completely academic interest would this woman happen to be jewish i don't know i don't know anything the about chat's her saying, the chat's all saying she's jewish i'd buy it she has like a million flags in her fucking profile thing go check if one's israel <laughs> Oh, I don't pay this much attention to people. Like I'm not internet people. I don't know what to look for other that's than, an, oh, you're an, crazy. Man. Piss off. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is, I mean, so so just to sum All right, right, I got it here. Okay, at VidCon, on. she went. She was going around talking to a lot of people. Then she went up to a room that had Blair White and Shoe on Head, and there was some sort of crazy orgy. And then at some point, she went into Andy and Chris's room, uploaded cuck porn that she had made with Sargon NBC. Yes, I'll that is the this. accurate timeline. On the orgy thing, from what I saw, from as trashed as they fucking were, when Crazy Hair left, I doubt any of them were able to do a fucking thing. Holy shit. There's a video. <laughs> no, there's a video of right as Crazy Hair is leaving, and the camera turns back around and it looks at everybody. Chris is already passing out. Lacey's on her fucking way out to passing out. Blair is so fucking gone because Blair is apparently a lightweight, among many other things. 
Nobody's even fucking awake. But maybe, guys, I don't fucking know. I just, I don't care about those people that much. Maybe they did have has orgy. I don't fucking know. But I do know that Crazy Air has nothing on it. And that she snuck onto a private floor under false pretenses. And then after that, she runs down to the fucking lobby. This is the other thing. After she's been booted, she's fucking crying. And she goes up to Monday, Matt, and she's like, Matt, listen to this. And she plays the fucking tape. And all that she has on the tape, everybody's always about this. What's on the crazier tape? What's on the crazier tape? She played it for Monday and Matt. I know what's on the fucking tape. You guys want to know what's on the secret tape crazy crazy hair has? You guys want to know? Sure. Yes. The people want to know. All you have is fucking Armored Skeptic and Blair's boyfriend saying, nobody fucking knows you. Get out of here, you crazy <laughs> gypsy. <laughs> 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 and that's why she's talking about the ableist slurs and the being racist because they called her crazy. Blown the fuck out by Armored Skeptic. That's what's on the recording. That's it. Wow. They're talking about how this, who the fuck was that crazy bitch? What the, what the fuck was going on? She sat outside their door after she had been thrown out. And if you watch the video where she's walking out, that you can see her. She leaves and she goes down the hall. She would have had to have come back and sat there by the door recording people because she's that fucking pathetic. I'm sure there's people this crazy in like every little section of the YouTube uh, oh, for fandoms. Sure. For sure. And this, was when, just, this is just this person's crazy. Right. <laughs> she shops this to Matt and says, you want to make a video about this? Please make a video about this. They're so elitist. They're so elitist. And Matt's like, I don't really know if you have anything there. So since that didn't work, she goes to Jeff and just says, they were being racist to me. They were making fun of my skin color and being a just going off to Jeff. Jeff Holiday, stupid ass, runs up to the fucking room, calls Armored Skeptic a nigger, and then takes <laughs> off running away. <laughs> like he points at him and says, like, You're fucking nigger, Greg. And he just fucking walks off. Like he, everybody's tried to play it up since, like, you know, Jeff was like up in his face and gonna fight him over it. No, he's yelling at him, calls him a fucking nigger, and walks off. Oh my we're going to fight him. See, this is why your Vegas trip idea with Andy is such a terrible idea. This is I a don't have trip. a Vegas trip idea. Jim, please. Please. <laughs> that, that's that, true. No, no, no. Taka, Taka is, is being honest on this. I don't blame him either. I don't want to meet fucking people from the internet in real life. It seems like a fucking retarded thing to do. Absolutely. <laughs> and when I hear their stories about VidCon and how fucking swell it went, I am only fucking <laughs> bolting down my feet even further on this. I'm, I'm, I'm reading some of this fucking poem that she posted. This shit is amazing. At some point, at this point, you really don't think that you'll ever go to a scary new place again, alone again. You really don't believe that you're a good enough person to be worth it. You're ready to let the darkness consume you. You welcome darkness, your old friend. God, Jesus she's so fucking, fucking angsty. <laughs> There's a bit. Look, that's a video. This is a recap of a video. And if you go to Failure Accomplish or Failure Terminate, one of the channels, one of the five million fucking failure channels, there actually just look up the stream. Shitcon drama. Just type in shitcon drama, and you will see a picture of the cringy fucking card she was handing out, like business cards, <laughs> like Kekistan's a political party. On the back of these cards, it checks. Are you male, female, something kin? But it's the cringiest fucking shit in the world. This is why she pops yeah, that, that up. Yeah, that sounds her. like fucking Kekistan to me. Thanks, yeah. on. Thanks a lot oh, for yeah. that. How you doing, fellow Magapedes? Chatelet, kitties. Thank you, Sargon. <laughs> but like, I'm, I know that there was a much more fantastic version of this that was out where like there's an orgy and Crazy Hair has all these secrets. Crazy Hair is just some crazy fucking bitch. That's it. She's some fat, crazy bitch that nobody likes. Nothing more, nothing less. I wish there was better stories. But most of the stories of VidCon are stories of people who got together, took some people's ideas, or tried to weasel in on some people's shit, or tried to fuck with people, or tried to annoy people. That's all. There was nothing sexy about VidCon from what I heard. It was a miserable shit show. You couldn't have paid me to want to go to that shit. Especially after I heard what happened. After the fact, fuck that. Yeah. It was a cringe show. It was a bunch of, oh, the okay. coolest thing that happened for them. I'm talking about VidCon anymore. I'm going to fucking shoot myself. I can't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I can't is... fucking do it. I can't. I'm sorry, Tonka. It's a... That's how I was I, five I months ago. We talked about it for months. Right. 
Jim, this is how people feel when they watch your videos, except, you oh, know, more with oh. the, yeah. I'm just saying, the coolest thing that happened to them was that Anita Sarkeesian made them feel like victims for 10 minutes. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Big Con was That's so shit. sad. What has uh, Anita Sarkeesian even done lately? She, I don't know. She needs to call me. Holy shit, that'd be a great stream to get her <laughs> that'd on. That'd be hilarious. I want, I want her on, even though I think she's like a puppet of her boyfriend. That's the theory, at least. Who's her boyfriend? She has like a boyfriend who writes right? all her shit or something. I'm gonna tell you, I'll be like, look, you need to ditch that boyfriend. Come over here and hop on the Tonka tribe. <laughs> like, free dicking. And I will set Anita Sarkeesian so straight. She'll be so much more decent of a person. Oh, Jesus. Uh, no, I'm kind of curious because hardcore's in here. Uh, joke, yeah, talk, why did that uh, hardcore. Are you three gonna go at it? We can have some uh, entertainment tonight. Can we save? Uh, I, I was gonna save it, but yeah, I can make fun of you for. Yeah, I actually booked them for fucking Monday, but here comes fucking the wannabe hardcore champion that's lost that fucking belt sixteen times at this fucking point. Shut up. We yeah. not for that shit. I got told that uh, Jim wanted to talk to me about. Um... Oh, Nobody wants to talk. To you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, look. I'm not in the mood for the bullshit. I'll bounce if you don't want to talk to me, so it's cool. I'm this is bullshit. This is what we do is we sit on here and we bullshit. Come on, man. Okay, so we're entertaining 14-year-olds right now. Come on. You said something on Twitter, and I didn't even bother reading the message because I, I get the notifications on my phone, and then I look away because I do other things. But are you trying to back out on Monday because you no longer believe in liberalistism? Is that what you were saying? No. I'm good on Monday. Okay, so you still believe deeply in the tenets of uh, Sargonism. Not sargonism, but whatever. You can continue this weird line of uh, trying to make some kind of weird uh, cult to um, sargon. How am I making it into a weird cult? You guys, the only identity that has is that you all suck Sargon's dick. Um, okay, cool. Whatever. Um, what's up? What's up? What do you? I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not in the mood to sit here and, and pull this little. Oh, uh, we're going to sit here and on the side talk shit about Sargon or some kind of other bullshit and then pretend like you joined a Sargon fan club whenever you have obviously been pointing out what what I know for a fact that I've, I've said numerous times what I believe in. And uh, the fact that you bring me on here for this basic bullshit from like two weeks ago is kind of sad. It's just, two he's just upset because I claimed the liberalist crown. That's all, guys. Oh, okay. I wasn't You're a aware. fucking low energy loser, hardcore. Go run back to your fucking mommy's house. You don't even know what you stand for. Um, were, uh, hold on, for real, hardcore. Have you thought about the whole thing we said about how you know why are you bothering with the liberalist thing? Well, if yeah, you but no, it's it's, it's it's like it's like I said uh, the other day. It's like I'm I'm what I I value about it is first of all the fact that it's a start. If anything, even if it doesn't continue to be the liberalist, which I do agree with every single person on the planet that is the dumbest fucking name I've ever heard. But so why are you even attached to it? Who gives a fuck about the liberalist? Who gives a fuck about this globalist culturalist fucking movement? Parasite. You don't add anything to any fucking conversation that you're I in. Kind of oh, goddamn boy. Just shut the fuck up. Every time you're here, all you do is just suck whoever the opposite of me. My side. <laughs> Whoever the opposite of me is. <laughs> <laughs> See, this Whoever is the problem the with you guys. Is, you suck their yeah. dick. And then Here's and then your... just, just shut up until I'm done talking. All right. So um shots fired. Shots fired. The the Go ahead. Go ahead. group of people Go. needs to be together by principle. Principles and the thing yeah, is, you don't is, have any principles. We've established that. We've been picking your shit apart for hours. Okay, whatever you want to okay, say. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go. Um, we need principles, and I think that everybody, even if it you know, Tonka or anybody else, can all agree that certain things are across the board for everybody should be a thing. And I think that if any, if anything's going to change, if anything is going to uh, really become a deal the biggest problem we have is that all of these like like a good example if, if everybody had a good a good plan you in america you would have to run it through the republican party or the democratic party and then whoever is on the opposite side is automatically going to be on the opposite side 
it, it's it's garbage. You can't have a good idea in anywhere because of politics and other stuff. So a group of people brought together what? by principles, just principle, just the most basic thing. We could get together and say, okay, we're going to go for this. You're saying you want to change culture and that to embody your beliefs to make a better place to live. I get it. But really, uh, just a word of advice: if you want to, if you want to try to pon uh, pontificate about this kind of shit, get a little more well read. Read on some fucking philosophy. Read on some shit related to this. Don't like Reddit posts are not philosophy. I'm, I'm, you're, you're, you're assuming a lot about me, actually, right now. No, I'm just, I'm taking well, your argument. Straight. I understand no, there's straight. no fucking reading behind it. All right, and that's fine. But that's what, fine. I don't understand. There's no reading behind it. The, the basic thing that I'm advocating for is that. A group of people come together for a group of ideas, just ideas, something that we can all sit here and say, OK, um, you know, a Andy getting censored. That's a great example, uh, a great example of something that everybody can get behind. That is bullshit. The way that YouTube has been treating people lately is something that everybody can get behind. That is OK, but y'all are just hopping on that because it's convenient. No, y'all were shitting on we're Andy. Y'all shitting on Andy it's not even two days ago. The way that things are right now, that nobody gets anything done because of all the bullshit. Like even if like right now, here's a good example, is that the alt-right cannot get anything done at all because they're too busy just stroking each other's dicks about imaginary fucking fake Wakandas and um, about YouTube strikes and stuff like that. Meanwhile, in South fucking Africa, motherfuckers are losing their lives. But all right. Who, wait, 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 wait. How, how does, does, the old doing right, anything how how does your liberalist that? ideology solve that free writing but problem? The group, but that's the thing about it. Within the group, if you if you were within the group, that's what they're working towards. They're not working towards creating memes. They're not. It's, wait, you guys are not, working. Not, hey, hey, hold up the fuck up. You've been, you guys have been bogarting the microphone for a little bit here. So you're saying that the whole point of the liberalist is to raise awareness africa which you don't even believe because not to raise why do you why do you do that why you are the king of the fucking straw man i personally believe that u.s americans are unable to do so because uh some people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, i believe that our uh, education is like such as in uh south africa and the uh rack everywhere so such as <laughs> Like she can say whatever she wants. I still want to bang her mouth. Right, though. but that's what I fucking hear every time you start going on. It just it becomes a bunch of words. Like yeah, all, right, all right, hardcore. You're not um, smart enough to follow, I guess. I don't so, know. No, hardcore. So you have a group of people in a Reddit group who all believe like a set, of, like you write down a set of ideas, and you it's all believe. Them. But how how is that turned into a political action plan that gets them through the elite in society who all oppose your ideas? I don't think anybody opposes our ideas. That's the no, you're wrong. Society oppose your ideas. Well, let me ask you you're fucking wrong. wrong. Who uh, who opposes the idea of um, free speech? Who is uh, uh, college? Yeah, I, 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 I absolutely do. You shouldn't have free speech. Too easy. So you you really don't think that anybody should have free speech? Okay, I got I got a question for is you. This, you. Is no, this? No, no, no. Fuck up, Jeff. I'm having a conversation. Do you, do you fuck, give me two seconds? All right. That, that was Baron. Don't. Yeah, sorry. Whatever. <laughs> do you believe in free air Jordans for Australopithecus? No. Okay. Australopithecus want air Jordans. We democracy now. That's a that's a material good versus something that is. We vote for Air Jordans. Why are Air Jordans that? Fundamental to society. How do you how do you have a society without free speech? I mean, honestly, I mean, where are my Air Jordans at? Yeah, that's that's now. one. Well, you get free speech. I mean, you you really need to look up where the straw man argument is. All right, but here's the thing. Okay, so you put all your your principles down, free speech. Like you're basically saying all the shit on the Constitution well, yeah, is great. Right. Well, we're, we're, this is uh, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up something that uh, Tonka said the other day on the bearing stream. That I think is very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And you think I, I think said something important? No, dude, you really <laughs> did. Like I said before, it, it's it's really interesting how you picked up on this. It, something that I had a fucking huge problem with whenever I got on board. The set of liberalist principles right now are the second set of liberalist principles, and they're they're, in my opinion. I'm sorry, I was muted, but I was laughing. I'll, there I'll should be more, but there are people who got on board from day one saying, "I'm a liberalist. I'm, you know, I'm this thing," and I just, I think that's kind of naive because of the fact that tomorrow, 
Sargon and everybody else in the group could, could you know, decide they wanted to be, I don't know, um, just well, all about censoring people or something. It's like not that. just that, like on a on a minimal scale, like uh, the optics, as people like to put it, it looks manufactured. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And that's that's why I find them so frustrating is because they're sitting here coming at me like I'm one of those. And I'm what I'm advocating for is an, the idea, the most proto idea that a group of people can come together with just principles. And, you know, like with just the most basic. When has that ever fucking happened? Um, America. No, no that was a cadre country. of rich elite landowners who decided to coup the country using some Vlachian philosophy. That wasn't like a bunch of like farmers who came up with that shit. That was a bunch of land owning super elite in like the cities. Like people always act in their own interest. That's why democracy fundamentally fails because like look at how blacks vote. Blacks vote for Air Jordans. They vote for the Gibbs. You know, they're not you can you aren't going to convince 30 percent of blacks to vote for Republicans with like a tax that, plan. I don't agree that that's a a symptom of biology. I don't I don't agree that that is a symptom of inherently blackness, you know, well, because you deny biology. You think that. No, no, I don't die. I, I different deny shade of skin. I deny there is the working black what democracy. With great me, GDP. Right, wait, wait, wait. Before, what irritates me about the whole entire race realism argument is it's not race realism. It's forced race projection. It says that there is no inherent value in the growing up or the um, experiences or your life or what you learn or what you go through or anything whatsoever. No. Well, no, and there's only, value. It's only minimal. biology matters. And what pisses me off about that idea is that you can, there are tons of black conservatives. There are tons, like tons. What are you talking hey, about? Hey, hey, Thomas Sowell? <laughs> <laughs> is that what like you're doing? One, one in like a million, like eight percent of the electorate. Eight percent of the black electorate. Yes, because all right. So this is this is the thing about it is that if you have a close set of people, this is why I don't agree with ethnostatism. But I'm saying you can't like refute race realism. Just saying because base I black men exist. The idea that there is a biological difference between somebody who is um, black. Or somebody who is white, or something. Okay, like okay, but that's just not true. Saying, no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on, hang on the fuck matter. on, hang the fuck on, hang the fuck on. You say there's no difference biologically. What about the fact that they get sickle cell anemia? What about the fact that they get sickle cell anemia? Is that not biological? I literally just said the opposite of there's no difference biologically. What about Tay Sachs disease? Is that is that just like a thing that just God hates Jewish people randomly, so he gives them Tay Sachs? There's no biological difference between Jewish populations and non-Jewish populations as to why they get. You know, you know what the all right, wait, wait. So let's all right. That's a really retarded argument and not really fundamentally sound biology because uh, you know why black people get sickle cell anemia, right? It's a genetic adaptation that they made because there is a thing called microspeciation. And yes, there are differences between the races in wait, terms of their phenotypical you know, expression. Wait, you think that that's because of microspe? You don't know about malaria? Uh, so wait, you're saying, hey, hey, so you're wait, saying, no, no, no. You, did, don't know. you don't know that, that no, don't. black people have uh, uh, sickle cell anemia because it, it is a, like literally a cure for malaria okay you're this is why i can't fucking argue with you because sometimes you're just, you literally just miss the trees and run right into the woods here's the thing yes you're making my point black people have sickle cell anemia because it's what's called an adaptation some black guy had a genetic thing that made it. can i fucking talk for two seconds hardcore holy shit you want to go on for 10 minutes i can't even get three sentences in here okay, okay. micro speciation is a thing do you understand that in evolutionary biology when you have an adaptation that helps you be more competitive in an environment then mm -hmm. that will be more successful. So blacks live in an area that had malaria historically. It still right. does. So a trait that will enable you to have malarial resistance becomes popular in that population and it becomes part of the phenotypical expression of that population, also known as microspeciation. You see the same thing with like melanin expression in Europeans. It was an evolutionary ages for us. So we developed as a people and our genome changed to do that. Right. Same thing. Can, can I, this is the question yeah. that always bothers me with this. Why does it bother you if there is a biological difference between people? Why would that? Why does that bother you? Are you why asking me or him? No, him. Okay. 
It, it doesn't seem to bother you. It? You seem to know about it, accept it, and have no issue talking and about the differences. And violent it social doesn't, policy around it. Doesn't, it, yeah. it doesn't, once again, that's that's a that's a, a straw man argument. No, I think straw man. There is a, a hypothetical lot. question, dude. Don't 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 even get emotionally. But I'm just wondering. I'm not, why I'm would saying, it bother I'm not you? I'm saying that there's a bio, there isn't a biological difference between people. What I'm saying is it's not relevant. That it doesn't matter. How can it not be relevant? Because can, for the same reason for the same reason that you believe the way that you do, and the other people in your I'm not talking about believing. Okay, look no, at the but, NBA. But, but, I don't they, need to believe that there's a physical right. difference between me and Dakimbe Mutombo. But you you are different <laughs> than other people in the reservation, right? Uh, other than I don't live there and decided <laughs> to not get drunk all the fucking time. Yeah, exactly. So if if, you, if he was arguing. He was arguing that there would be no possible way that you could be different from them. No, I'm not. That's not what he said. That's, right. Hey, hang on. That's what's known as a straw man asshole. No, no. Well, this is what I'm saying. This is exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you were to take those, uh, if you were to literally change, let's say you could brainwash every single person in uh, like the ghetto or something like that, like brain, like shoot them with a beam that automatically changed their entire like, like play Oga Boga music to of reality. And, and made them like like think they lived, I don't know, some leave it to beaver life or something like that. They would not inherently go back to living the lives they were living before because they were black. That's what my point is, is it doesn't, if you're sitting here, this is the weird thing about it. If you think that this is, this is biological and not cultural, then please explain to me how it is that a, a West Coast gang like the Most bloods and the Crips, Most still has still has ties like within a year to places like in Florida and Texas and stuff like that. They, those people didn't migrate from California. No, they migrated they from Mexico. Great, there wasn't a great bloods and Crip migration across the entire nation. <laughs> okay, it, okay, okay. I got an answer for your question. You want to hear it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so Richard Dawkins in his book, The Selfish Gene, put forth an idea that, okay, so genes are a self-replicating unit of biological information, right? Genes yeah. continue their own expression, they perpetuate it, and they exist as, you know, like an, an allele, you know, like the, the gene for sickle cell anemia, because we're already using that, you know, that's a, that's a gene that will continue to exist in the population, and it will continue to perpetuate itself. It was the one who coined the term meme, as in the idea of, a, instead of a, a biological self-replicator, an idea that's self-replicating. Right. And I think we all here understand what a meme is. I mean, it's fucking, you know, it's the internet. And mm. that is that is right what he's talking about. You want to talk about how that spread? The meme of the Crips and the blood spread from the right. communities in California to Florida, much the same as the sickle cell anemia spreads from one generation to another in Africa. Yeah, but uh, the reason that it spreads is because the people who didn't spread it died. <laughs> it's not because it was like, you know, a thing that was black. If you were sitting there and you were a white person living amongst them and you could manage to maintain your whiteness over five or six generations, which wouldn't be a thing, um, then you, if your group happened to have sickle cell anemia, then those people would end up getting a predisposition to having that. It, it's not one of those things that's inherently black or inherently white. Well, well and yeah, you're right, hardcore. But I'm saying, well, if you look at like, there are racial differences in IQ. And, and aggress aggressiveness and other things. Yeah, no, I'm not that saying that in society. I'm not saying that there are not differences between the way that certain groups over certain amount of times have developed biologically. What I'm saying is is that it's not uh, it's not something that wouldn't change over a long period of time. And I'm not saying that it's not something that should be relevant. I mean, Africans in, in America have had a long time and a lot of generations of forced breeding. I, yeah, why is it? No, hang on. I got a question for you. Why is it the blacks in America seem to be stuck in this negative economic situation, but the Koreans or the Chinese or the Japanese who came into a much harder situation seem to be a lot more successful? Is it culture. just it's culture. 100% culture. It's 100. It's not the average lower IQ or the no. higher serum testosterone. No, okay, all right. Violence. Hardcore. Why does Africa have no philosophers or culture? How many black people did you get to get these IQ tests that you keep on expounding? Because I happen to know for a fact the that nobody's going to the middle of That's it. Maps and ACT. 
you don't, there's no actual IQ stats on race. There's just the MEPs and the ACT, and they're pretty fucking uh, accurate. And yeah, the, 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 intelligence the, among groups. Yeah, but also if you're sitting there and you're talking about, all right, let's talk about, uh, you, could, you would say that there is a direct correlation between nourishment, like access to food and IQ, right? Everybody would agree to that? That malnutrition. Okay, are you saying there's no food or malnutrition? No, 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 in no, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. Just let me finish. Quit doing this straw man bullshit, Kathy. <laughs> you would agree that mal malnourished people have lower IQs than higher nourishment. That has been shown, yeah. Okay. So if you were grown up in an environment where uh, parenthood wasn't a thing, where the mother was only giving you Cheetos and Twinkies and... Uh, Hot pockets, lead, like lead paint chips. Apparently, have a lower IQ than somebody who was eating apples and real food. That's about been my diet, and I'm a fucking genius. Oh, I'm sure you are. That's pretty um, arguable. All right. My point is, is that every single thing can go back to either a uh, bad parenting and culture. Not really, because you yeah. look at look at Africa for the history of the world. Okay, not yeah. not They're like. like in America, Africa have a high. There are places that in Africa that are successful. Now, not, they, wait, 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 wait. Fuck up. Name one. Name fucking one. I think Mozambique. There's a couple of them. There, there. Mozambique are, is successful by what metric? I don't know, man. There. I, let, you want me to pull up the map? I don't know, man. No, dude, you, you you're, just made up. Yeah, where no, are the black philosophy? Where's the black philosophy? Where's the black history, dude? Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm really not familiar with African culture, but because I because there was none. The map that there's two or three there places was none. that are green. <laughs> there, there was no cultural. Wait, so you saw a couple of pictures of African countries on it as green, which I'm assuming meant good in that map, and so yeah, therefore really Mozambique is fucking where you. I think you should go move to Mozambique and tell me what you think about it, because why I'll would I you, want to it, move to an inferior state? You just so I thought you said Mozambique was doing great. It was a fantastic place to live. It's wonderful over there. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's that, 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 as far as is, that's that's a straw man. Just so you know. <laughs> you think okay. that it hurts okay. me to call it a straw man? I don't care. Yeah, okay, I'm shit. Yeah, but yeah, I'm pointing out that it, I'm not going to. Hardcore. Can I just put in for a second? And it's nice we're doing this really big in depth conversation here, but this is just a, a conversation between hardcore and the regulars. We did that in the past, and I think we can do it some other time. We have a few special guests right here, and I really want to make use of their time. So I was under the, the impression they just wanted to listen to us shit talk because they're lazy. Yo, fucking, we do this shit all the time. We yeah. should have to sit in the fucking booth sometimes. Both of them wanted to, you know, just listen in. Yeah, but I, I need to come on to talk to Jim if, if uh, he wants to ask me anything or talk about what. <laughs> I don't, I don't know who told you I wanted you on. I don't even know who the fuck you are. I just know that you've had debates with Tonka and uh, uh, Chikamir. So I like. I did not have a debate. I had a screaming match with Tonka. That uh, Jim, it's pronounced Laheim. I could have won. Laheim. Oh, Laheim. Oh, yeah. Did you just say that you won against me? Why do you keep? No, saying I said that there was no way that I could have won. Well, yeah, you could have not been lame. Yeah, I, I guess I do. I do have a question for you, Hardcore. You said you wanted to. You, the thing that appealed about the liberalist ismisms was that it was a group of people coming together for principles. But that sounds so vague and milk toast. Like anybody, I can say I want to come together for principles, guys. It reminds me of feminists saying, uh, "Feminism is a radical notion that women are all equal, so you should all be feminists because we believe in equality." Like you can make up any bland, vague, generic statement and say you should join me because of that. I yeah. believe in free speech. Join me. I Become agree. a medicarist. I agree. I 100% agree with you. That's why I'm um, I'm in favor of. We have a we have a set of principles right now that are kind of vague, in my opinion, and I think that they should be tightened up a lot. But also, I think that it's not really about passing judgment at one another. And I know that sounds hippy dippy or whatever, but the problem is, is that like with the conservatives. The conservatives are, are very hard to join, even though they're for personal liberty, because if you have any kind of, you know, past or like porn or whatever, you're going to feel like they're judging you or whatever. And I think that that's because there is more to it than just the principles. There's morality, there's nationality, there's ethnicity, there's all this other stuff that really just should not play into it. Things like People getting censored on YouTube is wrong across the board and should be so you're wrong. You're just saying you want to be constitutionist libertarian that is race colorblind. Um, well, let me let me ask you this question. Okay, so 
you have issues with it, but what drew you in in the first place? I mean, Sargon started this, so I'd have How to imagine did that, it take? that you were attracted to this because of Sargon. So, dude, I, I was raising hell in the group for a long... Well, yeah, but you didn't, I mean, like you didn't coin the term liberalist. He did. So what attracted you to this group? Was it just yeah, that, hey, Sargon's true. making something? Well, no, I looked at, I, I think the one of the... The two things that really brought me to the group is it was the first group that said anything about what happened to Dankula. Like I had, I had not, but no, no yeah. But My no, boys were in there rapping for Dankula even when we still hated him. No, they, I can't. It's not like the alt right would let me in, you know. And on top of that, it's that's it, not true. Fuentes is in, and he's fucking Mexican. No, um, good point. Good point. But also, I think that I don't. I like the idea of a group of people who are brought together on principles. And I think that even if the liberalists stop being a thing, I would pursue that concept further than this. But that's oh, just well, let me, let me put it, uh, let, let me put it this way then. Um, so you disagree with uh, some of the things, you, like you said, you're raising hell. Um, no, I'm, raising, I'm raising hell. I'm raising hell because of the fact that I feel like, first of all, I felt like, at the beginning that a lot of people, I mean, I made a whole video about this, but um, I felt like a lot of the people were either a LARPers or B people who wanted to go in and just like to argue. Like there are people who like to have a good um, debate. They like to, you know, like Sargon. Sargon's a guy who likes to have a good debate and likes to Not when it comes to Mike Enoch. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, but I, I don't, like I said before, I don't think that he can Sargon confrontation like that you know i don't i don't think he he's used to being under pressure well, whenever... hardcore why not start your own group that that's what i'm getting at if you believe in this it'd be great if we had a group that came together on principles and we want to hammer out what those principles are why a liberalist why not a hardcore I asked him that the other night you know it, go ahead. The, i asked you that off air go ahead and say what you said um because of the fact that first of all i think that this is this is a really good start and y'all don't see y'all see the cringe outside from the inside thing to where it's got a stupid name and you got a bunch of dorks running around talking about principles and things like that. And then on the inside, I'm seeing people who legitimately want to make a world a better place, who don't want to join some kind of racist fucking Wakanda clan and who have a personal problem with the way that that, you know, white people are being treated right. because it's just wrong. Sure. But how are you going to get people to look at it? Well, when wait, how do, how do you address, no, 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 Taka, how do you address what's happening to white people when the fucking founder of your group doesn't even know what white is? All right. well, that's and, what we get into that. We can get into that. But, no, Jim, that's not true, though, because exactly. he knows that there's white niggers. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let, it, let, him, let him give it a go. Um, to give you an example of why that's vague, um, Joaquim, on the other day, sit there and said that uh, Madonna, whenever she was doing Material Girl, would be allowed into the ethno state. But whenever she... Well, yeah, I, I don't care what the alt-right says. No, I'm asking if for, well, from a liberalist perspective, if you can't define what is white, how can you come to me and say we're sticking up for white people? You don't even know what the fuck white is. You don't have your own definition. Well, I, I, he doesn't all, care about white genocide. Actually, actually, it, first of all, I would say that from our perspective, it isn't relevant, but it would warm out matter. Well, yeah, but the, you're trying to connect to me by saying shit's happening to white people. If you, if it's not relevant and you can't define it, how does that appeal to me at all? If you come to me with the sales pitch of it's not, it's not about white what people. my definition of what it is, it's about what the people who hate white people's definition of what it is. So anybody who they would sit there and say, you're an evil white male who has white privilege and stuff like that. That's probably somebody who um, is probably feeling a little bit disenfranchised by the whole entire fucking thing. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's going to work out, letting your enemies define your own terms. How could that go wrong? It, how is that <laughs> letting our enemies define our own terms? Why? All right, let me ask you a question. You're letting them Why choose what white is. Oh, he's not, the, Jim, he's not white. Let me, let, me, let me ask you a question. If I, yeah. say, I say it's wrong, but I say it's not wrong. It has nothing to do with race. It's just wrong. What if it's just wrong? What if it's, it's just, just wrong for black wrong. people to discriminate against white people and it's wrong for white people to discriminate against black people? It's wrong for brown people to discriminate yeah, against but that, uh, Yeah, but hardcore, I have to go back to <clears throat> your initial sales pitch when you were listing what you said just a minute ago. You didn't say it's wrong that there's discrimination. You said you know, uh, uh, when they're they're going after white not, people. But once again, it's wrong to discriminate. It's wrong to discriminate in general. It's not wrong to discriminate against white people versus black people. It's wrong to discriminate against everybody. 
why so when there's statistical why? averages that indicate that behavior are different among groups that how all right first of all once again you go back to the idea that you're sitting here pretending that any certain cultural thing is based off of one variable as i such as it's I, not even if it's not one variable even if it's culture how do you how why if, if even if it's culture you should be able to discriminate well, because statistically on, yeah. If, you, I mean, if, you're discriminating, if you're discriminating based on somebody's merit as a deal, judge I, the group, not the individual. You should not be able to discriminate against somebody something that somebody cannot change. That's okay. Well, well, no hang on, hang on. Let me let me ask you a question then. Can I discriminate against somebody because they're like a transgender or a furry? Because in their mind, they can't change that. That's just who they are. Maybe not. They can't change Maybe if they're a murderer. You can discriminate and throw them in jail. Being a furry, the transgender thing. Um, is it hurting you in some sort of way? Yes. I am currently being very negative in my me. life by a transgender individual. And he wants, to, he wants to start the fourth week. Fourth Reich. If you... You can't change if you're like an insane person, but you should still discriminate and like put them in and fucking... I, I, you know, where they're not going to hurt someone if they're like no. legitimately going to do that. Let him go. He's getting dogpiled. The thing about the transgender thing is I could I could honestly see if you know enough about it why you would would not want to do that but it would have to be based off of something more than they they dress they didn't dress the way you wanted to. So now, what if, if trans code, oh, no let me ask follow up dress code and they didn't want to wear the dress code then you would have a reason to discriminate against them. But if you if you're sitting here saying you're a transgender person you cannot work here because I know you're transgender and they didn't break any of your rules whatsoever. That's fucking wrong. Even okay, though, even if it's an educated guess. Let me follow up on this. So what if transgender individuals constituted 13% of the population, but they committed over half of the murders? Would I be wrong to assume so that if I were around a transgender individual, I might be more likely to be attacked? See, that's such a weird fucking thing to say. They're killing themselves. No, they're he's using the black crime statistic to make a joke. It's a day. It, they're killing themselves. It's fucking sad. That's not. That's not like, something, that's that's not what something that you get fucking discriminated against them for. You should feel bad for them. That's they're, not even what we're talking about. Okay, okay. I feel bad. No, I feel bad for them. But what, what obligation do I have to put myself at risk by not discriminating? You discriminate every day. When you go to somewhere, you make a you make a fucking value decision. Do I go to this store or that store? You're discriminating. You are making a decision based on what you know. You're making the best decision you can, and maybe it's not based on exact science. Maybe somebody didn't do a fucking study, but that doesn't mean you don't make a value judgment and say, hey, maybe I'm less likely to get raped and murdered there. Yeah, if you're saying that that's such a ridiculous statement. All right, let me ask you a question, okay? It's a ridiculous statement. Well, if it's ridiculous, say why it's ridiculous. You no, I'm going to say this because it, it's literally like he only has a problem with statistics that, first of all, only apply like – if you're talking about all the murders that are committed, black people are killing a lot of black people. Okay, that doesn't make it but better. That just means they, they're more likely to commit murder. If you're if you're sitting here and you're talking about, okay, I don't want to sell a house or a car or a dog or something to somebody because of the color of their skin. How is it that you think that their whatever their statistics is a reasonable reason to? Hardcore. How, if you if you don't discriminate against this group that has a statistical problem, if you don't in, implement some policy in society that affects them on the group level, how in the fuck are they ever going to change their behavior just through like norms and memes? I actually, that's never gonna happen. I actually think that's the best way because if you sit there and you think about what I was talking about earlier about the um, cultural shift after um, – after the Spike Lee movies came out in the 90s about the Crips and the Bloods and all that other stuff, all of a sudden across the entire fucking culture, there were- Black people stopped killing each other? No, they started killing each other more because they had groups to join. All of a sudden you had, uh, you had fucking Crips and Bloods in the middle of like Ohio and things like that, places where you would never see them before. And if you sit there and you talk about, okay, what is the problem in the black community that is most prevalent? It's the, the constant need to feel like you're a victim. Even Maybe. the educated ones, even the educated ones don't go back to the fucking ghetto. They sit there and they move out of the ghetto and then they sit there and make excuses for the ones that are in the ghetto. I just that's don't know that I can sit here and listen to you say all this really racist stuff, man. I mean, that's awful what you just said about blacks. I mean, I'm sorry you feel, I'm sorry you feel that way, but it's it's one of those things that you sit here and you say, Okay, what do we need to do that that is um that will change us? Stop doing that. 
And I, I know you were joking. I no, no, I know I you were joking. I, wait, 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 wait. I know what I know you were joking, but that's the reason why things don't get better. Is because you they always no. every single time that you sit there and you try to do anything to help this situation you have an entire group of people who we are all against all the time the sjw's who literally will make you lose your job will make you lose your professorhood or whatever and will ruin your life because you're trying to help people and that's why things don't get better it has nothing to do with the color of somebody okay, here's, here's where i fundamentally disagree with you if you could quit the echo that'd be great um I don't care about their group, right? Because I have my own group. I have, I identify, I have an identity just like everyone has an identity. So I worry about people who are more similar to me and share my identity because what affects them is most likely to affect me. Mm -hmm. I do not care about their community. I don't think that I need to worry about changing the culture. I just want to find a solution where I don't have to be exposed to it. Sierra Leone's a fucking shithole. My solution is not to fix the violence in Sierra Leone. My solution is to build a big fucking border or perhaps put an ocean between me and Sierra Leone and it's, uh, do the best that I can to never fucking go there. That's all I want. I don't cruise around the hood because I, you know, I just, oh, I, it just happened not to go there. No, I don't go there because I know that the people there are more likely to hurt me. It's well, basic fucking shit. Like, you make that the same decision, too. I'm pretty sure you don't spend all day driving around fucking the worst neighborhoods of Dallas, do you? You know, no, you don't just go no, shop. No. Yeah, no, you decide not to go there too for very all, fucking similar reasons. The only I don't, I don't, I respect that, dude. And honestly, you know, I've been thinking about like the stuff that you've been saying over and over again. And dude, you just need to move to like the country, and they, then you would never have this problem ever again. But the thing is that the there too, that I have is that I don't have a problem with you wanting a wall. I'm not. I don't have a problem with you wanting to protect your family. I'm not. I don't have a problem with you associating with who you want to. I don't have a problem with you not wanting to participate in some kind of financial transaction with somebody. But I do have a problem with your need to stand in the way of people who want to help. And that's all I'm saying. So because that's what the liberalists are about, is about helping black people. They're, dude, I cannot sit here and say this enough. Look at the principles. They're about promulgating those principles across an international. Wait, can I can I ask you something? When you say stand in the way of people wanting to help people, are you trying to imply that making fun of liberalistism is standing in the way of you accomplishing shit? No, I, I would actually. <laughs> um, this is a much longer conversation, and, and it goes back to more like the fact that, um, and I don't want to do the the conspiracy theory thing or whatever because he's already admitted it. That's Power true. through it. We need through it. Right. Got it in you. Lots and lots of alt right inside the group. We have lots and lots of uh, alt right inside of every single group. Fucking always trying to derail any conversation. <laughs> You've been infiltrated. <laughs> make every single conversation about the Jewish question. Make every single conversation about you know just just ridiculousness. And the only problem I have is is that I don't understand why it is if we're so benign and we're so impotent. And we're so just ridiculous. Why it is that the alt right tries so hard to shut us up? Like, there's uh, I, I can answer your fake, question. Uh, I don't. I, wait, I can answer your question. You're the retards on the internet right now, and people have fun fucking with you. That's the simple, straightforward the answer. Whether it's the alt right or Cow or 4chan or anybody else, they like fucking mocking you and making fun of you. That's what it is. But once again, I don't have a problem with mocking. But there's also standing in the way, and mocking is mocking is one thing. Standing in the way is another thing. You can hardcore. Mock. I, there's, a, there's a fundamental issue with the whole liberalism thing, and that is it is constitutional libertarianism, something that has been around for thousands of years and already has like established parties and names and other things. But I've, I've said numerous times just wrapping it's it up. an American-based um, thing. It really isn't. I mean, in my opinion, my personal thing is that we mostly have most of this stuff. It's it's not really about. Wait, why are you a part of it then? If you're not, if it's a European thing and you're American, why are you even a part of this? It's dominantly European thing, but the thing is, is that it's not going to ever be a thing if it doesn't become. Well, a didn't thing. you say that your big issue is free speech in the UK? That's your big issue. That's the first big issue. Yeah, that's the big. Group. So in, instead no. of like the big issue to bring the group together or whatever. <laughs> so you want to fight for European rights? So, okay. <laughs> what is it? Said, why, why don't you just start a free speech campaign would, in the UK and then go down your list? Why call it the liberalist disease? 
because that's the name that everybody likes right no, now. No, just go to the UK, start a group that's, that's not, like pro free speech, yeah. and then like push that shit, and then get it done. Why? Why are you like? I don't understand. Reddit? You're, you're probably, Hard forward. Uh, Did you say yourself the name was cringy? I agree one thousand percent. I hate the name more than anything. The only like, this is the only problem that I have with changing the name is that the name change would probably split the group. <laughs> It really would. Oh, because you have such a solid identity right now. After <laughs> two weeks you have, you don't even know what you're doing here. You all no. have different definitions. I 100% know where the group is right now. It's it's not. Oh, you do. It's not like one of those things to where. Uh, well, at, tell us, Prince Hardcore, the Navigator, where are you guys at? <laughs> Formation. That's it. All right. So are you going to make a new group and call it Hardcore Ish? No, 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 no. That's not what's going to happen at all. The Hardcore Sargonist. That's what my pro That's what my point is, is that if I did that, then inherently there would be some kind of like group split, a even if it was a tiny group split. It would still be a group split. Yeah, but hardcore isn't this isn't this the third time there's been a group split? I mean, it, you know, I'm going off of Sargon here, but from rationalist to skeptic community to now liberalist. I don't like it. Skeptic, I don't think the skeptic community was ever like this kind of thing. I don't know about the. Did Sargon do a video where he defined what being a skeptic meant and all of that shit on his channel? Even when it harmful opinions for making videos at other people in said community. Yeah, I, 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 I've always thought that the skeptic thing was um, like a name that everybody else. I thought that was an atheist thing. I thought that the skeptic community was people who were like TJ, who started off. Um, I, I don't. You can see why it's weird to me, man. right? That, and, uh, you can see why it's weird to me, right? That an American would be fighting for European rights in a group made by a guy that has vague definitions of what their principles are, and who thinks that people mocking or trolling them is. Standing no, the way of them accomplishing no, something. I you see that's that's that last part is not true. I don't think I uh, just said a minute ago. I don't care if you mock or troll. I have a problem with people who are literally going out of their way to do. You, well, that's what trolling is. Yeah. They're no. fucking with you. No, 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 no. There's there's a huge difference between like I don't know. It's weird to me if you're sitting here and you're sending. Um, here's here's the difference. If you're sitting there and you're sending these mom porn. Because that wasn't us. That wasn't us. Don't put that evil on me with your body. That wasn't us. That was the Nazbul gang. That was probably Cal or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Listen, like, listen. This is I'm, not saying, I'm not saying it wasn't y'all. I'm not saying it was y'all. I'm making a point. I'm saying if you're doing it because you just want to fuck with me, that's that's one thing. But if you're doing it because you're you have a problem with the liberalist or whatever. That's just stupid. It it's okay to do it if you're fucking with an individual, but don't you dare do anything to no, our no, 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 But all your ideas are stupid. different I'm per individual. Point in doing that. It doesn't make any sense. I, I mean, it's, it's trolling, I mean, man. What do, you, what do you mean it doesn't make any sense? It's not, it's not a person. That's what okay. I'm saying. It's not a See, thing. I, uh, hardcore, I just want you to think, because this reaction you're having to it now, this is exactly why That's people right. do that. Yeah. That's why you did yeah, it. That's why not, it's not not having, I have no problem with. I just don't understand it, honestly. It is morally correct to troll an individual. It is morally wrong to discriminate and troll a group. No, I'm not saying anything's morally wrong. I don't understand it, dude. You could do whatever the fuck you want to do. I. This is one. Once again, y'all. Y'all so, just. So if society is trolling your group out of existence, what? What? Who cares at that point? It's weird to me that that it's it's like this like wishful thinking type thing that y'all constantly do man we're gonna just troll your group out of existence it's like you mean? That's already are. Are. You really you. watching it right now it's great the same breath you said earlier it was happening there's no point in there it is even existing you said well, uh, hard, hard well, really wait 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 hardcore let me ask you a straight up question okay yeah. if this is them standing in the way of you if this trolling is standing in the way Nobody of you standing in the way of anybody i just think it, it's a it's oh, a, okay let me ask you this though if getting trolled if getting trolled throws you off your game this much how the fuck are you going to stand up against a government that wants to censor you if you can't handle autists on the internet from chan i don't think that it's a problem i think that most of the people see this is the problem with you guys is that most of the group doesn't even acknowledge y'all exist I'm, I'm 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 one of these people who think that your founding members acknowledge it. Sargon acknowledges it. V acknowledges it. The people that are the fucking figureheads of your group acknowledge they're getting trolled and spurg out about it quite regularly. 
Yeah, because they're they don't understand why y'all are doing it. But you said you didn't understand no, either. No, 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 wait, no, stop, 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 stop the car. Listen to the last two lines you just said. They don't understand why you're doing it. All right, the line before that. Mm, what was that? Okay, the first thing you said. Most of them don't even know you guys exist. The second thing, yeah, was after Jim pointed out, the, we're talking about the, the, three people. Oh God, let me let me finish it. After Jim points out that the fucking figureheads, they're flipping the fuck out about it. He yeah. said, "Well, yeah, because they don't get it. No, they don't get why you're doing it. See, this is the thing about it. That means the they out. don't get it. It's trolling. <laughs> I don't even get the internet, and I get that. No, I get the point is to upset you or whatever." I just don't think. All right, so let me ask you a question. Right? If, you're there, if you're if you're trolling somebody who's advocating for free speech, doesn't that mean that you're not advocating for free speech? No, we're trolling people who advocate for free speech in the most cringy, dumb, fucking vague way possible. You're mad. They all make has them look like to do all with the time. Speech. So once again, I go back to the question. You're mad at our method for trying because yeah, you're no. fucking dumb. <laughs> Hardcore. Not, Nobody's mad at anything. They're just trolling <laughs> you because you you guys flip the fuck out, and they're going to keep doing it I, every I time you flip the fuck out. You're not. You're trolling the the people who don't really have anything to do with the group about a group that I agree has a cringe. But for the most part, they just talk. You just told me that your disc, or your your group is infiltrated by all these people that keep bringing up the JQ. Actually, Obviously, it's actually, having an effect. <laughs> that's actually what Joaquin told me. Yeah, but what I'm saying is it seems like people know how to fuck with you guys, and it seems like fairly consistently they get a reaction. No, it's just one of those things to where we sit there and we have a group, right? And we sit there and we'll have a post, and then inevitably somebody sits there and starts talking about Jews for some reason. Wait, you said it was just something I told you, but now you're arguing that it actually is true. I mean, if it's just something I told you, if it was just a troll. How, yeah. well, that's because I couldn't verify whether or not somebody was an alt-right spy. So it, it really could be that there's just a lot of people in the liberalists who are just really hard on the Jews. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. There's <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> hey, dude. I, I, absolutely right. There could be just a really huge Deku problem in the liberalists. Hold on. Can I give you a real question here? Because th this is what's bothered me about you from the jump. And I've asked you before and you, you got around it. But I want to know. You've said it yourself. It's a problem with the identity. You said it yourself. There's a problem with the direction. You've said it yourself. There's all these fucking problems. What the fuck? Was, what made you think, hey, I see this fucking train coming down the tracks and it's on fire. And I, I it looks I like that know. conductor doesn't have a head on, but I'm going to hop on the train. This seems like a good plan. What I'll made you train? Jump? I'll save the fucking train. <laughs> you want to be a hero? That's what it is. You, you want to be the one that snatches it up and runs with the fucking torch? No, I, I once again I go back to the idea that I really think that the idea of people were brought together for really good principles, something that we oh can my God. agree. Principles. So, so his answer to the train question is because it's a very pretty train. Yes, it's. I love the cool. beautiful train. train. I love the train. I want to save the fucking train. Hey, I love trains too. They're great. Good time. I, I honestly, the weird thing about it is, is that um, this is something that. If you can get the right cause behind it, will work. It's just right now, it's so hard. What does that mean? The right cause behind your fucking affiliation? No, no, no. no. The right cause, like the right. All right. So here's a good example. Let's Whenever they figure out their ideals, they're going to be great. <laughs> it's kind of Why didn't you do that before you got a cringy fucking name? It's like you printed the fucking jerseys for a sports team. And not, whether it's baseball, that, basketball. No, or you know nobody had a choice in that fucking name. Tonk, and you know nobody had that choice in that name. You need to tell Sargon to just like take a year and figure this shit out and like. Wait, no, hardcore. You had a choice in that name. Your choice was to walk away and pick a different group that didn't sound Not fucking either. retarded. You could have joined us. You always had that choice. Constitutionalists, so you could have joined. Had Libertarians, the constitutionalists, idea. every kind of fucking political. They, are they already have political they're parties in the U.S. So they're not addressing the problem in a lot of um, British places. Where well, join those well, parties and start like get, gathering online to make these movements in the really Europe. Think, no, but I really think not having. I, I know we always harp on one particular thing, and it just kind of makes this ridiculous. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who is this? We we? Who is the collective of individuals? But I really they, think they, that they, the they. fact that that Canada doesn't have free speech because the weird thing about Canada is is like you can't even use the wrong gender pronoun 
without getting a fine. That's fucking wrong. How are how well, he seems to do just fine? Why RCMP don't you work on North America store. before you become a European activist in a group that <laughs> don't even know what they're doing? This applies to them too. This applies to them too. All of this this stuff applies to all of these people. Like if Canada has such hard hate hate speech laws, how come wait, you know, wait, Adam actually, Worski hasn't had his door kicked in by the mountain? Hard, hardcore, are you saying that you want this group to be globalist in nature? <laughs> It's oh, God. international. <laughs> They're international. Right? Right? International. Yeah. Oh no, international. <laughs> Maybe the reason that there's somebody harping on the Jewish the question. Is water water really aware of Let it. me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let's say I, I know y'all don't believe this would ever thing. Let's say we had a million people. We were all together on the same thing, right? And these million people were just normal people who you know had influence in one way or another, and we all joined together for just one cause, whatever it is. That's a million people plus all the normies they can sit there and and yeah get hardcore. Look at Coney twenty twenty or twenty twelve. <laughs> they, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't accomplish shit, did they? And they, they had were, millions uh, of people. Coney, they had good the principles. They had ideas. Kind of shadiness to him. Hey, uh, no, they uh, all got together and hold, held hands and said how terrible it was, and they wished they were the very was better. People, They're very very principled. Nothing happened. Mm. Except the guy went crazy and ran down the street naked, throwing money in the air. It was that, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was jerking off in public. It was that. It was it was a bad show, hardcore. Hard hardcore. hardcore. How is this not Coney Chanology? was a bad show. Coney was a bad show. But that's the thing, is people left. Like, when people were like, okay, this guy just got caught jacking off on a playground. We're going to leave and turn off the lights and pretend this all didn't happen. Yeah, everybody went back three months on the Facebook profiles and unshared <laughs> it. <laughs> When, when, when Sargon had to go take care of his wife's dinosaur and Dr. Nick Monroe admits to being a furry and a war fetishist, do you think that maybe that's a similar point? You know, we should, we should just kind of go back to the square thinking. one and try over. First of all, like, I don't, I have never understood what the problem is. Like, all right, so let me ask you a question. Oh, if God. a girl gets pregnant at, a white girl gets pregnant from some dude who lied to her in high school, you know, like one of those stereotypical things. Is she just like damaged goods from then on and nobody should ever touch her in life and she should just be shot? I'm not going to tell people what to do in that regards. I'm not going to tell touch you what her. to do. Don't fuck around with single fucking moms. That's what I'll fucking tell you. <laughs> well, I, I agree with you on that. But I, what I'm saying is, is that well, why be a single that? mom then? I don't you understand. agree with us, so th what, ask you. I don't understand what the inherent. Well, because I, I, I know that you always have kid issues and stuff like that but if you mm -hmm. fall in love with her i don't understand why if that you feel so strongly about it, and crazy and and then you deserve so that face. i, just, I want to know i'm asking because he always says stuff like that and i wanted to hear his perspective what it, so you're saying i, I, I never heard him say that that the whole perspective of the sargon thing isn't the whole perspective like I, i'm not entirely sure is it because his wife has a, a dude with another, or a kid with another. <laughs> oh, wait, what are we talking about here? <laughs> no, they're I, I, I playing a, a video game where they raise dinosaurs. <laughs> okay? The yeah. dinosaur video game, he had to go take care of his wife. I, I, I can't, I can't. Game. Oh, oh, okay, I got you. It's on a video game. I thought you were talking about it. Your fucking oh. leader's gonna boot your ass. <laughs> yeah, you're gone, man. I thought you were you, talking you about it. Today. You were up today. No, all right, wait, wait. Let me, explain to you, let me explain to you why I thought that. Boy, there was babe. a whole entire thing on the internet where um, I thought that they doxed him to where they were saying that they found out who his, his kid was and it was half black or something like that. And that's what I thought y'all were. I thought you were just being really fucking racist and calling his kid a dinosaur. So I was like, all right, well, that's well, how, would, wait, wait, how would you calling a black person a dinosaur be I racist? I don't know, man. I don't know. I was like, You're fucking Bramlett, dude. Yeah, that's your on. fucking go to is that it's racist because you can't wrap your dumb ass around it. What is wrong with you, man? By the way, by the way, thank you for that Why hardcore. Now it is. Now dinosaurs will be a racist term for black people. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't stop in that neighborhood. There's a lot of dinosaurs up there. Dinosaurs is my new favorite race. <laughs> when there's a pack of raptors on the other side of the sidewalk, I cross the street. <laughs> You're painting Jurassic Park in a fucked up light right now. So, Hardcore, tell us more about Tyrone the T-Rex. I'm curious about this fucking <laughs> dinosaur thing we're discussing. By the way, the chest is filled with El Monstro joined Nazbol, El Goblino, El Nazbol. Uh, yeah. Oh, fuck. 
Yeah, why no, not? Why, okay, but you want to be part of a cr- less cringy movement? Why not just become a Nazbol though? For real, they'll let you in. They're not racist. What is a Nazbol? Y'all say that all. The I time. heard furries are recruiting too. If you want to be a little less <laughs> fuck that shit, fuck that shit. That shit's scary to me. I don't. I don't even. I don't fuck with them people, man. You gotta have something wrong. With B them. said he was a furry. Yeah, that that's weird to me. I don't. I want to. I really do want to ask him about that. I want to be like, dude, what's the deal? <laughs> Have you ever talked to the people who you're following, Buck? I have not <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah, <they're> like, <laughs> really? Right? No, no, no. I just, I don't fucking bug people about stuff that people Okay, do. well, we've talked to them. <laughs> Fuck it. That's the difference. That's why we have the it. opinion of your movement that we do, and you have this whole other thing. We've and actually talked to, to the people who've done it. You don't We're even know your it. own movement. My movement is about V's furry habits? Yes. Kind of, now it has become... V's furry yeah. habits and yeah. Stargan's dinosaur. Yeah, this, 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 this movement has really taken a turn. I did not want to join. Hey, Jeff, Jeff, easy on the D word, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's great. From now on, it's it's racist to say dinosaur. But but okay, Who but said see- it. <laughs> You actually thought, but see, that's that you asked why we fuck with you it's because shit like that. You guys are so easy to fuck with. It's not like we really go out of our way to your fuck with ability. You're just like wearing a sign on your back saying, "Not only kick me, but like fuck I'll my try shit." To, I'll try to explain it really concisely here because you just did something that we we've also seen the leader of the movement do. You didn't understand something. Mm-hmm. You, you did not get something. So what was your go to? Yes. It's racist. It's 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 racist. It's the the alt right something. Do you, no, do you, no, 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 no. That's what you did. That's what no, you it fucking it did. That. It wasn't that. It was just me um, associating something I heard before with that. I didn't really find me anywhere on the fucking it, planet where dinosaurs are goddamn. <laughs> like I said, I thought I thought it was just being really fucking. <laughs> no, weird. you didn't understand it. So that's where your mind went. You're just like when you're Star- you're shut up behind. for a second, hardcore. Just like when fucking Sarkon's looking over the chat and says, "Kick V." And he assumes it's some kind of alt-right deplatforming campaign. Same thing. You don't get things. You guys aren't fun. You guys are boring and you're lame and you do this shit. And you sit there and you fucking wax philosophical about your fucking navels. And then you look around and it's like, why doesn't anyone think that we're intelligent? Why isn't anyone impressed with us? It's because you don't get anything. You don't makes me sad. I think that you need to understand that it's supposed to be a real world thing, not a. a Oh, that's going to make it better. It's going to be so much better. (laughs) It's going to be VidCon, the political world. All right. So, but let me ask you a question. Who who sit there and said that, like, if you're trying to fix something, you're you're supposed to be cool or anything like that. I don't think you sit there and you say, well, we sit here and we wax phil- philosophical and we 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 try to be uh, some- hardcore. Let me ask you this: Do you believe before- that David? No, no, hardcore. Let me ask you this: Do you believe that David Miscavige having slaves is wrong? <laughs> David Miscavige. Having David Miscavige is a leader of Scientology and he puts people into camps basically and treats them like slaves. Do you think that's wrong? Funky, do you think he'll throw them on a do, fucking yeah, boat? Hardcore. Do you think he, keeping people in slavery conditions is wrong? I think. All the stuff that's going on with Scientology is wrong. Okay, awesome. Why aren't you part of Chinology? Why? Where's your Guy Fox mask? Because I, first of all, I found out about that because I was doing a um, a thing on um, cybercrime, but uh, I didn't even know about that kind of stuff. Oh, it's still going. So why aren't you yeah. part of it? Why aren't you part of it? Is would it, it really perhaps, still going? Would it, would, would it perhaps have to do with the fact that people think it's gay as fuck at this point and it's cringy not- as hell? Um, first of all, I didn't even know the thing was going just like Joaquin. And second of all, um, yeah, that pronounced Laheim racist. Oh, my bad. Laheim. Laheim, uh, but also if it was the, if it was the type of a thing to where, um, we had that group or whatever, and we were working towards the same thing. I don't have a fucking problem with anybody helping. But I mean, why weren't you attracted to it, though? If you knew it was fighting this glorious thing, this principled stance, would it maybe be the PR around it? Would it maybe be the perception that it's fucking gay as shit and nobody wants to be a part of it anymore? Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't know about that. I mean, that would be one of those things that I guess is... is What's the, give us something you know about. Yeah, give um, us something you know about. <laughs> some, some criminal thing. justice. He's very intimately familiar with the criminal justice. You know, Lahayam, you got to really uh, fucking... 
Check your guess better. These goddamn dinosaurs, I'm telling you. <laughs> question. This is the thing is that um, I really, I have a lot of things that I want to fix. And the problem is, is that you can't fix things by yourself. And I think that's a lot of why um, you have well, this. Oh, no, please, please tell me that you're not. Okay. You're part of a fucking group that it goes on and on and on and on and on about individualists. And now you're saying that you, you need the group to get shit done. <laughs> Yeah. No, but that that but isn't that the entire point of the the group of individualists is that the <laughs> God the, damn it. The, the, <laughs> uh, I don't understand why y'all have such like a, a basic understanding of the terminology. We need to educate ourselves. What is this? RSRS? Did I take a time machine back to 2014? We need to meet read more Loki. Yeah, it's like man. peeling an onion that's just keeps on going and every layer is retarded. You don't understand why people laugh at you when you bring up the group of individualists. You well, don't like at every that. time you say principles, I like I giggle. The problem is, is like I, if you're sitting there and you're a hardcore individualist, do, don't you always get stomped out by whatever <laughs> what is the fuck know? is a hardcore individualist? <laughs> what does that look like? I guess somebody who never wants to be around anybody wants to do everything by themselves. So a misanthrope? Okay, I'm living in my cave in the country. Right. Yeah, yeah. How how would that person get anything fixed or get anything? Done? Well, what what he tried to do was he tried to mail some bombs to various professors around the country. I think he's <laughs> he wrote a manifesto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it didn't work. He ended up in prison. I'm 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 saying that you know if if it's one of those things to where you're sitting at home by yourself and you have some kind of thought of you want something to get better. And how do you how do you do that if you don't want to adopt some kind well, of Well, hardcore, how are you going to actualize this? Okay, so you keep saying that we want to get together as a group and change oh, things. Fine. How, how are you going to actualize it? What what are you going to do to actually change anything? You have to first of all, you have to get a large enough group together to where you have a voice on a larger scale than just you know um so what would that threshold be just ballpark it like what do you think would be a large enough number 100 120 guys <laughs> yeah, something like that like, uh, you thinking no, like a million two million if we had a million we would already be well surpassed of like most million. you don't think there are special interest groups that have more than a million in their membership probably yeah okay so you got a million people what do you do now what 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 is it that you're actually doing to change anything well, I think it would be um, it would be first of all uh, you, you would decide within the group what the um, what the the group of a million people okay they're group. all individualists and, so they need to and all, all of their opinion is the same equal and it all matters no um, I'm just fucking with you okay what what do you do go ahead um, I guess you would just you know have programs within the group that uh, oh, dude please is this guy fucking with me. <laughs> no, I, I wish. I think he's actually <laughs> okay. I want to we just need money for them programs. Is that what you just fucking told me? Man? No, not government programs. I'm talking about how. All right, let me ask you a question. If if you're sitting here and you're a, you're a let's say the name is still liberalist and you live in the UK, you would have a UK goal. You would have a UK set of liberalists. They would be going towards. They would have you know like people they're supposed to go promote and you know they would go out and do the stuff that. Yeah, but this sounds like it, it sounds like you're planning a venue and doing PR, but then you have nothing there when the fucking people show up, right? So it's like, oh, we're just going to promote, we're going to spread the word, great. But what does that lead to? What is the actual action that changes something? Well, um, I wish there, I wish I had um, like an actual example right now, right off the top, like of something I could, I could tell you was something. That. So you joined a group that wants to change the world, but you don't even know how they're going to do that because they haven't come to that conclusion yet. <laughs> well, Let alone let's, how let's, they actually want to change yeah, the world. Let's use, let's use an example. I, I don't know enough about The only reason I'm, I'm hesitant to talk is because of the fact that I don't You really don't know. know UK politics, but I want to use this as an example. Is Let's say all the we had a large group of UK members and that guy Mog, um, the UK members uh, said, all right, well, this guy agrees that with our principles he, he he is one of the people who is trying to fight for the things that we want to fight for then they would use their support in order to go vote for him now do Why you, you think no him? wait this is actually what? really crucial do you think that any uk politician is going to touch you 
I want you to think back to what happened with Rage After Storm in UKIP. UKIP, which is not necessarily the most liked of UK political parties, where she said something that wasn't even necessarily outright racist in her videos, and they wanted to disassociate with her. And now the head of the liberalists has clips up on YouTube talking about kikes and white niggers. Do you think any politician's going to say, oh, no, it's okay, guys. He's just being ironic. Bring him into the fucking uh, House of Commons. I don't Do you think, think any that. politician would want to associate with that or risk the damage of people running around saying that shit, whether in jest or not? I think you need to understand, and I've been saying this for a long time, you need to understand the difference between the the guy who is the most prominent member and the leader. The guy that made the group? Yeah, no, I think you need to understand that the that's founder. calling the shots. If he decides you're out hardcore, no matter how great your principles are, your ass is gone because he is the final word in the group he created. He's the stepfather. I mean, at this point, yeah. If this, do you think you're going to wrest control yeah. away from him of the yeah. fucking group? No, I don't think that I would. Are you going to whack the stepfather? <laughs> Is this a head? <laughs> Capo's taking him out? You're going to wake up with a bee head in your bed. Hardcore, didn't you, didn't you say uh, on the last stream you were on that you were like at the top of the liberalists that you were in? Who is the... tasing oh, God, the Robo Toad? <laughs> Who is tasing uh, the toad? He's a good boy. <laughs> What happened? You're, you're, you're like some fucking swirly toilet Just water right now. Re yeah, refresh yourself. You, you got to have five. God damn Brock Lesnar button. Danger. High voltage. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think that. Uh, I think that pretty sums it up. Well, um, I think um, one of those things <laughs> that you need to understand is that there is a, a actual group of people who believes in this whether you like it or not whether you think it's cringy it's a thing and if it doesn't work then it doesn't work if it does work then i would like to actually see it through and see that um that some actual change happens but it's it's hard for me to even explain it to y'all without y'all making some kind of weird false equivalence or try to sit there and say that. What is I, the false equivalence of the founder of the group is Sargon? Tell me what is factually no, correct. The the group, but he's not the leader of the group. That's what I'm saying. Who is? is Who's well, the leader? No leader? There's really no leader at this point. No, the king of the king Oh, no, of the you better. You no, 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 no. That is, that is straight up bullshit. Sargon, yeah. when I went into the stream about liberalist -isms with him, gave me shit saying, Jim, you ran away from being leader of Gamergate. And then when I brought up liberalism, he said, I'm the leader, Jim. I had the leadership thrust upon me. I don't want to do it. I want to play my dinosaur games, but I am the leader. So no, understand that Sargon calls the shots in your group. He said so on his own fucking stream. It's Hold weird. on. Is my, is, weird is my mic better? I've had a lot of, yeah, it works now. A lot of interaction with, with Sargon and the group and stuff like that since then. And it's not like white, white, white niggers, white niggers. I think there's a better word than group i think we should call it something else I, it's on the tip of my tongue collective maybe <laughs> i was commune, gonna go cult. maybe a syndicate a, com a, com uh, a, co a commune of individuals jonestown 2.0 no the proper term is ball pit it's a ball <laughs> Look, sargon koresh is not pulling anything with no dinosaurs guys just calm down <laughs> holy shit it is the anniversary of that isn't it i heard that he, he plays that game all the time while he's listening to audiobooks <laughs> so what <laughs> Well, Did he tell you that himself? That's he chops down the leaves in this game while the feet to his wife's dinosaur while listening to, uh, I don't fucking know, Locke. I guess he listens to Locke on repeat. That seems to be what he what, all he has. Well, no, it's, it's a lot more than that. He He's reading all sorts of stupid Please, I thought please, you please, didn't please, know! Tell, tell, us, tell us more. Tell us more about what else What's he is. reading right now? No Dr. Book. Ruth? Is, yeah. is, there a liber is there a liberalist reading list that's out there? There should be. There. There, there is, is there. books to read to be a liberalist. There fucking is. What's the essential literature? I'm going to make a liberalist reading list. That's no, wait, there already is it. one. Give it to there us. Isn't one. One. There isn't one. You're a liar. There is there, one. You know there is, as, as far as I know, uh, there could be. Don't hold me to it. There could be. I think there. you should get on that one. Yeah, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Here's the liberalist reading list. Siege, Mein Kampf, and the Turner Diaries. <laughs> but you have to you have to disagree with them. But that's that's the reading list. You have to understand the enemy. Yeah, you gotta know. You gotta know. It, it, we didn't understand it actually because we thought that we were infiltrating y'all. But apparently, the whole Reed Siege crowd is just an elaborate psyop by the Sargon people. Triple uh, fucking Inception. 
honestly a hardcore you seem like you really want to be in a group you really want to have a group and you're very you feel very strongly about your principles why not just start your own group because you, you don't know what the score is with this one it's like you hopped into a kkk meeting trying to battle for free speech you don't even know what they're doing hey hardcore there's a there's a guy in the chat uh his name's stone mexican guy and he's demanding that i tell you to stop disrespecting uh his people <laughs> The dinosaurs. Yeah, the 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 whatever he is. He's I'm a stone Mexican, Mexican guy. It's I'm literally assuming the stone. I'm assuming, yeah. yeah. Oh well, if this has been uh, fun, but I I, I got to jump. Uh, thank you, Hardcore, for explaining to me the in-depth and uh, very detailed principle set list of yeah, the no, liberalists. Is that and, is that uh, cleared up for you yet, Jim? Are you are you? Oh no, it's crystal clear. I'm going to be marching in the streets tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey Jim, thank uh, you for inviting me on some very weird shit. I wish I could forget. Oh could yeah, tell. not a not a problem. I'm gonna go look up that liberalist uh, reading list because I need to know how many uh, Loki books I need to digest before I'm on that level of wokeness. But uh, you guys take it easy. Make sure you get them in before the debate on Saturday. Random or Cam's coming. Oh yeah, yeah. They got Got to get that prep time in with it. I hate to tell you this, but a reading list is a really good idea. <laughs> God damn you, hardcore. God damn you. I'm going to go get a chicken wing. I'll be back.